will do now with the city of Overland because you okay. have a key to it. I, I will It opens promise. every door. Yes. Well, it's kind of like I was encouraging now X, what was Twitter, to move their headquarters to Overland. And if they did, the incentive would be a free trampoline. Yeah. I thought that would be a good thing. So try and I'm working well, on it. Well, again, if anybody's listening in, uh, in uh, like Overland government, this man yep. deserves the key to the city. I Thank agree. you. Thank you. Okay. You I think that's doable much. as well. Next. Next. Uh, hey! Yeah! Hey, good morning, everybody. Hi. Word. A word, Scott, indeed. Word. Word. What is the good word? Uh, oh, the good word is. Risen. The good word is that uh, Moon's back. The Mo entire team's wow. back. Moon has risen. <laughs> Moon has risen. R I Z Z. Uh huh. I N. He has risen. That's R I Z Z I N. Right. Uh, wearing your uh, Disney World merch. Oh, yeah, dude. I've got a shirt for every day. All merched out. <laughs> that was the uh, that was the biggest benefit to my kids, uh, for, for, you know, for my kids, uh, for getting the RV instead of uh, instead of flying down there. So we got the Byerly RV, and they yeah. took full advantage of. Oh, I don't I don't have to. I don't have to cram everything into a, uh, a you know one carry on and one bag. I can I can get all this stuff and bring it back. Yeah. There's no you know right. that, that's no my excuse. Limits. Yeah, that's my excuse every time we go somewhere. Like, no nah, man, sorry, you can't get you can't get merch. We won't be able to fly back with it. That's it. Yeah, and they, you get stuff. You know, stuff oh, the RV they full certainly of mouse did. ears. They certainly did. We have mouse ears. Did you we, get mouse ears for yourself? I did not get my, get them for myself, but all the girls did. Uh, so the, listen, so you so you I want to. I want to I want to take everybody through the road trip here. It was amazing. So you left Thursday afternoon. You had the RV uh, from Byerly. Byerly yep. RV gave you an RV to to drive down. Have a great time. Yeah, from from the rental fleet. Right. Have a great time. Here's an RV. Uh, Thursday afternoon, you mm -hmm. hit the road. I know your daughter had something to do, so you had to leave right after that. Yeah, dude. Cheer tryouts. Cheer tryouts. Ooh. Stressful times. Stressful. Were times. there tears? Uh. Happy tears. Oh, good. Oh, good. Happy tears. It all ended up great. You ever been to a cheer tryout? Yes. Uh, uh, yes, for myself. And then I've lived through my sister's cheer tryout, she which had... was a nightmare. Oh, yeah. She, so, she yeah. had some stress. And I don't, so, so I don't know if it was the same at your daughter's cheer place, but uh, last year I went to go watch my daughter try out. Every other girl came out in tears. Oh. Every other girl. Yeah, it's they're a crying so, game. They're so stressed out. It's tough stuff, man. They're so stressed out. Somebody didn't throw a move. Somebody fell. Some girl snapped an ankle. It's an athlete's game. It really is. I mean, think you guys aren't flipping around on the ball court, all right? These girls are thrown up in the air. <laughs> I've never. And caught in a basket. And they got to still look good. Everything's got to be mm -hmm. pristine. My, listen, my son, you know, who plays hockey, always gives my daughter crap. Chilling's not a sport. Yeah. Oh, go, oh yeah? You know how much money that saved me when my uh, my second daughter got a stunt scholarship? <laughs> mm. It's a sport. And yeah. it's a sport that is rough. It's like the second highest injury prone uh, uh, or uh, what is oh, it? Yeah. Uh, not CTE. Concussions. Uh, concussions, yes. Oh, yeah. Dang. Yeah. Oh, it's, yeah. It's brutal. And uh, that stunt stuff is like gnarly. You go to those competitions, once you figure out how the scoring works, it is like you, oh. I, I dare you oh, not yeah. to yeah. scream when you're getting into it. Yeah. It's like a it's a recipe for perfectionism. Yeah, you know that that stunt scholarship is a huge deal in our family. Hitting zero, right? When you hit, when a when a group hits zero, that means they got all their stunts off on uh, you know right and no perfect. mistakes, no yeah. mistakes. They gotta look good. They gotta be in physical, you know. Dad, we hit zero. Yeah, we hit zero, Dad. I don't know what the hell that means. Well, those stunt teams and all that kind of stuff. A lot of times that starts you know in high school or before. And my daughter was doing it in middle school, like your daughter is. And she had uh, she had full on tryouts, and I mean she was stressing about it for days and rehearsing, doing doing different things. Oh yeah, and... listen, I watched some of these videos. And my daughter could do the flips and the twists and the, you know, all that you know, all that stuff. That's and awesome. And I'd be you know I'd be in the hospital immediately. Yeah. Well, I was the hey. bad guy because I had booked, uh, you know, it was spring break. Yeah. So like, hey, we're gonna take you a, a day or two early because this is when we had this is when we can do it. This is when we can do the schedule to go down to Disney. We're gonna get the RV and we're gonna leave on Thursday. I'm talking crack of dawn. Right. Wheels up at, at wheels up at dawn. And she said, "I've got trials today. I can't miss the trials. I'm yeah. love, uh, I've got to make this team, and there's no exceptions. The coach is brutal. You know that whole vibe." And uh, so we said, okay. All right, well, we'll adjust well, the schedule for you know sure. We'll have the RV in the parking lot, and as soon as you're done, <laughs> toot, toot. get in, we're gone. We got to go. It's a long drive. 
So then we readjusted and said, well, okay, how about this? How about we'll get you from the tryout? And she was able to sign up first. So she tried out first. And you know that's not, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not a good thing. You don't want to try you don't out first. Be first. You don't want to be first seen. Mm -mm. So she got the first sign up. And we decided, oh, we'll stay in Nashville. So we only have to drive whatever, yeah, yeah, yeah. five, six hours, something like that. Which makes the drive the next day gnarly. Uh, but uh, so she came out. And I was like, how do you think she did? And she's like, I don't know. I think I, think I did well. I think I did well. I, she didn't know. And we got the call on the drive from Nashville to Orlando. Well, that's nice. That she made, hey, congratulations. That she made varsity. Oh, made the varsity team. Good job. Um, was, she, uh, was she ashamed and uh, not telling everybody that that's my dorky dad outside with the RV? <laughs> she asked me to come pick her up in the truck. I came and picked her ah, up. Ah, it's so truck. funny. Yeah. <laughs> Well, honestly, it's because there were so many buses and doing and, and different things there. I wasn't sure if I'd be able to uh, squeeze in there. To, to well, I, I don't know if uh, there's got to be some sort of security measures where if you bring a giant bus or an RV that's not sanctioned by the school, you, you know what I mean? That they should probably oh, was check that the school? It. Okay, is it was at the high yeah. school? They should probably check it, and I would feel more comfortable if that was a rule. So I was like, ah, you know what? I'm not going to chance it. I'll just I'll just take the truck. All right. So wheels up. What time? Two o'clock, three o'clock? Uh, three o'clock, yeah. We'll, we'll, three we'll o'clock. So you make it to Nashville around nine, right? Five hours? Yeah, I would say. It was dark, and it was one of those, like, uh, it, was a, it was a campsite, uh, like a KOA type of thing, you yeah. know? Uh, right inside Nashville. And um, it was a late check-in, obviously, so I was like, well, what am I going to do here? I never saw anybody. I, li I just went up to the to the booth. They had your name there on a piece of paper with, like, a, a map on where your slot yeah, was. Yeah, what slot? And I was like, oh, okay. And we went over there. I hooked up everything. It took like maybe five minutes to hook it all up, and then everybody's like, "What now?" I was like, "That's oh, it. We're, we're set, dude. Go we're to, already go checked to sleep. in. <laughs> go to sleep." Yeah, you yeah, plug in, great. right? You plug in. Have you ever set it a KOA? No. Yeah, well, no, those no, are awesome. not, like not like this. Not like this. Campground, yeah. Like, but uh, not like this. Like an RV, an RV park. Yeah, it was even killer. camping's awesome with those, dude. You you stop, you put the slide out. This thing had a twenty foot slide out, so the whole bus. Goes out like four feet, so it turns into it turns into a house. It's yeah. freaking awesome, and then uh, and then you plug in, turn the motor off. You, you you plug in. You put the sewer there. You put the water. We got running water. We got a shower. We got a water heater. We got everything. Yeah, my only experience was my buddy stayed at the uh, at Babbler. Babbler's got a uh, an RV. They, do they really campsite? I didn't yeah. know that. So I went to go you know see him down there, and it was you know a sun, it was a it was a nice summer Saturday. Mm -hmm. And I went there in the evening, and everybody's got their, their the slides out. Everybody's got lawn chairs out. Yeah, there's awning. fires, the awning. There's music on. People got Christmas lights up. Yep, jello shots. Yeah, yeah, whatever Hell you yeah. want. It's it's your world. And I just walked around, and you know, a couple people recognized me from the show, and they're hey, come on over, hey, hey. taking want a bush? Yeah, it was great. I will say that check is, out the RV. That is something that we noticed. We didn't see anybody at the at the Nashville one, but when we got to Disney World, we went to Fort Wilderness. So that's that's where we stayed is the Disney uh, Campground Resort. And man, what a community! That RVing community. <laughs> we didn't get there till like 10 p.m. And even just getting into our loop, somebody walked over, and she's got you know a, two two drinks in her hand, yeah. and she walks over, and her whole thing is, I mean lights and easter bunnies and like all this stuff and she came over and she's like hey you need help oh yeah yeah your slots right over here just go around and come in. we'll help you back up we'll you know do whatever and man it was like that the whole time so welcome huh? I'm, I'm not kidding that is the coolest community of anywhere i've never just walked in and felt like wow these people are amazing was there a point during the trip where you were like where you said to your wife you should probably just give it all up and yeah. just do this. Oh, of course de you do. oh definitely. Yeah. Like freedom. Four or five times a day. We should just. What was her response? Sell the house. Uh, nah. It was a different way yeah. of saying I'm not ready yet. <laughs> we should just sell the house and just, you know, we'll buy this thing and we'll hit the road. Just, you know, just us and the kids. We'll homeschool the kids wherever. You know, we could have class at the Grand Canyon. And just think you could wake up right outside of work and just walk right in. I need two words for you. Wanderlust. <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> all That's right. One word. I'm sure traveling. <laughs> That's one word, first of all. <laughs> I'm sure traveling as much as we did throughout our 20s and the first half of my 30s, I'm sure it like set me up in a weird way. And I don't, and I don't know how to reconcile that with, you know, 
regular thinking people like my like my wife, you know, that didn't spend her entire twenties on planes, trains, and automobiles. Um, so yeah, so I have to like work that out. But <laughs> I don't know. I like my house to not move. And, <laughs> but it doesn't uh, move. That's what I'm saying. You can just move it. And your house, you my house, growing up had wheels and didn't move, so I'm good. <laughs> and I want a shower and a regular shower. Yeah. How was the showering? Was it okay? The shower was fine. All it was. Right. It's like you know, it's like a small RV shower, but like uh, hot water was fine. Um, and then right across from our uh, loop, if you will, was showers that were awesome. Oh, community showers. This is one of the Take ones that had. Oh, yeah. cool. Well, it's not like it's not like a locker room. Bring my shower caddy. No, it's, no, it's like individual hey, showers, and they you clean them. Dare out. not. It's you a dare Disney. not walk barefoot. It's a oh. Disney property, so you know it's like everybody's psh, urinating it's, there. Yes, it's, it's a Disney awesome. property, but it's still community showers. Yeah, man. However, people you look, look at gross it. no matter where they are. <laughs> it gets Doesn't clean more matter. than your shower. <laughs> I'm sure. Listen, I'm sure it does. <laughs> Even in the mouse's house, they're peeing in that shower and doing other things. Yeah. Yeah, probably. Uh -huh. So you, so Nashville, Tinkle Bell. Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> um. So Nashville Thursday night, and then hit the road Friday morning. Yeah, Friday morning. Oh man, I would say we pro we we were probably moving by eight thirty or nine. Breakfast on the road, breakfast in the RV. Yeah, we had made uh, breakfast in the RV because we had everything. We had stove top, yeah. we had gas and electric, so coffee, eggs, like everything. We 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 did it all. And when'd you hit up the Bucky's? Bucky's was in Georgia, so we did two two uh, two Bucky's in Georgia. Maybe one was in Florida, but I think they were both in Georgia. Did you see the video of Lenny Kravitz going to the Bucky's? Of course, I yes. Did. I shared it, guys. That's where I saw. I rejoiced. It. That place is ridiculous. There was a thousand people in there. Yeah. I mean, did you see the video I sent you guys? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that was uh, that was when I could reach into my phone, uh, reach into my pocket, and get my phone. I was elbows to elbows. That's like, how the Springfield one is. I mean, dude, uh, it's it, crazy. It is crazy. Lenny Kravitz was at the Georgia one. <clears throat> I think so, or Nashville, somewhere down south. But can like, you imagine walking into Bucky's? First of all, it's an amazing experience. Secondly. Kravitz himself comes rolling in looking gorgeous, taking photos with everybody at a buck. He'd never been before. It's, you wanted to experience the Buckies too. Me too. It, it, honestly, if I saw Lenny Kravitz in there, I'd be like, well, that's Lenny Kravitz. But I don't, I, don't I don't have time to get a picture of this guy. I seen Fudge over there, mm -hmm. and I saw I'm something over there I got to go get. And a Red Rider BB gun over here. Fudge or Kravitz. And then there's Brisket over there. And then this cooler. <laughs> Dude, it is... Uh, Sorry, Lenny, there's a beef jerky wall I got to get to. <laughs> yeah, I made my son go check that out. Uh, man, it was uh, it was quite the experience. But, I mean, I'll tell you what. So there was like... You could tell there was three different types of people that were there. There were people that were there like us that were just like taking it all in going, yeah, Oh my wow, gosh, I've heard about I can't this believe place. this. Okay. Oh, and I, I saw a bunch of Rich Show fans actually uh, at the at the first at the first Buckies. They screamed moon and I was like, oh my gosh. Oh, where, wow. Where do I look? Um, and then the, the next type of person is um, the, uh, everybody just getting gas like like it's normal. Like, you know, they're just like they got their civics and whatever, yeah. and they're just getting gas and they're coming in, the gas. coming in to grab something and whatever. And then there's the people that have been there for an hour, and they have two shopping carts filled with every bit of their groceries. Huh. Like they're grocery shopping. Oh, you could do like a full food shop in there? Oh, my gosh. And beyond. Wow. Produce Dude. section? Everything. Really? They had oh, wow. everything. And there were people, I saw people dragging two carts filled with groceries, mm. pillows. Road dogs. <laughs> whatever. Oh, whatever. Rugs. <laughs> whatever, dude. Lenny Kravitz. They had it all. Lenny in the, Kravitz in the has a cart. Yeah. Well, and the, you, no, he's the, in the cart. The Somebody video that you Kravitz. sent to the Rich Show him. chat, it, there was a woman being consoled. Like, there was a woman, like, having a meltdown. Like, every oh. type of person was having an experience. Like, even a person was crying in the middle of Bucky. Yeah, they have yeah. a therapist in Bucky's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> they probably do. That must have been something Beat personal. That schnooks. <laughs> right. Must have been something personal because there's no way that they uh, that she was upset that they ran out of anything because they didn't run out. It's Lucy nothing. from Peanuts for five cents. You know, like you, you know, at like a buffet or something when you see um, they're about to run out of eggs or bacon, yeah. you know, and finally somebody comes out and like restocks it. They were restocking people everywhere. I mean, just just flying yeah. around. Oh, there's, there's only 50 brisket sandwiches left. We'll, we'll put see 200 the, more on there. Do you see the pay skills? I don't know if they're hiring. Oh, those. yeah, yeah. It said the uh, it, it said uh, assistant managers get like 150 K. Yeah, like what? three three weeks off. The full, store manager is like two. Store managers two. Yeah, two fifty. I think what? two fifty. Yeah, yeah. They, it's they're crazy. Their base entry when you when you get hired, let's say you're cleaning toilets in there, I think is forty five bucks an hour. 
Dang. Oh. Or 35 bucks. It's, it's Let's awesome. Let's go work at Bucky's. Dude, I know. It was. <laughs> Backup plate. We could right do Bucky's on. radio. I was, yeah, I was yeah, putting Bucky's could. radio. I was putting gas in the RV and I'm reading that thing and I'm, and I'm looking around and I'm like, man, they, they built a town. And this, that's why everyone inside looks so happy. Can I ask how much it costs to fill up? Um, not that much. I would say the first time I never spent over like 150 bucks hmm. on, on a, ta a tank. On a that's tank. not bad. Well, especially in Bucky's. About thirty cents cheaper than everywhere else. I didn't even look. Yeah, they looking. go cheaper. I'm and looking it, online, and they're selling smokers outside of Bucky's. Oh wow. really? I didn't even yeah, like, like a phone, like like yeah, dude, like a full. <laughs> Whoa! Wow. Looks like Lowe's parking lot. That's wild. It was crazy. It was crazy. So you got so Bucky's was Friday. Uh yeah, Bucky's was Friday. Well, Bucky's was Friday twice. We stopped at two 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 Bucky's on that one. And then, if one's not enough, let's go to another. Well, I had to check it out. See, <laughs> compare them. Uh, Were no, they it just, different? It just worked out. Uh, no, not not really. Not not really. One was, uh, that first one was slammed. It must have been like the shopping hour or something. Uh, the, the second was was slammed as well. Um, both both amazing. So that was... That so Bucky's, if you don't know, it's like, you know, we have Wally's here. It's a big gas station with, you know, you go inside and it's mm -hmm. more than just a gas station. Yeah. That became the family thing, though, because I was like, hey, we're not stopping. We're not eating. We're not, we're, we're, you know what I mean? Like, you're eating in the RV. Yeah, let's grab so what we need to grab here. Get whatever you want. Right. And, you know, by that point, we kind of f figured out, like, okay, because that was the other great thing about staying with the RV is we were going to save so much money on food at Disney because yeah, everybody says, yo, bring a backpack filled with food. Pack your lunch. Pack oh, your dinner. Yeah. Pack it's your expensive. dinner. Pack your that. So, yeah. And, can you bring food into the park? Oh, yeah, you can bring whatever. Hmm. Big old bottles of water. Oh, yeah. Oh, then I'll have, like, Pluto patting you down. No, no, no. <laughs> I, I had a backpack filled with water. He's My wife had everybody. a backpack filled with Oh, see, with food. okay. I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. I thought you had to buy everything there. That's no, great. No, no. And I will say, the prices were not as bad as you mm. thought. Okay. The, the, the food prices around, um, I ate snacks, and, you know, you get, oh, here's a corn dog or whatever it is, and here's a this, here's a that. But it was cheaper than a Cardinal game. Did the kids well. have their own spending money? Yeah, we gave them a budget, like a, a, a small budget. Yeah. Uh, and then... Like, hey, if you want to buy a souvenir or you want to buy food, this is what you have to spend mm -hmm. for the entire... How, how long do you have? That's five smart. days? Yeah, they had it per day, though, so they didn't just blow it all. So you had a per day. diem. Yeah, they, they, got per they, diem. they got a per diem, <laughs> which is the way to go. So, uh, wheels up around 8, 9 o'clock Friday. You mm -hmm. finally get to Disney 1. It was late. It was like 10 p.m. Okay, so it was a long. Yeah, it's a ten-hour drive from Nashville if you're not stopping and not in an RV. Okay, so let's. And I was and I was trying to, hours. And I was trying to. I was full dad mode, so I was watching the MPGs the entire time, and I was like, "Oh, this is a game." <laughs> Can you put you it know? in cruise control? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I'm sure you could, but like, <laughs> that's not how you get good MPG. No, mm. you got to baby that. So I was like, "I'm gonna pop this thing up to two uh, two more miles." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two, two I'll more play that game too. MPG than than it started. Uh, so that that was the game I was playing. So we got to, we got there like 10 p.m. Did you wear a hat while you drove that thing? Uh, no. Like cowboy hat or anything? Like Captain's a, hat? Oh, Your no, fanny no. pack, the sunglasses. No, the vehicle the itself has a hat. You know, it's got right. that loft. It's got a roof. <laughs> it's Mal, got that loft over there. Was she your co-pilot the whole time or did everybody swap out? No, my son uh, my son came up there and we, we hung out for a while and... Uh, and uh, I think she took a nap, maybe. That's great. Awesome. But yeah, Go uh, back into the bedroom, take a nap. But they it's were nice. excellent navigators. Uh, dude, Atlanta, god darn Atlanta. I love you, but the traffic sucks so bad. It doesn't matter what time you go through. It doesn't matter what day. We got stuck in Atlanta traffic for an hour. I forgot that. B both ways, both ways. Mm. But other yeah, than so that, other than that, easy, perfect drive. There was no way to avoid that? No, not really. There's no, like, rerouting around Atlanta? No, I mean, you can take you a... Use Waze? I forget what it is. Yeah, we use Waze. So uh, you're I playing two games, MPG and Waze. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, the Waze game. Yeah, the fun. Waze game. Which, by the oh, way, game. I don't know if you guys know, but Waze has a Ghostbusters promotion going on, and you can have Dan Aykroyd, uh, a.k.a. Ghostbuster Dan Aykroyd. Race talking, dance. Race talking, dance. Yeah, race dance, talking to you, you know, Ghostbuster style oh, for great. all the directions. The problem is... When he doesn't say the street names. He doesn't say the street names, and when you're doing a 16-hour drive, you hear a lot of, turn left, uh... You know, left is evil in some cultures. <laughs> There's a lot of that stuff. <laughs> Tell you what, though, he says something about the lock. The window. <laughs> the, the Loch Ness monsters. Fifteen hours of that. I'm uh, I'm a believer now. If if uh, Dan Aykroyd. Is All right, so you get to the park. Uh, you know, they help you get settled. The RV people. Mm -hmm. 
the people of the park, the well, people of the RV park. Even, even at 10 p.m. when you check in, there's like 12 Disney employees in the cabin. They're like, howdy. Like, that's yeah. their thing. And well, it's a happy, welcome to, did they say, welcome to the happiest place on earth? Uh, no, but I think it was a have a magical day. You ah, know, it, was, it was one of those kind of things. But, dude. Did you get into a fight with Mickey? You making fun of me? No. <laughs> you making fun of me? No, you making fun of me? <laughs> he knew I was mocking his voice. You having Mickey down? <laughs> uh, so, we, we, yeah, we go we go in this cabin thing, and uh, we're the only ones there checking in at 10 p.m. We, we, we check in, and, dude, that's when we realize the organization of Disney is second to none. Because they're like, oh, yeah. here... Here's all your cards, and it's like it's like a like a credit card kind of thing, right? And uh, these will get you anywhere. These will get you in the parks. Here's one for this kid, this kid. You know, everybody everybody gets their cards, and you start realizing like, okay, you know, we we were told about the app. Make sure you get the app. Like it, like it was a good idea to get the app. That's not a good idea. It's necessary. And you get the app, and then you start looking at how it all works and all this kind of stuff. And dude, that app. <laughs> Is the way to go because we we're trying to schedule our day, like like figure out what we're gonna do. You know, we're gonna go to one park each day. We're gonna schedule out so we're not waiting in lines, right? We wanna we wanna get to this get to this place before the sun rises. This one opens at seven thirty. The other one opens at eight thirty. We got early entry because we're staying on a Disney resort. Oh, like how does this all work, dude? It is all spelled out right there for you in That's the app. Great. I understand now why people go to Disney and they come back completely Disney pros because. When you go, you figure out how it all works, how it works best for you and your family, and you come back and you just, you like, you know. Can I ask if anybody pooped in the RV? Oh, yeah, we pooped in the RV. I thought it was an open. Nice. I thought it was. It has a, it, 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 has, it has a grinder. Oh, and they're like, I know you have. even said it. Do, <laughs> do we not even have this conversation? I know. I'm proud. Even though it's got a, gar even though it's got a grinder, I know it's going to poop in this RV. Listen. Impossible. We're going to go to Snooks and grab ultra plastic bags. I never pooped in the, in the RV. But tell us everybody who poops. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but when you have a when you have a kid, that's like forty minutes after Bucky's is like, Dad, I'm so sorry. I gotta go. I gotta go. I don't know what to do. I'm panicking. <laughs> I'm like, no, no, no. It's it's okay, kid. Just just go. Just for go. It. Just go for it. Just let me know how it goes. You know, like, and it was fine. And you swerve a little bit while he's in there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Never had an issue. All right. Never smelled. I was curious. Wasn't even a big deal. Because uh, I remember we had that whole we had that whole discussion. I know. Wasn't even a big deal. Um, emptying it, you know, like uh, doing the uh, brown water thing. The, yeah, you the just black stick water your hand the up water. there, grab some stuff, pull no, it out. Water. That was as easy brown as brown water. That black was something water. I've never done. Even like obviously touring on the buses and everything. You know, we got the black water tank and all that. I, th that's the driver's job. I never did that before. Right? Well, now was, you're the driver. You're the captain now, dude. It was so easy. So easy. All right. What was the first uh, park you hit up? So we went to Animal Kingdom on Saturday, and it was empty we were there sunrise 7 30 they open it up and we had scheduled on this app that we were going to go to the uh, we got a zoo here no that's not what yeah it's what about. was it like they have so that avatar have the same, ride the same stuff here that avatar ride was probably top three yeah, in the dude. entire experience we don't have any avatars here that's true mm -hmm. avatar ride was amazing oh totally they have the avatar it. ride at at animal kingdom. Animal kingdom avatars there's a lot of crazy there's a lot of rides there's rides at every park yeah, it's not just a zoo. Yeah, it's only got that safari thing. Oh, I thought it was a zoo. No, it's only got the safari thing, which, we, by the we way... We were talking about going... We were talking at one point about going down there, and we wanted to stay at the, the Animal Kingdom Hotel. Yeah. And they're like, a giraffe will walk right up to your window. I go, what do I want that for? What? That's kind of cool, man. <laughs> that is that cool. Be, <laughs> that's kind of cool. Why wouldn't you want that? <laughs> he brings you coffee or something in the morning. This is great. <laughs> what do I want that for? That's pretty sweet. Like, a giraffe. Could walk right up to the balcony. I think that's incredible. What do I, I, I don't want that. Well, first of all, I'll be taking you through the morning. So we, 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 we get up, and it's like everybody's been driving the day before, you know. So it's it's hard to get that many yeah. kids up uh, that early. Dude, we were all up on the golf cart, took it down to the bus. You parked the golf cart. By the way, just the uh, Fort Wilderness, they got horseback riding and archery and all this. There are, I would say, probably half of the people that stay on that park in in, in the RV spots aren't even going to the parks. Only they just do stuff there. They're just doing how stuff long, there. How long does it take to get from the RV park to, a, the, like, the Animal Kingdom? Okay, so um, we are right on the other side of the lake from Magic Kingdom, and you take a boat to Magic Kingdom, and that takes, ah, I don't know, 10 minutes, 15 minutes maybe. The, that's a lake that that kid got eaten by the, the alligator oh, a couple of years ago. right. Right. At the petting zoo? The, the, the two-year-old. You talking about the two-year-old? Yeah, the that one was that was the playing Grand by Flor the lake. Floridian? 
Yeah, that's on the other side of the lake. Anyways, they, they have all that fenced off or like a uh, like roped off. So you're not. Are there you're, signs everywhere? Like you're, you're not allowed to play in, the, in that water anyway. But they have they have two giant Is it alligators or crocodiles. Alligators. alligators. They have two giant pools and a bunch of stuff to do on the resort. Okay, so I mean on the 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 campground, the Fort Wilderness. So we take a golf cart down to the bus uh, bus stop. Bus is there. They're running every 15, 20 minutes, starting right right there in the morning. It probably took us. Um, so Magic Kingdom is kind of on the north side, and all the other parks are about a 15 minute bus drive. So that's all it took us. 15, 15 minutes, minutes. They drop something. you off right that's at the not gate. Bad at all. You go up there. You wait for early entry. They let you in. And dude, that card. <laughs> this is the greatest part. The card. You, you put on this little thing, and this Mickey thing turns green, and they take your fingerprint. And I was wondering, like, why, why are they taking your fingerprint? And I think it's I think it's because once you go in that first day and it scans your your thing, you can't give your card to somebody the next day to use at another car <laughs> at another park. Does that make sense? It's yeah. nefarious reasons, you know that. Yeah, nefarious. They're stealing our identity. It's nefarious. There. Yeah, it's big mouths. Mm. You know me, man. You you know that I'm usually like pretty averse to that stuff, and I don't want to give you my face data and and, and whatever. But they so they must be. The minute somebody in a mouse costume with a big head walks by, yeah. you're ready to give it all up. I gave it all up. I was like, "Here's my social." I was like, this is so organized. You take whatever you want to make my life easier. You gave your social security number to Goofy, dude. Oh, I would. Like, Mother's I didn't even ask for this. Mother's maiden name. I would. Street I grew up on. I would. If there's anybody Color, I trust. First car. <laughs> if there's anybody I trust. Pet. After this take experience, it it's Disney. Last four social. My wife. Here's a quote that my wife said. I put this in my notes. Um, it was maybe, we were probably there for three hours on the first, first day Animal Kingdom. And she said, I hope if the world ever ends, it's organized just like this. <laughs> she wants Disney in charge of the end of the world. Well, in she some goes, ways they are. She goes, I want to put Disney in charge of the end of the world because it was the most organized Animal thing Kingdom. Is that, is that, and I'm serious, Jehovah's Witnesses, don't they believe that uh, when the rapture comes... The believers will go up and and uh, you'll be amongst animals and everybody will live in harmony. Oh man, can really? I be Jehovah's Witness then? Oh, I think it may awesome. be. I think they're they only have one hundred and eighty eight thousand though, and I think they're pretty, pretty much maxed out right now. Full, so. yeah. Isn't that? Wait a minute though. Moses had the animals. Isn't this every religion? No, Moses did have Noah. Noah. <laughs> Noah. I'm sorry. I'm agnostic. No, no. And so if, when the rapture comes and the Jehovah's Witnesses are lifted into the kingdom, uh huh. Moses had the ladies. Oh, I'm sorry. That's tight. <laughs> you live in harmony amongst the animals, and I believe that is... Uh, I am down. Disney's uh, Wild Safari. Sign me up. Come to my door. <laughs> Disney's Wild Safari. It. When you go in, you make a left, and their attention to detail on all these different little sections, That's you know... That's considered evil in some cultures. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, all these little... Uh, uh, these, like, different sections and everything are... I mean, w once you walk in... They know how to make you feel like you're in that movie or in that scene or in that show. No, you were talking about the Star Wars stuff. Oh, my God. Don't even get me started there. Let's start in Pandora. Because when you turn left in Animal Kingdom, you're in Pandora. That's I feel the... like I'm watching his vacation slides. Uh, dude, I'm, I'm just telling you that, I'm telling you that, uh, that experience was like, oh. Now I get why I they feel like I'm sitting in your living room now, and you're like, "Hey, you want to see the Moon Family Vacation? Let's yes. go and and start the slideshow." Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, either way. So Avatar. So Avatar. you go to Pandora. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, so that's we, at the Magic Kingdom. We get that's the, at the Wild Safari. We get the Lightning Pass, which costs us, I don't know, two hundred dollars. Yeah, <laughs> man, worth the money, dude. Though. That's worth it, though. Worth it. Worth it. We had people messaging us like, how are you riding so many rides? Because we were like scheduling out every little thing. We were going one ride to the next, to this, to this show. And, and like it tells you, this app will tell you, okay, you're in this area. We suggest seeing the Indiana Jones Stunt Spectacular. Because that's, oh, so that's, that's starts, awesome. So that, I'll tell yeah, you. That's that starts great. in 10 that minutes. You'll wait that's 15 neat. minutes in line. I mean, they know up to the second how long you will wait in each standby line. Mm -hmm. And then with the Lightning Pass, you like you schedule when you can go back. So it'll say, oh, we're going to the Expedition uh, Everest, which is also an Animal Kingdom. Uh, we got that at 2.35. And we got Avatar at uh, at 12.05. So anytime within that hour, 12.05 to here's, 1.05, you can go. Here's the, the yang to Moon's yin, mm -hmm. or ying. My son went to opening day Six Flags on Friday. Was there for four hours. Rode one ride. Dang. No. Gosh. No. Yeah. Why? Was he just like hanging what out? What was Friday? Friday was a gorgeous day. Yeah. Friday here in St. Louis was gorgeous. Oh, that was the first day it was open. Opening day for for Six Flags. 
School was out. Mm-hmm. I go, what do you expect? Right. What do you expect? Everybody's there. How many rides you go on? One. Which one? No. I don't even know. Oh. oh, that's crazy. One ride. Well, this avatar thing you usually have to pay for, or and if you don't if or if you don't make the uh, reservation, it's closed for the day. Like everybody's reserved. So like you're not gonna get on it. So most people or maybe not most people, but some people don't even get to ride it. Not only did we ride it immediately with that lightning pass, we got out and the standby line was only 20 minutes. So we're like, oh, okay, we'll just we'll just wait again. Scott says, we, uh, Moon, you're not kidding. Uh, we were at Disney the week before you. Disney is master of they are masters of crowd control. It is, it is perfectly done, perfectly done. So our kids got these little watches, which doubled as their as their card. So they didn't even need to remember their card because I'm like, uh, these kids are going to drive right, these rivers like, or put something. their wrist up to whatever. Yeah, they just go, boop, thing. And it, it says, oh. He's here. Here's the coolest part, dude. You know all those, uh, you know all those pictures, like, um, you know, like the, the the pictures that they take of you on the ride. Yeah. You don't even need to do anything about that. It like recognizes your face and puts it in your app. That's cool. Hey, you just enjoyed this and ride. Scary. Here's all your stuff. It's freaking <laughs> amazing. Now? Hey, we scanned your freedom? fingerprint and your face. Have fun at Disney. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. You walk by Goofy, he's like, hoo, 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 we own your ass. Now. That's fine. <laughs> yuck, yuck, yuck. Own me. <laughs> <laughs> Just ordered a flat screen TV. Own me, Mickey. Own me. Because <laughs> it was own awesome. Own me, Mickey. Own me, Mickey. Own me. There's That's out there. That it, porn's out there. It was, uh, it was, it was amazing. And those pictures are free. Like they're just all in the app. Everything oh, is no, like. No, it's not free. You paid for it. But that's fine. Well, that's, up hey, your, that's rolled into the cost. That's great. Give up your autonomy. Yeah. <laughs> Give up your autonomy, your freedom. The biggest surprises were um, that uh, you can, uh, you can pull it off. You just have to be extremely organized. And Disney already organizes for you. The biggest surprise, honestly, for my wife was that the food was not ridiculous. Now the restaurants. Their prices are ridiculous, and you got to make reservations for those. We actually ended up canceling our reservations for our scheduled dinner. Yeah, they got a couple five star like gourmet, yeah, and Michelin we, star restaurants. And we were going to do those, but we kind of ran out of there. ran out of the budget yeah. <laughs> before we got to those dinners. So we're like, you know what? We'll just go at, at, in this section because we found yeah. Well, because no, kids I mean, like hot dogs we on were, a stick. We were in the parks four days in a row for the. I mean, almost the we almost maxed it out. I mean, dude, if we, listen, our, you know, the m m the Moon and Mallory vacations, if we don't come home exhausted, did we even vacation? <laughs> <laughs> Am I right? Yeah. So we exhausted ourselves, but it was, uh, it was, it was spectacular. First day was Animal Kingdom. Second day was, uh, um, shoot, what's the other one? Uh, uh, Epcot. Epcot was amazing. That was I, your fave? It was my fave. So every kid had a different favorite. I liked Epcot. I thought it was just like, I didn't even know what Epcot was. That's where you could drink around the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess so. And they have all these different, uh, like, you know, sections, uh, you know, Japan and Canada and, and Germany and, and whatever. And it's got all the stuff, you know, yeah. that kind of uh, represents each place. And that was fun. We, we got pearls out of oysters in, in Japan. And, uh, and I got a bunch of, like, Japanese snacks and stuff because I got, like, basically a market there. Uh, but the Guardians of the Galaxy, if anyone... Oh, that was at Epcot? It was at Epcot. If anyone is planning on taking their children or going themselves or whatever, or go, at a, it, if you're going to Disney, you have to ride Guardians of the Galaxy. $500 million ride, and it was the coolest ride I've ever ridden in my life. Why? That's what everybody says. Like what made it so That's great? That's the one. What one? Guardians, Guardians of the Galaxy. Of the Galaxy. Is it a coaster or is it, a, it's a coaster. is it one of those? Okay. It's a coaster that spins... And has full-on like screen experiences where it takes you into the thing, and that's that, that's the other genius of all this is like the new ride is not a, just an open-air roller coaster. It's a roller coaster with all this other stuff mm -hmm. and screens and whatever. But the real thing that Disney does so remarkably is they take all the space to immerse you in everything. So once you get into the line, you're already in like the world. You're in the the tunnel for the spaceship or whatever it is, yeah. and then. After you're out of the line, you think you're on a ride. Like you think you're like, okay, now you've, you've the 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 door has opened. They put you into a room, and that room is just another holding cell. Essentially, you're still kind of in line, but it mm -hmm. like plays a video or like puts you through an entire experience. And then the, another door so opens. So basically, up. from the moment you get in line to to when you actually exit the physical like the, yeah. the area, you are. Something's happening. Yeah, that's yeah, the right way to do it. And before you're even on a coaster, you've probably gone through two or three different like experience sections or uh, or or holding tanks, if you All will. Right, Matthew's going. He says in uh, two weeks. What's the most important thing to know? That app. 
get used to the app, figure out your schedule and like stay, stay on the schedule. And honestly, it, it will suggest to you, uh, different things on, you know, cause it's tracking you. It's, it sees what, what area you're near, like just follow along with the apps and be organized. All right. So you want, uh, uh, the Safari and then Epcot the next day and then Epcot and then it was uh, Hollywood Studios where the Star Wars is. Right. You sent me Moon sent me a four minute video of the entire ride. <laughs> I feel like I already went to Disney. I don't need to go. That wasn't even the ride. That was just the uh, <laughs> Millennium Falcon Smugglers Run. There they have a ride called Rise of the Resistance and that's most people's favorite. Again, that's kind of like Guardians of the Galaxy, but crazy, crazy immersive. By the way, that thing shut down. And ruined a lot of people's oh. lives that day. Oh. It shut down? It shut down for like four hours. And that's the other thing, too, is that if they shut down, it makes a little star on it and says temporarily closed. So there's a lot of like temporarily closed moments. Yeah, yeah. And then you just keep track of it. You watch the app and then it'll say, oh, it's back open. 20 minute standby line. Mm. 180 minute standby line. 300 minute standby line. Like you, you can see exactly how long the lines are on the app. On the rides, like the full immersive experiences, did you also smell things? Like, did they pump? Uh, oh, yeah. That's, yeah, I was wondering about that. Oh, yeah. The Avatar ride, you're sitting on a thing and it makes you feel like you're flying on that stuff. And anytime you go through like a waterfall, it sprays water on your face. I know for Star Wars, uh, sometimes it smells like uh, Jabba the Hutt's undersack. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. A lot of undersack. So. <laughs> it's a delicacy. Oh. Um, let's see. Oh, we got uh, Jabba the Hutt's undersack scent. Nice. Yeah. We did the uh, we did that safari thing in Animal Kingdom, and uh, there's like rhinos like right up next to the to the uh, to the car, you know. Yeah. And I still I cannot see a rhino and not think that Jim Carrey is going to come out of his butt. Mm. Mm -hmm. And if everything. I mean, it looks exactly like it does in mm. in the movie. <laughs> uh, that happened. The giraffe came over. That was pretty wild. Um, and it, by the way, it was not lost on me how nerdy it makes me sound that I loved seeing Tatooine Trader Station on my credit card statement. That was kind of neat uh, <laughs> from, the, from the Star Wars stuff. You can buy blue milk. We got Bantha blue milk. Like, yep. What did that taste like? Now they're selling that. That's actually good. the thing they're going to sell. It was like coconut mm -hmm. frosty. Hmm. Um, let's see. I, I would say, I know you guys, I know you two in particular have like slammed on, on Disney adults mm -hmm. and, and whatever. You get it now? I 100% get it. It is so much fun. Because kids ruin everything. Am I right, guys? It is so much fun. I had, I, had, <laughs> I had as much fun, if not more, than the kids did. It was my first time. You know, 43-year-old yeah. dude, first time. But the freaking roller coasters are second to none. The organization is second to none. The experiences are so perfectly built for everybody. There's no reason not to be a Disney adult. Well, so my wife and daughter are going at the beginning of May. Disagree. Dude, I feel like you, you you going and them going. I already went. I'm living through you guys. Nice. No, it was it was yeah. amazing. And, so I'm cool. And I'll tell Count you, it. yeah, I and, went to Disney. Count it. And in typical like you know me fashion, I will go into like the serious note of what I, uh, what I honestly took away more than just the fun was how freaking inspiring the place is. Oh, like God. how how inspiring that this. the whole story of that dude <laughs> having having a vision like that. <laughs> yeah, having a vision that was that. <laughs> Freaking huge! Like Walt Disney himself, you're talking. Him, yeah, him and his brother, and like that whole company, and when, when they started Walt all this and stuff, Roy, all ah, this stuff in the fifties and sixties and seventies. I'm between telling you, it's so Nazi inspiring. Meetings. Seeing the immensity of all of this put together, and then how it's organized. There's no reason not to be. A uh, how about adult. this? Did, didn't Walt die right before it opened? Yeah, yeah. Never he got he to never full, got to fully, never got to see, fully see the vision. See hey, his dream is he still alive, though. Okay, yeah. I mean that's you just lived it. You walked yeah, through Walt Disney. He saw park. Disney. He saw Disneyland. He then, saw Disneyland, and, and, then, he Disney and then he planned Disney World. Right. Put it all together. I think he. Yeah, I think he died right before it started. Listen, we all got a little Walt. Is Roy right? dead? It is Roy's long dead too. It's a cool thing. And having gone and taken a child for the first time, I went as an adult for the first time as well. It is something you're in awe of, and you definitely like. I went on the blogs, I did the whole, I was like, all right, they're not going to swindle me, Walt. Like, which experiences are worth using the lightning pass? Which ones can you get by on? Because you get to pick so many that... Yeah, you only get two. I used to, like, I think it was like two or three that you could pick, that you could, like, ride, you could get skip the line on, and I'm like, hey, you're not going to get me. You're not tricking me. Mm -hmm. Don't go fall for the fireworks, dude. There's always a good seat at the fireworks. Don't try to get a fast pass into the courtyard of the fireworks. Dad tip number one. But everything you just described to me is the reason I'm like... All the planning and the work that has to go into making a successful Disney trip. Nah. Oh, it wasn't that bad. For adults, I'm good. It wasn't that bad. The name of a, a friend who's a, a Disney planner. 
You know, she, I mean, that's her job. I mean, mm-hmm. she plans yeah, Disney. Yeah, she's, she's the one that booked it for us. She plans Disney vacations. I mean, there is a whole industry yeah. around planning Disney trips. Yeah. I think I it's cool it. to, t- I mean, the kids, so your kids are older, but like to see young kids, like eight years old and sure. under, to take them to Disney. I'll never forget my sister going for the first time and, wa- and seeing it happen through her eyes mm-hmm. was adorable. Yeah, I went to Disney fun. as a kid and it's something I remember. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I got to go when I was little. I remember, sure. right, was it, is it Captain EO? The Captain EO ride? What's that? Mm. I don't remember that. It was the Michael Jackson ride. Oh, I don't, <laughs> I don't remember that, that one. I oh, yeah, the that, Aerosmith ride. The Aerosmith was shut down. We didn't get to see oh. that. We didn't get to see that. And I, I heard that was good. That. I was there when they opened up that ride. Aerosmith did a tour, like, or a parade through the park. Oh, that's on cool. On a convertible, and I got to see Steven Tyler, and it was all crazy. Was, <sighs> that was the only thing that was shut down in Hollywood. Studios. How was Bummer. the behavior of other people? Were there Great. some real scumbags there. No, and, and I'm going to say something that's not <laughs> going to endear me to our listening audience, but uh, the, the Hoosier level was just so far below what I'm used to. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> what? I, I, and, and you know what, you know what wow. I mean? <laughs> I felt like, I mean, it's a theme park. You, you're going to see, you're going to see that's 90% Hoosier. of the You're going to see Hoosier. You know what I mean? Like, that's, that's what we do. Yeah. That's I, where that, they go. I, you know, I'm a part of that, too. Uh, but you ain't at Silver Dollar City no more. Were you the most Hoosierific person that was I might have been a time or two for sure. Like, yeah, yeah. He's in there in his Crocs and his NASCAR <laughs> shirt. Like, where's all the Hoosiers at? <laughs> Thank God they didn't come. No, I'm here for the you, immersive like, NASCAR it's experience. You, where's dude. that at? No, it's I, you. Universal. I, it's, 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 I mean, behavior-wise. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. we, all, we all have Hoosier in us. We're all Hoosiers. But, like, you know, we don't behave like Hoosiers when we're out in, in public. But you know who does. You didn't see anybody pooping in that hallway? That, Nothing. The hallway? There oh, was yeah, where's not, the poop? It was uh, you know, so they're nice. They're so, they, they control what you see there. They escort that riffraff right out of the park. They must. Because they swept it right out. Get out of here. <laughs> you go on. You Listen, you go on to social media. You go look up, uh, you know. Some uh, questionable things done at Disney. Mm. It it was uh, it was pretty cool. The, and and the RV no no mishaps at the RV. Nah zero dude. Uh, we had one issue that was my fault and and that was it. Um, it was perfect. It was it was freaking perfect. And uh, the kids were impressed uh, with how many languages. We were there for ten minutes and we heard eight different languages. I want to hear and one it, negative thing. Go. I always um, hear about the perfect. Yeah. Whenever he comes back, everything's always perfect. I got some, but we I, all I'm got some. I'm inspired. I wrote 15 songs. He's opening uh, a theme My park. family is, I, you know, are to board yeah. together than we've ever Life been. I'm actually always one something. inch taller. <laughs> always something happens when <laughs> I go. Happen. I want to hear one Life thing. This is so go. cool, dude. Go. Uh, we all got sunburned on the uh, on the last day, and. Uh, it was a little bit lengthy. Of course, on the last not day. Not good enough. Yeah. So, so, the, worse. so the last and day, it's people that tan really quickly, so it's not really a sunburn. No, we we burned pretty bad. We were idiots because we didn't we didn't put any stuff on our face. Um, we went to Magic Kingdom the last day, and you know they got the fireworks at eight thirty on the castle. And oh, by the way, from from Fort Wilderness, you can watch the 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 fireworks. So we watched the fireworks every night from the beach. But everybody was like, you got to see it at the castle because it was like a full show. Mm-hmm. And holy crap, were they right. But that doesn't start till 8.30. So we got there at 7 in the morning or whatever it was to wait. And that was a long day, dude. We burned the kids out on that day. And that's the most <laughs> negative thing that happened. It was too uh, much fun. Too much fun. It, we had <laughs> we got too burned. much fun one day, guys. Oh, oh, I just mean we got burned out. We, oh. we got a little burned out of that last day. If but anything, the fun meter. I almost got left in the Dominican Republic one year. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, that's on yeah, you, vacation man. Some of us make our own face. Yeah, I was gonna say maybe you take the cloud with you. <laughs> maybe, know, maybe that's a good a point. Thing. Maybe my that happiness like over here problem. is just cutting the string of that. Yeah, you're probably right. Maybe a me, maybe a me problem. It was amazing. It was so I'm organized. I'm so glad you guys had a good time. That's it cool. was so cool. It was so cool. Yeah. Well, I'll you tell you something. Do that make, sucks. You did you did romanticize it a lot, and dude, it's worth it. I'm not I'm not exaggerating either. I'm not even rem- remembering half of the stuff that happened. That was so cool. Well, I'll tell you what sucks about it because when I went, and that is, <laughs> they might as Give well hold. <laughs> if you're the if you're the payer, you're gonna feel it, brother. That's, that may might as well hold you upside down by your ankles and shake all the change out of your pockets because Disney's getting that money while you're there. Oh, yeah. Why do you think yeah. they got all this cool stuff? Yeah, they're getting that money from Nobody's you. getting in for free. You didn't build a lightsaber? Like, I'm not saying it's not a good experience, but nope. the reason there ain't no Hoosiers there is because they can't afford it. You know, and I knew somebody was going to say that, and I, it's not, I don't, I do not subscribe 
I don't subscribe to that uh, to to that whole sentiment. Any like of you that can kind budget of stuff. it and make it happen. I think you can make Where it. Where were they then? I think you can make it happen. I think if you're smart about it, you, then you're going to be smart you about it. Get really and, you, out. and you can still really enjoy yourself. And honestly, it is expensive. Uh, a lot of it is expensive. I'm not going to deny that. But I I'm telling you, I in my opinion. It was worth every dollar that we spent. Mm -hmm. We saved the money where we could save the money. Like I said, the food was actually, we were expecting that. We we were walking in with like seven bananas so, and oranges. Right, and we got right, bags of food and all these different snacks. You've priced out a large portion of, uh, of mm -hmm. the public. Well, everything does. So does... So does anything. So does we ice skating or this. Six Flags. Right? Yeah. This is a plan. Like you're not you... doing this every, you know. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You you're get what you every seven you years get what you pay that. for. And and right. And what I'm saying is, I think it was worth. Uh, I think it was reasonably priced for everything you can get if you if you just like just go in with a little bit of organization. How much a lightsaber cost? Dude, the lightsabers were expensive. We didn't get those. They're like uh, two fifty or something. Yeah, two fifty for like the thing. It, and by the way, there's you can get them at like Disney Springs and, and different things, but you can only custom build them at uh, at the Galaxy's Edge, like where you buy like the Kuiper crystals yeah. and all like the badassness. And you can put one together. It's probably five hundred bucks. Ooh, worth man. it. Yeah, it's worth. You need to do that for the kids. And, ge get and guess what? One. The ten year old's been talking about every single oh. day since then. Oh. Saving his money to go back to Galaxy's Edge. <laughs> There's mine. <laughs> Dude. There's mine. All right. How much does that say. cost you? A lot. Let me put it away first. Here's what Thank I'll you. say, man. Oh, that was sweet. I'm 43 and was blown away by the, the attention to detail and the immersiveness. I can't imagine what that would have done to my brain at eight years old. Mm -hmm. I, like seeing Star Wars or seeing any movie that you really like and then going somewhere like, you know. At your head. Eight-year-old head. Yeah, I, I went they, there when I was... Either eight or nine, something like that. And I wish they had the rides they have now because I know it would have been even better. But it was uh, its kind of a thing where you're kind of blown away, but also it's a fun, it's another version of Silver Dollar City to me. I was like, this is neat. Yeah. But this I love Silver Dollar City. City. Hmm? I just looked it up. Average cost Disney trip, Disney World 2023 2024, family of four. Go. If you're looking to plan a Disney World vacation, wide range of prices available for family of three or four. You probably want to assume you're spending at least thirty-five hundred, with five to six thousand being a comfortable amount and ten thousand being enough if you really want to do it all. Ten night. grand. Wow. Wait, well, for listen, how many days you get that? Four. Four days, for four people. Right. Four and days. It, and it says we've noted several times you can go way up from these numbers depending sure. on the experiences, or you exactly. can penny pinch to get under them, which I know yeah. you're you're savvy with that we, stuff. We I think the RV saved you a lot of money. Yeah, no, no flights. Did. No, no flights no saved flights, you a lot of money. None of that stuff. But, I mean, that's a lot of money, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's actually, a lot of money. 10 Gs is a lot of... We did not spend anywhere near there, and we have I know. we have a lot more than four people. And they have four... <laughs> uh, I'm saying even five or six grand prices a lot of people out. Yeah, oh, yeah, for sure. Wow. I, I get it. I get it. We 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 plan ten this. G's. Well, I'm going somewhere else. Yeah, when you it's hear people be tight. When you hear people going twice a year, I don't know. How That's to, wild. Know you know what's funny? That. Here's the difference. I would spend ten G's to go to a place where I do nothing. Well, that's, yeah. Isn't that funny? <laughs> you can do nothing <laughs> there too. <laughs> I would spend ten ten G's to that's go to a place where funny, I do nothing. Yes. Yeah, you can do two. Uh, you can do nothing there. The campground alone was well, was sick. Listen, back to reality. Yeah. You're here. Yeah. You missed Lauren's birthday last week. I know. I'm sorry. I was telling The Ghost of Moon signed the card, though. That the was Ghost cool. of Moon signed uh, the birthday card. You missed uh, Lauren's mom bringing in soup. Oh, uh, delicious. Soup. Oh, dude. Mm -hmm. We oh. ate so well oh, on man. Thursday. Her mom and uh, stepdad Jerry came in, mm -hmm. mm. brought a crock pot full of soup, tortellini and, soup, and red velvet cake. We had some of that. And he loved both things, which I was terrified because this is like food of my history. <laughs> and I was like, if I bring this in here and he poo-poos all over it, I don't think I'm going to be on the show it. anymore. It's, loved it. Yeah. It's the fabric loved of learn it. food. Loved it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm glad you're back, buddy. I'm glad we're all back. Mm -hmm. Team's back together. Mm -hmm. uh, today, supposed to be some bad weather. You hear about this? Oh, yeah. Uh, Channel 4 is calling today a first, a first alert weather day. A high probability of uh, strong to severe storms today. The entire area is under a threat level three out of five risk for severe storms. Three out of five. Severe potential will come down to how much energy can build. Uh, cloud cover is looking likely ahead of the storms, which may limit how much invis uh, in I'm sorry, instability builds. A lack of instability will mean weaker storms. If the storms can overcome that and the instability builds, then hail, wind, isolated tornadoes will be possible. Looking at two rounds of storms today. First will be this afternoon with more uh, discrete and individual thunderstorms. 
Uh, watch this round for an isolated tornado threat and hail risk. Round two this evening. This round could produce all types of severe weather, uh, which will continue until roughly 1 a.m. tomorrow morning. So that's nice. Nice. Weather all right down there? And that was the other thing. The weather was perfect. There we go. Not, a, not an ounce of rain. Not a sprinkle. I love it, Not man. even a sprinkle. I it, hate you. It You're was in Florida perfect. and it didn't sprinkle at all. <laughs> didn't sprinkle, man. It was between 60 and 76 degrees like every day. By the way, my best friend checking in, she went to Disney last year with her kids for the first time. She goes, this Disney talk is amazing. I want to go back. She did spend a lot of money to mm -hmm. take her children, but they can't wait to go back. So you're inspiring people. God, dude, it was it was cool. And you know, the other note that I wrote down was, uh, good to see people and families everywhere enjoying themselves. No one looked self-conscious. Uh, everyone was just enjoying life. RV community was impressive and friendly and yeah. in, a, in a way that was actually very difficult to explain. Uh, very cool, so welcoming, a nicer breed of people. <laughs> well, it's the happiest place on earth, man. Mm -hmm. That is true, though. I met the RV people. A, a yeah, nicer breed of people. We stayed at an RV people. park in Utah where we rented. We rented an RV as in, it was already there. I didn't have to do anything. I, didn't have to, I, I have all the same worries you have. Where I'm like, I don't get sprayed with liquid diarrhea. Yeah. <laughs> trying to like, figure out how to empty this tank at a, right. at a Bucky's. <laughs> like, I'm not looking forward to it. I don't want the gray water on me. But it was like, everybody there was, it, was, it did have a communal feel. Like, some dudes took us out in their dune buggies, and it was like, at night, everybody was like hanging out. Yeah. You know, it was kind of like with a little camp. Best friends instantly with Dude, yeah, kids. we saw kids everywhere riding bikes with fishing poles, and they were going to different places, and everybody was talking like, hey, where, you know, did you catch anything today? Where where should we go? Oh, it's over by the, back behind the pool, by back behind the movie theater. Every <laughs> night at that place, they would they would play another movie. I but, caught Ariel. It was, it was freaking <laughs> sweet. That's cool. Yeah, man. It was cool. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's for everybody. It's not just a kid thing. Yeah. I don't know. You'd love it. I know I would. <laughs> you really would. That's your would. big avoidance. I know, I know it. I, I don't want to. <laughs> you don't <laughs> you want to enjoy guys. it. You don't want to come back and go, okay, I admit, the mouse has got me and I like, love Okay, it. so like today is April <laughs> Fool's Day, right? Mm -hmm. So today is all about pranks. I get up in the morning and go, oh, my God. I don't want nobody to do nothing to me. Like, Nobody's doing anything. I When's know. When's the last time anybody got pranked? We're in this business. We're not even allowed to do anything. How's your coffee? Yeah. yeah. A little tangy. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we used to get an email every year uh, from one of the bosses that said, hey, April 1st is coming up. Uh, this is a directive. For no, this was back in the MS days. Yeah. When we were with MS. Good old Rick Bayless would send the email out saying. Scare the hell out of everybody. No April Fool's Day pranks on the air. Right. None. Well, he got burned a time or two. Yeah. Well, he got burned a time or two. <laughs> Uh, and also, there there are some stories, you know, nationally of of radio people getting burnt. Well, it's the public airwaves. We can't mess with the public, you know. Like FCC, yeah. we can't. Yeah, they don't have a sense of no, humor. I, well, <laughs> well, yes. And and let me I, I, let me do a rundown of like some some April Fool's Day pranks on the radio that did not go well for the hosts. Love it. The one I know the most and one of the most famous to me is. Uh, WAAF is a radio station in Boston. Do you know this story? I think so, yeah. Uh, AAF is a, is a big Boston rock radio station. Welcome back to in, the WAF. Back in 1998. Well, they, so up in Boston. You're listening to two, the WAF. There's two rock stations up there. I don't, I don't know if AAF's around anymore. So it's AAF and BCN with the two rock stations up there would battle it out all the time. So BCN versus AAF. And uh, two of my favorite radio personalities, Opie and Anthony, were on AAF. And back in 98, uh, they decided they would have a little fun with the mayor of Boston. And as it turned out, most people did not think this was funny at all. So Opie and Anthony announced on the show that the mayor, Tom Menino, was killed in a car accident. So I said the mayor of Boston was killed in a car accident. Um... And they would go to commercial, and they would come back and give a little more detail. And people didn't think it was funny. Right. And, and they were planning on saying it was an April Fool's joke, but it went so long. That even, like, the mayor's family. Oh, my God. Uh, so he was on a flight home. From, the mayor was on, the, on a flight home from Florida at the time. Oh, so he couldn't even prove it wrong. Right. Uh, Whoo. So people began began calling the mayor's family with like condolences, mm -hmm. like "Oh my God, we heard that the mayor, you know, the right, mayor died." Yeah, yeah, yeah. And again, he was on a plane and he couldn't. He couldn't. <laughs> it was ninety eight, no phones. Unbelievable. 
You know, he probably didn't know until he got landed and at home and the news. <laughs> He's like, I'm what? You didn't have a rolling text screen that showed you all the 24-7 news coverage. At the time, Opie and Anthony were so, they were so outrageous. I love, I was a huge fan. But they wound up getting fired from sure. AF and, and actually wound up going to New York. So they got fired and got a better job. Right. But and the still. rest is history with those guys. But they wound up getting fired for that one. Uh, another set of radio DJs got into trouble when they started making claims about the local water supply. <laughs> so two Florida DJs, they worked at a country station, told their listeners, this is back in 2013, that they would receive dihydrogen monoxide when they turned on the water taps at home. So like, hey, when you turn on the water taps at home, dihydrogen monoxide is going to come out. And they weren't lying since dihydrogen monoxide <laughs> is just a fancy way of saying water. water. However, the reaction of the listeners <laughs> turned it into a situation <laughs> local law enforcement could not ignore. Mm. Uh, the local utility department was forced to issue a statement. <laughs> yes, we are. Saying the water's that. fine. <laughs> Idiot. It's, it's safe to drink despite any statements to the contrary. Criminal charges against the two DJs. Yeah. Criminal charges. Gosh, man. Remember, this is all this is all <laughs> radio station April Fool's Day pranks. Um, a radio station in Bakersfield did a radio contest with the uh, with the prize of a brand new Hummer in 2005. So in all five, those Hummers, those new Hummers, were 60 grand. So when a woman named Shannon uh, Castillo won the prize. She was obviously super stoked. However, she was greeted with great disappointment when she arrived the next day to claim the new Hummer. Uh, she was handed a toy version of a Hummer <laughs> hey, that, that was... could fit in her hand. <laughs> that was my grandmother's move. She told me for years that she was going to get me a car when I turned 16, and she gave me a Matchbox car. <laughs> her disappointment turned into anger, and she called an attorney and sued the radio station for... The price of a Hummer. Hmm. I believe the radio station had to eventually give the woman. Oh, Changed everything. Nice. Just like that Pepsi plane. Hey, um, I've, I've been trying to find this this picture of it. I can't find it. I want to. I'm going to bring it in tomorrow, though. I have a piece of paper that was mailed to my mother. Oh, is this it? Oh no. Um, I have a piece of paper that was mailed to my mother that said uh, that they were sorry about uh, the death of her husband. Oh. And um, what? Okay, so I've told this. I've told you this before. My dad was born on whatever day he was born with his full name and so was another guy in this area wow. with the same name same exact name same exact birthday they both became science teachers in the same area mm. my dad taught Rob's Binks my dad taught at Kirkwood and guy. he taught up in, in North County one's white one's black oh <laughs> which one's your dad <laughs> <laughs> well he's Good adopted question. so it does it so well Funny enough, the the greatest part about all this is in in uh, tenth grade, I had a biology teacher, and she goes, "Hey, uh, I I know that name. Um, I know a science teacher with the last name that you have." And I said, "Oh yeah, that's my dad." And she said, uh, "Ralph is your dad?" And I said, "Yeah, yeah, Ralph's my dad." And she <laughs> she looked at me so weird. She's like, "Are you sure?" I said, "Yeah, I'm, yeah." And she goes, Ralph is your dad, science teacher. I said, yeah, over at Kirkwood. She goes, no, no, he's at Hazelwood. Or, 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 right. and, and, and it took a while for us to figure out that she knew a Ralph and I knew a Ralph. And Both this science teachers, born on the exact same day. Wow. And that guy died. And they sent my mother his insurance, or not his insurance, but it was uh, it was like some con it was some condolence mm. thing from some company that was involved with something, saying, "Hey, you need to call us." And wow. <laughs> she got a letter that said, "I'm sorry, you know, I'm sorry that Ralph William died." Wow. Well, I mean, that's not. Did she get it on April Fool's Day? No, she got it a couple months ago. <laughs> But, I mean, it was just the weirdest letter. Like, oh you read this gosh. thing, and it's got his name fully multiple times, and you're just like, this is eerie. Mm. But isn't that crazy? Yeah. Dude was named the exact same thing, middle name and everything, born on the exact same day, science in the same teacher. area, both became science That's teachers. wild. The that odds of that happening are very strange. And it's been mixed up. They've been mixed up a few times. Oh, uh, nothing as serious I wanna, as I just I want to get back to I got a couple more bad April Fool's Day pranks mm -hmm. that went wrong. So this one uh, this one happened at Hooters. Non-radio Oh, my related. God, the boobs are fake. No. Oh. <laughs> oh, thank God. 
Gotcha. So, a manager at a Hooters restaurant in Florida decided to celebrate April Fool's Day in 01 by offering a free Toyota. Uh, and they offered the free Toyota to the employee who sold the most beer that day. At the end of the day, the manager blindfolded the winning employee, led her outside to the parking lot where he presented her with her prize, a toy Yoda. A little plastic Yoda doll from Star Wars. Ooh. Baby Yoda? Mm. This is way before Baby Yoda. Ugh. This is a well, this toy. Is just really this upsetting. is a toy Yoda. A toy Yoda. I get it. They didn't get in trouble for that, huh? Oh, they did. Oh, they did? Oh, they did. The waitress sued. And she was ultimately awarded enough money to pick out uh, the real Toyota she wanted. Get no her. way. Oh, yeah. So wordplay. Off the table. Can't do that. Can't do that. Man. Isn't that the English language's fault? I mean, I don't know. Toyota. I can understand being upset. No, they actually gave they actually actually gave gave her enough money to actually go buy a real Man. A real Toyota. What do you think about that? You think I mean, did that ruin the fun? All these lawsuits over time like this ruin the fun for the rest I of the I mean us? Yes. It was a joke, yes. Uh Jeff Burton always tells the story of him getting a scratchy a scratch off lottery ticket. <laughs> that, that hit like ten grand. He <clears throat> called Julie and said, "Baby, we won ten grand, and you know, we could finally pay off some of our bills." And I think Julie was pregnant at the time, and uh, and it wound up. If you turn the card over, it said, "You know, this is a novelty item." It says you, you're an idiot. You're an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> uh, could he have sued? Mm. Who? Mm. I don't know the well, obviously the woman. Could sue Hooters over the Toyota. Think how many, if you could sue that, then almost every uncle out there on the planet is going to get sued. Because I got those, I mean, how many times you get a scratch off like that from a family member? Right. And you win, you're excited, and yeah. <clears throat> uh, some, of the, uh, some of the corporations getting in on the, uh, on the holiday fun today. Um, Hormel Chili is suggesting a solution to the legendary double dipping issue with the double dippable chips. The chips have a perforation down the center to make it easier to snap them into two halves to allow for double dipping. Heinz is reportedly placing small ketchup dispensing billboards outside Chicago restaurants that don't serve Heinz. One of the targets is supposedly McDonald's, which uh, dropped the brand in 2013 after Heinz hired the CEO of Burger King, which I didn't know. Uh, Heinz is urging people to report other restaurants and don't serve the brand to smackforheinz.com, which goes live tomorrow. Krispy Kreme claims they're selling a dozen donuts for 401 on April Fool's Day. That's legit, though, because uh, you only get to deal with the purchase of another dozen at full price. If that was a prank, then that would be super lame. <laughs> the obviously 401 price is a reference to the date. Let's listen. Let's not forget that it's it's April 1st. I mean, we, March is done. Mm -hmm. It's April 1st. Here we are. Here we are, guys. You know, the biggest thing we celebrate on this date. Well, we're not going to get to that yet. Okay. So, so long, March. Hello, April. We do have some things to look forward to this month. Hit me. It is one of the best months of the year for sports uh, for sports fans. So, the women's Final Four is Friday, championship on Sunday. The men's Final Four is Saturday, championship next Monday. The Masters starts April 11th. NBA playoffs start the 20th. Stanley Cup playoffs start the 22nd. NFL draft kicks off April 25th. In theaters, the new Don't Tell Mom the Babysitter's Dead remake, uh, that comes out April 12th. Sasquatch Sunset. Has anybody seen the trailer for this thing? Yeah. What's this? Why? It was Ari Esther, but I think he's just a producer. It's somebody Sasquatch else. Sasquatch Sunset. Hmm. It's like oh. Mike, who's in it? It's like Eisenberg. Michael Sarah, right? Jesse uh, Eisenberg. Jesse Eisenberg. Yeah. yeah, this looks... It's getting good reviews. Wow. Yeah, it's getting great reviews. Uh, it's pretty, it's pretty I, awesome. I just, I just, you know what? Just go watch the trailer on your own. Uh, it's... Uh, Deep in the untouched wilderness hides an extraordinary family. Is yeah, Jesse a, Eisenberg playing Sasquatch? Yeah. That, it's really? a fam they are, yeah, it's a family of Sasquatches. They're mysterious, reclusive. It's, and unseen. He's pretending because it's actually real Sasquatches, but oh god, they're making it seem like yeah. It's and the trailer is two now. Sasquatches humping. I'll, I'll just leave it there. <laughs> oh, uh, Jesse Eisenberg and Riley Keough's in it. 
That opens up on the 19th. Uh, the <laughs> Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare. That also comes out on the 19th. Zendaya's new movie, uh, Challengers, opens up on the 26th. On TV, the detective series Sugar with Colin Farrell. That, uh, now that's on Apple TV this Friday. Uh, a new Fallout show hits uh, Prime April 11th. Season 3 of Welcome to Wrexham hits FX on the 18th. The Son of the Hedgehog spinoff Knuckles premieres on Paramount Plus on the 26th. And Thank You, Good Night, The Bon Jovi Story hits Hulu the same day. And finally for the holidays, big one is Passover from the 22nd through the 30th. But also National Beer Day is the 7th. National Pet Day is the 11th. Earth Day is the 22nd. And Scott's favorite, Arbor Day. Heck yeah. Is April 26th. Can't wait. Oh, we got the eclipse a week from today. Yeah. I ordered my glasses. Oh, good. For the whole fam? For the whole show? Thank you. No, I did not order for the whole show. You're on your own. You have your glasses from last time? I bought everybody sure some. I did. did you, you did? really? I did. They're in my car. Oh, that's nice. I wish I would have talked about it the other day. Wish I would have known before I spent 500 bucks on glasses. <laughs> well, wow. brother, I actually think I told you. Yeah, you did. I know you say that. And if you were a few bourbons deep when I told you. Um, I bought the uh, paper ones. It was like six bucks. Yeah. These like weren't six crazy. Bucks. These were the 3D looking. But they, they said the old ones aren't good anymore. So I didn't want you guys using old ones. So we Thank talked you. about not having them the other day. I bought five other? pairs of like the ones, ones from, from the, the other. previous eclipse. Like Why? I guess they didn't. Is it a different sun? Yeah, it's a different uh, sun. That, that doesn't make any sense. I don't know. That's what we yeah. said during our broadcast the other day, right? Didn't you look it up? Am I yeah. crazy? Didn't want you guys burning your little red. Well, thank out. you. So my daughter says that their school is like shutting down, and they're going to go outside and go watch. My son is like, we'll probably have to stay inside. <laughs> I wouldn't think so. I think everybody'd go outside. Also, because we're in the path of not well, St. Louis path of totality. Like, um, they're saying, you know, everything like our cell phones are going to be all messed up. Because of the solar oh. flares. I don't oh, buy yeah, that. That's you don't gonna... buy that. I, I do. Buy it. I'm going underground. It says just to make sure that you check all your old lenses for holes, tears, scratches, or any other damage. Because that can happen a lot. And you want to make sure they're in good condition. Yeah, that's it. Especially if you've got the paper There's only one ones. way to find out if they're damaged. You've got to look man. at the eclipse. Yeah, if you got the paper ones. Well, I will take the new glasses, paper. Rafe. Thank you. You're welcome. And I appreciate it. When the nanobots get activated during the eclipse. Well, yes. The nanobots will be activated during the eclipse. That's right. So, yeah, as far as totality goes, we're like 98.5%. It's still going to look cool. That's not enough. Well, go down to wherever he's going, Sykeston. I'm going to Litchfield, which Litchfield. I, is also not in the path of totality, but that's where the party's at. Close that's enough. That's where I'm going. I'm going to go down to Macanda. That's in it, right? Yeah. Carbondale, too. Yeah, it's not too far. I'll be down there. All right, well, good luck, everybody. Thank you. Okay, also, it's a cool you. town. Yeah, it is. It's weird. I like it. It's a little weird. Which town down there in southern Illinois? What town? McCanda. McCanda. That's what McCanda. they got the, the Crow Fest, or, uh, or is it Raven, Raven Fest? Raven Fest? Yeah. So, uh, some, some sort of festival. Sounds with like the, something with, I don't want to be involved the in. They got an Italian fest in Heron, Illinois. You'd love that. Oh, yes. You would love Italian fest. Uh, Fiesta Italiana, right? Uh-huh. Oh, yeah? Oh, that's got Riz all over it. Oh, yeah? For real. It's just all yeah. Italian food, the concert. Parade, throw spaghetti uh, from the kids. yeah? Fun. Yeah. It's pretty cool. It's vulture. pretty fun. Ha! I knew it was something. The Vulture like Fest? The Vulture Fest, yeah. No, it's not, <laughs> not the trade magazine Vulture. We got Actual take, Vultures. We got to take a break, but first. All right, uh, Team Riz Member of the Day is brought to you by Hot Shot Sports Bar and Grill. St. Louis is home for blues hockey from Livingston, Illinois, Charlie Lowe yeah, is our yeah, Charlie. Of the day. Livingston. Uh, cool. uh, Livingston Ill. We've had, is that, a so, is that a so ill town? No, that's over there like north of Edwardsville, but I've partied in that town before. I think there's a place called the Dog House. All right. I've uh, had a Charlie, few adventures in. Charlie's an avid evangelist, has been a listener of the show since the early days. Loves everything about it. Uh, banter between all the members always keeps him drawn in. And his favorite segments, Match Up with the Moon, which, you know, Scott, let's do Match Up with the Moon maybe tomorrow. Loves a do-it bitch, loves simpleton trivia. Uh, Mrs. Jeff very much will always be his favorite. But he loves my personality, raves, uh, raves improv, learns contagious laughs, Moon's argumentative attitude with everything Riz says, and, yep, King Scott, <laughs> you're over there. Aw, look at you. Uh, Charlie Lowe from Livingston is our Team Riz member of the day. 
Get super sweet Team Riz Murray today. Soccer jersey. Get yourself signed up. 1057thepoint.com slash Team Riz. All right, let's take a break. We'll come back with Crap on Celebrities. It is 716. It is Monday. Your first look at the traffic and weather. Moon coming at you. Traffic is brought to you by Worldwide Technology Raceway. The Confluence Music Festival with Ludacris, Riley Green, and more. And the NASCAR Cup Series are June 1st and 2nd. Tickets available now. WWTRaceway.com. Right lane blocked due to a crash 55 southbound just before Arsenal Street. Your point forecast, a couple gnarly rounds of severe storms are possible throughout the day. High of 78. Right now, though... It is uh, 68 at the Point Studio. All right, Learn, what do you got for us? Has Diddy been in plain sight this whole time? Lincoln Park settles that lawsuit. Who is actually Fat Amy and the sexiest nude scene of all time? It's not what you think. All right, we got that. We got your crappy birthdays. We got the porno birthday. All that and more next. Any crap on celebrity? Stay there. Who is Trailer Trash Tammy? What happens when you combine random internet trends into a single video? What is a mukbang? And are we so desperate to be distracted from our own reality that we resorted to binging videos of people shoveling anything edible into their face hole? More on that today on the number two show. Welcome back to the number two show. Today, forget sex, drugs, and rock and roll, baby. We've got something that tops them all and is twice as indulgent. The script on your future. Now, imagine transforming your life and career in just a couple months. Now, this is all possible. It's all possible in three easy steps, thanks to Centric. Step number one, you decide to make a change. You've got the power to rewrite your story starting today. Step number two, you dive into Centric's accelerated tech program, whether you're into coding or cybersecurity or network administration, they have you covered. In as little as four months, you can get the skills you need with the hands-on training that sets you up for real-world success. Step three, you step out, you launch a new career. Centric's not just about learning, it's about launching. Launching you into a career that is as dynamic and forward-moving as you are. And guys, here's the best part. You choose how to learn. On-site or online, day, evening, or flex option, Centrix Flexible Learning fits your life. Not the other way around. With new programs starting all the time, the right moment is whenever you are ready. So change your life in just three easy steps today by going to Centric.com slash Riz, C-E-N-T-R-I-Q.com slash R-I-Z-Z. All right, we are uh, backstage at the pageant. Big time club show with 311. We've got Peanut and Mr. Nick Hexum joining us. Gentlemen, it is an absolute pleasure to uh, have you back in St. Louis and, and, and play in the pageant. It's great to be able to be so close to you tonight. You love seeing us in small places. I do. I can't, I, I will yep. not ever deny yep. that. It was a little off camera, little banter we were doing. Yeah, it's good to be in small places. This is where, this is where we cut our teeth. You know, you were saying Mississippi Nights and and we did the same thing in town, but pageant. I walked in this morning, first thing, like groggy, nine in the morning, like, we're gonna destroy this place. <laughs> like, okay, now this is a the question. People that have been here too, like, on, there's this wall of fame, and oh, the, yeah. the owner has got a photo with all the biggest people in the world. Like, they get some great names. It's, it's incredible. And also, too, down at Blueberry Hill, I mean, what he has here at the, at the pageant is just like, I mean, I, from what I understand, it is a very small amount of his collection. And over at Blueberry Hill, there's the pictures with uh, Mick Jagger and Paul McCartney and George Harrison. And I've heard of all of them. <laughs> right, right, right. All pretty established folks. So, but you guys gotta have to be on that wall somewhere. Have you not gotten a picture taken with Joe? We're somewhere. With we're. I was say. Yeah, we're Imagine Dragons. <laughs> well, I, I think you got a couple more albums under the belt than those dudes. I want to ask a, a question that might sound funny, but I honestly don't mean it to be funny. When you are that could be going, anything. I love that. That could be absolutely <laughs> right, anything. Right, good yeah. stuff. When you go from playing a gigantic stage to a smaller stage, is there any like legit concern of, hey, we have to watch each other tonight so that we don't run into someone, so that nobody gets whacked with anything, nobody trips? Is that it? But you guys are pros, so that's probably not a deal. I mean, you gotta imagine when you're when we were first starting out, 22, 23, we were so out of control and wild. We had. A, few more on stage collisions than 
but now we all kind of just have an unspoken choreography. I gotcha. You know, S.A. has his lane. When he's right now in the industry for floor layers with the Carpenters Union. Do yourself a favor or somebody you know and have them visit the website apply.ficstl.org. That's apply.ficstl.org. Don't do it while you're driving. Do it when you get wherever you're going. Because uh, I'm, I'm here to tell you that as a career... You know, with a career as an installed floor layer, it's going it's to give you meaningful work. It's going to give you your, your family and yourself lifelong benefits, fantastic opportunities to have a lucrative career. And once you get started, you start making money right away. What I mean by that is as you learn, you earn. So you don't have to put aside time and say, well, well I don't have time to, to, to go get an education to do something different or, or get trained to do this, to do something different. I, I, can't, I can't afford to do that. Well, yes, you can here because as you learn, you earn. Once you get started, you start making money right away. Lucrative, creative, meaningful, all those things come along with this great opportunity for a real career, not just a job. Massive opportunity is an installed floor layer with the Carpenters Union. Visit this website apply.ficstl.org that's apply.ficstl.org Five seven point everything alternative. We are backstage. We are at Bush Stadium. Uh, Bush Kirk Stadium. Hammett from Metallica joining us today. Thank you. It's absolutely an honor to get the chance to meet you. Cheers. Likewise. All right. So first, we're going to talk about things that are not music related. Okay. I saw your Instagram post on Friday night about coming to St. Louis, looking for some comic book spots. Yeah. yeah. Did you find any? Well, I found one spot, but you know what? I didn't have time enough to get make it to the to the place. Sure. It or, happens, or, I'm sure. Or, or in other words, I had every intention on going today, but you know, I made the mistake of picking up my guitar in my hotel room, and there two and went. a half hours later, <laughs> I put it down. And I thought, oh, well, the, there went my gallivanting around the city time. Well, you know, when I'm when I'm buying records, you know, I find days where there's things where I either have it or just don't want it. Like with a collection uh, of memorabilia and comics and things that you have horror related, do you have a tough time sometimes finding things you need and that you want and that aren't already in the collection? Well, you know, I, I just kind of like uh, just kind of leave myself open to just to anything when I'm just out there and just out and about. It's crazy because uh, just recently on, on the East Coast, I, I was just went out to a comic store to buy buy some comic books that I, that knew, I knew had just been uh, uh, j had just come out. And I found something that I've been looking for for like the last 20 years. And I did a double take. I was like, is that really what I think it is in the cabinet? And sure enough, it was. And I was just blown away because I, I, I've only known of one of these things through a book, another book, you know. Right. I saw a picture of it in a, another book. I've never actually seen one, you know, in, in, in the flesh. But lo and behold, yeah. there it was. And, and so I, I was like... Oh my God! I just have to have to grab that thing. Did you get excited for the find? Oh, I was I I I couldn't believe it. I took pictures of it. I I, I called a bunch of friends and I, and I said, "Look what I found! Have you seen one of these?" And and all of them said, "No, no, not at all. That uh, that's probably a one of a kind piece." Man, well, that's a win. That's yeah. a win. Well, it's from 1933 too. Wow, that's yeah. incredible. That's incredible. So we we turn things to the the show here tonight. You know, I'm really spring. Spring in St. Louis, it's the rainy season. You got kids, you got pets, they're going outside, they're getting their, uh, their feet muddy, and they're coming inside, they're dragging their muddy feet across your carpets. Oh, boy, you got dirty, messy carpets. Or, let's say this, you've got somebody who suffers from severe allergies. All right, you need your, uh, your air ducts cleaned out. Think about the dust, the dander, the bacteria living and breeding in your carpet, your upholstery, your air ducts. It's got, some, it's got nowhere to go. And as many as one in five Americans suffer from allergies caused by particles frequently found inside the air in most homes. So if you or anybody in your family suffers from allergies or asthma, or you just want cleaner, healthier air, Zero Res could help you out. Your air ducts. Your air ducts are like the lungs of the house. If your air ducts are dirty, your indoor air quality suffers. And maybe you never thought about cleaning out the air ducts. You call Zero Res. They'll come in there. Make those air ducts shine. We had them uh, at our house maybe two or three years ago. 
and the air ducts had never been cleaned out. And they had a camera up there show me what it was all about before they did the cleaning. Gross. And they were done. Less dust bunnies around. We were, we, I, you feel it. So this month, get three rooms, zero resified from St. Louis's number one carpet cleaner starting at 129 and take $50 off your air duct cleaning. You owe it to yourself and your family. Breathe healthy, happy, and clean. Call Zero Res, 314-474-2020. Or go online anytime, ZeroResSTL.com. So you want the ratio special. Spelled backward or forward, spells the same at Zero Res. All right, it's Riz. It's Jeff Burton backstage at Point Fest with Eric and Jeff from Stone Temple Pilots. All right, how are you doing today? You Good, seem, how are you? You seem like uh, you're like a morning radio show where you're all a lot up of, on caffeine. Did you know I do a morning radio I show? Do. Yeah. All right. And a lot of cocaine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Uh, good morning. Actually, good afternoon. good afternoon. Hi. It's kind of morning. That's why to I'm me, commenting yeah. on that. Yeah. Uh, so how have the shows been so far? I mean, I mean, Jeff's the new guy. So what program phone number 314-624-3833, 618-398-3833, the Mick Ultra Studio Cams, 1057thepoint.com. Slash Riz, the socials, at R-I-Z-Z, show your emails, Riz Show, 1057thepoint.com. Sex time fun facts coming up, sex toy of the week. We'll play three and five, give away some fabulous prizes, including tickets to go see 21 Pilots. October 10th over at Enterprise. Uh, tickets go on sale for that show officially Friday at 10 a.m. We have uh, Rob Zombie and Alice Cooper tickets to give away. We have tickets for the sold-out Pile Royale show, which is coming up on uh, Thursday over at the Duck Room. All right, today's April 1st. April Fool's Day. Ooh, this is not a joke. Uh -huh. You know what was just announced? The Loop Trolley. Oh, man. Back in session, April 12th. No joke. Hi. No joke, guys. We were just April 12th. There. We'll we, be there. We went to see uh, Courtney's tailor-made band on uh, Saturday night at Delmar Hall. And uh, this is the first time I've been down in the in the loop for, for a minute, kind of driving up and down this trip because we were looking for some boba tea and whatever else my daughters want. Wanted. Oh, boba tea. Wow. Yeah, that's that's the thing. So hot right now. That is so hot right boba now. Boba tea is so hot right now, That guys. place was packed Ask as your well. daughters. Love boba uh, tea. But, man, I didn't realize how much, I mean, there's no, there's when those things are going down the road. No there, room. There, there's, there's nothing else. It's just the trolley. Yeah, well, you'll see uh, this week uh, the trolleys moving because I guess they're training people. Oh, okay. They're doing uh, training sessions. They start today. I forgot about it, but then you know when you're when you're trying to navigate the lanes and you can't even see the the lines because there's so much track down there. Um, it was interesting, but they they weren't running. I just assumed it was over, but I didn't realize it was opening this week. Oh, actually, okay. Initial training phase will start today and run through the twelfth. So it doesn't open the twelfth. My bad. Oh, oh my goodness. The official season starts April twenty fifth. Oh my goodness. Okay, so we good because that's time. what I had in my calendar. Thursdays through Sundays, eleven a.m. to seven p.m. The service will remain free of charge, first come, first serve basis, until concluding on April 20th, I'm sorry, October 27th. I think one of us from this show needs to Should go as train? tribute to get trained, just in case an emergency <laughs> happens and the conductor cannot go, and one of us I'm will be there. Yeah, we need that. Yeah, yeah, just in case. Dude, <laughs> train conductor was on your bucket list. Yeah. yeah. No. Technically, the no. trolley is a train. St. Yeah. Louis' yeah. conductor at Moon Valjean. That was version. tram tour guide. Specifically at Grant's Farm. Yeah, I want to do Grant's Farm. All right. Farm. Which is open now, Grant's Farm. Yeah, they've reached out. We just got to figure out a schedule. But I'll get yeah. down there. I'm going to do it. Yeah. Go through the Bison Park. <laughs> On your left is some um, Pear David deer. April 25th. <laughs> but they're training people now. It's like CPR. Got to how to drive that thing. I saw Just the news case. this morning. They were there's a high driver hiring push. The bar is low. You talk about a job you can just coast into. Literally. Like, Chitney cars today? Nope. You're good. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I mean, it's not really. You just right. You just go on the track. I hope it goes. It's well, a lever. Man. I think you just put. It's a lever. You just hold. We've 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 done our share of slamming, but on on the on the other side of that coin, we've we've been. To, I mean, hoping that it goes well. It's been a ton of. Uh, Might as well go well. We have it. Uh, yeah, I hope it. I mean, we, we they tore please, up the streets. Businesses closed. Please benefit could, us somehow. Make good. I wouldn't want that job. I dream of a day when I can park at the Missouri History Museum. And go see, you know, Reverend <laughs> yeah. Horton Heat at the pageant and get back to my car safely. And I want to do it through the trolley. How long does that take? 
Do we have any numbers there? How long does that take? Like, well, how many stops are there? In my dream, it's 10 minutes. Trolley. And what are these stops doing? 18 seconds? I don't know. Get off. I, 10 listen, seconds, the go. whole, like, you, you, like... I'm for real. If it just sits there... Anybody can get on the train. If it sits anybody there Anybody get on the trolley. Minutes. Yeah, but I'm like, is it is it coming? Is it supposed to come every 15 minutes? Am I allowed is to be it? armed? If I'm a driver? Yeah, whatever. Conceal I would have it. a bandolier. Oh, oh. As, as a driver. Oh. Well. I'm talking as a driver. I would have like grenades like attached to me. <laughs> I would have like shotgun Escape shells. Escape from New York style. Oh, yeah. Looking like you an got expendable. An eye patch. Yeah, I would be looking like an expendable. <laughs> <laughs> this is cool. Dol Dolph Lunger is on my, on my trolley. Driving my trolley. Hmm. There's no charge. That's awesome. No, it's free. Wow. It's free now. Okay. There's also no AC and no heat. <laughs> Before I give it a go, <laughs> I just want to know the schedule. I want to know that if I get if I do this the history museum thing and I want to go down there, mm -hmm. is it going to take me 30 minutes to get there? Do I have to sit here and stop? Well, if you go to the website bigmistake.com and then you, they'd have the schedule on <laughs> there's there. The so schedule. There's the schedule. And the route. All right, today, April 1st, uh, back in the day, 67 years ago in 1957, April Fool's Day prank, the BBC announces that because of a mild winter, in Switzerland, spaghetti trees were producing more spaghetti than normal. And they showed footage of people pulling strands of spaghetti off tree branches. People immediately started calling in and asking how to grow their own spaghetti tree. So the BBC told them, quote, place a sprig of spaghetti in a tin of tomato sauce and hope for the best. <laughs> Idiots. Uh, 48 years ago, 1976, Steve Wozniak and Steve Jobs, they found Apple Computer in the garage of uh, Steve Jobs' parents' house in Cupertino. Uh, 40 years ago, 1984, the great Marvin Gaye was shot to death by... His dad. His dad. That's right. Who later pleaded guilty to voluntary manslaughter, got off with probation. 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 <laughs> probation. <laughs> probation. Uh, 39 years ago, 1985, April, April Fool's prank, a Sports Illustrated claimed a rookie pitcher named Sid Finch was planning to play for the Mets. They said he could throw 168 miles an hour, and then he trained at a monastery in Tibet. <laughs> I wish it were real. Moron Mets fans went nuts. And the magazine was flooded with requests for more information on the guy who did not exist. They could have sold jerseys. Mm -hmm. Sid Finch. That same day, 1985, David Lee Roth officially leaves Van Halen. Whoa! Dude, wouldn't Sad. that be a, wouldn't that be a great jersey? If you had a Roth? if you had, no if you had a Mets jersey that said Finch on it. Yeah, they have to only a certain it. amount of people would get that joke. Yeah, but once you found that person, the kindred spirit. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're Mets trivia nerds. Uh, Twenty eight years ago, nineteen ninety six, uh, April Fool's prank. Taco Bell said they bought the Liberty Bell, and renamed it the Taco Liberty Bell. Outrage ensued. <laughs> Not in my country. Uh, that same day, after blowing through more than $30 million, MC Hammer files for bankruptcy protection. Yeah. <laughs> Can't touch this. Uh, 24 years ago, and another cruel April Fool's prank from uh, the year 2000, a Romanian newspaper announced that dozens of prisoners would be released from prison. So their family showed up to take them home, only to find out it was a joke. Damn. That is cool-blooded. Oh, <laughs> Damn. Hey, that, uh, that that one is harsh. That bankruptcy thing that was because of taxes, right? He didn't, he hadn't paid taxes. In X MC I Hammer. Yeah. No, I think he blew through it. Oh, I thought it was a tax thing. I thought it was like a my business manager didn't tell me I had to pay taxes. No, I think he blew through that money. Okay, because there's a couple stories of some folks that are pretty well known around that time, '90s time, where like business managers were saying like, "You don't hey, remember the behind the music? He was he had, he had a, I never you know, saw the behind the music. I saw his house. Dude, he had like a gold. He had like a gold car or something, didn't he? He had some like crazy stuff. <laughs> he did good. I'm not gonna say the taxes didn't play into it. Okay. Yeah, it, it probably did. did. I saw his house a few years ago, um, but I also, I saw him at a Christian music festival in Bushnell, Illinois. Yes, on the main stage. That. It was one of the most wild experiences. What year? This was 1998. Yeah, so yeah, he, had so already, he had already gone through his bank. Yeah, but it's kind of like a lost comeback. most sure. of his money due to extreme personal expenditures for wow. several years in the early 90s with $70 million to his name at the peak of his career. Hammer bought more than 17 luxury cars, a private jet, two helicopters, and 21 racehorses. Yep. 21 racehorses? Oh. And Zuba's well, he's during got that point made over $400 million. 120 is not enough. So he's got yeah. transportation covered. <laughs> oh my God. That's go. crazy. Go. Idiot. He's just missing a camel. Uh, Dude, some of the stuff he bought is nuts. God, what did he buy? 
Epic Entourage and staff. He kept staff of 200 people on his payroll at all times. Yes, I knew that. For five years. The mansion. Not content to settle for a sprawling estate. He had a mansion with, that cost $30 million, Italian marble floors, recording studio, 17-car garage, 33-seat theater, a baseball diamond. <laughs> you build it. Thoroughbred horses, rides. He dropped a mint on transportation, including a Lamborghini private jet, two helicopters, stretch limo, because it's the 90s, lawsuits. He lost a bunch of money in royalty lawsuits with Rick James. No. Because he used Rick James's beat on "You Can't Touch This." Oh, I didn't know that. So he had to pay out big lawsuits. That's crazy, man. Man, they're all gone. Hammer. Oh, yeah. Uh, just, Hammer, don't hurt him. I was just looking at uh, this this Disney Too thing. Too legit again. to file. Speaking of shows, you know the other thing I'm so excited about with the Disney thing is Punk Rock Disney coming up. It got me so freaking psyched for that. It, the MC Hammer thing made me think of it because I found some. Loops that might they might be Rick James things. I, I don't know. I owe him money. You're gonna get sued. But no, no, no. But uh, I am I am so I'm so on Disney high that I'm ready for uh, for. That's for, coming for up in drive. May. Yeah, dude. Yeah, I am. I am ready. Um, 14 years ago, 2010, uh, Dynasty and Charlie's Angel star John Forsyth died at the age of 92. And four years ago, in 2020, Adam Schlesinger of Fountains of Wayne. Oh yeah. He died at 52 after contracting coronavirus. Uh, one of the first. Popular entertainers to die yeah. from the virus. That sucks, man. A lot of people, a lot of people in the uh, in the industry said that that guy is like one of the best songwriters out there. Yep. Stacy's mom. But that's a song he wrote. Uh, and that's what happened back in the day. So, uh, listen, something else happened back in the day. We'll talk about that in a in a couple minutes. <laughs> All right, time to find out what's uh, going on in the world of music and entertainment with your crap on celebrities. Well, we're going to start with this. Sean Diddy Combs is in Miami despite rumors of fleeing the United States after Homeland Security raided his home. So, you know, last week this was all we were talking about, Moon. Uh, well, just I where this. in the world is Diddy? So both of his homes were raided by feds, and they took, they confiscated a lot of stuff, documents. They arrested his uh, alleged <laughs> drug mule. Yeah. Uh, his kids were, ar like, ar detained. arrested, detained. What? And there were rumors. Rumors that Diddy had fleed the country. Okay, so this is what we were left with. Even on Friday, we had no confirmation that Diddy had been in the states. Like his still. plane was in what Aruba? No yeah. Well, Does this on, have anything to do with shutting down some of the businesses? Well, oh, no, this has to do with sex trafficking. Sex trafficking. What? There's all sorts of allegations coming forward. Well, I read the 75-page thing over the weekend. I went through more of it. Yeah. It is shades <clears throat> of Epstein. Like, it's bad. Wild. No kidding, no. What, dude. Worse than you can imagine. Yeah, really. And these are these are these are accusations, or what at are the time they're allegations. Uh, well, allegations, yeah, yeah but mm. but it still does not look good. And so, if, look if you remember his ex girlfriend, Cassie, Cassandra Ventura, she filed a lawsuit against him last year in November. Several allegations, including sexual assault, physical abuse. They settled that lawsuit. Okay, um, more people have come forward. Some usher. <laughs> interviews from Stern from like eight years ago. Those have resurfaced with mm. him talking about how he would never allow his kids to live with Diddy because Usher did that when he was coming up back in the 90s. Some creepy Justin Bieber clips coming out too. Oh, yeah, Just man. bad. Right? Saw those. But I got to tell you, this... What? The latest details, which is, hey, Thursday, Diddy took his twin daughters to a golf club. Then he was seen on Friday at a restaurant in South Florida. On Saturday, paparazzi's got picture of Diddy taking a smoke break at his Miami home. So I'm not really buying this that the feds couldn't find him. Like, why Why were we all, like, in outrage by Friday going, oh, he's fled this. Like, wouldn't you think that they would have been able to find his ass well, if he's, he's not, been around? Well, he has not been arrested yet, so he's... No, but everybody else had been detained. Why, why on well, earth they did they not get him? They were detained because they were in the house at the time and they needed a search it. I, I just think it. there's a little something weird here. The fact that they swarmed the place... He wasn't home, Looking but yet he's for, been well, in Miami. They, they seized a lot of things. They, yeah. they seized a lot of security, home footage. Right. Um, computers, documents. Great. Weapons. I'm just saying it was weird that we were the whole country was looking for Diddy, and he's been in Miami he hasn't, this he whole hasn't time. come out and said anything. No. My, my source, Suge Knight, said that uh, they oh. raided to confiscate that evidence to destroy it so it wouldn't destroy 
a ton they of They better not. People. Tell them they better not. Lincoln Park and their ex-bassist Kyle Christner have settled their lawsuit in which the former members claim the band owed him royalties over the last two decades. So Friday afternoon, Lincoln Park shared a statement saying, we're pleased to announce that we have reached an amicable resolution with bass guitarist Kyle Christner. Kyle is a very talented musician who made valuable contributions to Lincoln Park at a pivotal time in 1999. He performed with the band at several shows and many record label showcases. I don't know what exactly was the settlement. Oh, so this was the guy that was the basis for Lincoln Park before they hit it big. Before they hit it big. And an unnamed former manager had told Christner, you know, hey, that he he was part of the foundation of their success and that he should probably talk to them about some royalties. And then that's where all of this kind of came about. So they about. settled? They are settled. Um, Selena Gomez, she's got a new Food Network show that's also going to be on Max called Selena Plus a Restaurant. Premieres May 2nd, if you're interested in that. Kelly Osborne, who I, you know, Kelly's kind of like her mom in the sense that she gets a bad rep. People always find she's, you know, she's, um, she has the audacity like Sharon Osbourne. Her attitude is very much, she'll say exactly what's on her mind at a given moment. I've been to like Kelly Osbourne a lot. Um, she has been getting a lot of news coverage lately because she lost like 85 pounds, which she did through a gastric sleeve. And she also did some lifestyle changes. Um, but she's always had purple hair. And the big news in celebrity realm is that she dyed it this kind of silvery, Platinum blonde. What? <laughs> Whoa. And people what? are and she looks good. I'm just saying. We, I can't believe it. We got photos up on the blog. I Kelly is looking believe it. pretty Ray good. Ray just took dude. his head threw his headphones down. <laughs> it's over. Ray's out of here. Yeah. I just want to make sure everybody's aware. You all right? You all right? Is this an April Fool's joke? <laughs> are you fooling us? I'm not, dude. She looks really good. Flea just put his La Crescenta California compound up for sale, and this place looks pretty. Have cool. you ever seen it? I yeah, I went to the I went to architecturalmasterpiece.com and got to see it. What a cool looking place! I would love to live here. I don't have seven mil, so if, if somebody wants to go in on it with me, I think okay, we could okay. buy it. This is Will a you? house like I'll throw no other. It's up in the hills. Timeshares. All right. It's a compound, so. Um, it was built in 1953, the famed architect wow. Richard Nutra. It's five bedroom, five bath. Looks like something out of a sci-fi movie. Yeah. Like think uh, Ex Machina, that house. It's Only, almost like circular. Yeah. Now. Yeah. It's, 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 it's circular, but it's like a, it's a hexagon or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah a it has hexagon. a beautiful guest house. I would love to get tired of a property like this. A, a vortex of raw concrete is what it's been described as. It's beautiful, though. Dude, really cool wow. looking place. Wow. Really cool. That's look cool. A um, vortex of raw concrete? A <laughs> <laughs> okay. couple of music videos up on the blog for your pleasure. Chris Shiflett of the Foo Fighters interviews Riz's best friend, Wolfgang Van Halen. The Black Crows. Congrats. We're best friends. He doesn't know it yet. He just doesn't know. Congratulations to the Black Crows. Their new song, uh, Wanting and Waiting, is going to serve as the theme for TBS's Tuesday Night Baseball coverage this the uh, this season. Oh, dude! You know why he's selling this house why? for seven million? Not enough room. Well, first of all, he bought it just a couple years ago for four million, and he just bought a twenty million dollar place. Oh, uh, God, oh boy! I'd love to live with Flea out in a vortex somewhere. Four years ago, he bought it for four point three. A vortex of concrete. Yeah. You guys, uh, did you watch Martin in the nineties? Especially Martin. being a radio DJ. No, I did. Dude, that was a great show. I loved him. Um, obviously, Martin Lawrence. Um, I was a Moesha guy. <laughs> That's cool too, though. Look at you. Well, if you loved Martin in the 90s, or if you never got into it and you want to see what all the rage is about, all 132 episodes just hit Netflix all at once. And so Martin was created uh, by Martin Lawrence. And it's a series that revolved around the life of Martin Payne, a radio DJ in Detroit, his relationships with his girlfriend Gina, her best friend Pam, and his friends Tommy and Cole. And actually, it's a pretty great show. So yeah. Is Jamie Foxx on that? Right, he was on that show? There were some celebrity guests, like... Uh, Biggie, Biggie Smalls made a cameo appearance. Snoop Dogg. What show am I thinking that Jamie Foxx was a regular on? I, thought I don't it, remember him being on. He had his own show that, where he was like a, worked at a hotel. Maybe like the Jamie Foxx sitcom. I think it was called the Jamie Foxx Show. Hmm. Mm, could be wrong. Speaking of Snoop, Robert De Niro, Austin Butler, and Snoop Dogg were photographed having a blast together at a private dinner at Snoop's Malibu estate on Friday. Rebel Wilson uh, thinks Adele hates her because people used to mix them up back in the day when they were both bigger. Uh, she says she's never asked her, but Rebel says when she'd see Adele at events, Adele would be, you know, very quickly to turn away. She says, as if my, this is uh, Rebel Wilson talking, as if my fatness might rub off on her if I were near her for more than 30 seconds. She didn't like being compared to Fat Amy. Mm. This is all coming from her book. Um, rest in peace to actor Chance 
Perdamo, who is known for his roles on The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina and the boys' spinoff Gen V, died in a motorcycle accident at the age of 27 over the weekend. And finally, somebody on Reddit asked the question, what is the best nude scene Hollywood has ever produced? I'm going to give you all one guess. The best nude scene that Hollywood yeah. has ever produced. This isn't, a, this isn't a list, but there was... Sharon Stone. There was a number one that everybody decided TVN? to vote Is this TVN? Yes, this is so, TV. So you could throw in like... <laughs> NYPD Rose. Blues. Sure. Zip Witz's ass. Zip Witz's ass. Oh, yeah. Okay. Kathy Bates about Schmidt. Okay, good guess. No. Uh, no. Jim Carrey and the rhinoceros scene. Uh, in Ace oh, yes. Okay, yes. very good guess. People on, uh, people on Reddit said, like, you know, Roller Girl and Boogie Nights. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, the shower scene in Starship Troopers. Nicole Kidman. Oh, the uh, the the uh, pool scene in Wild Things. Wild Things made the list. Even uh, you know, um, Fast Times at Ridgemont High with Phoebe Cates. Yes. That pool scene. This is a National Lampoon's That's vacation. Nude, though, is it? She takes her top off. Phoebe Cates. Oh, oh yeah, oh, yeah. Just, National Lampoon's vacation. Pool, remember, she pulls off her. Another oh, yeah. great one. Top. You guys all great list, but it is not the best. The best nude scene Hollywood has ever produced. It is when he's completely greased up and totally nude. We're talking Danny DeVito oh, coming out of the leather couch. couch. <laughs> and it's oh, always God. sunny in Philadelphia. So congratulations <laughs> to Danny DeVito. <laughs> How cool is that? <laughs> ever see that episode? I think so. Doesn't he basically Jim Carrey out of the rhino, but he does it out of the <laughs> yeah, couch? Yes, out of a couch. <laughs> it's hilarious. Anyway, that's your crap on celebrities. Uh, your celebrity is celebrating a birthday today. Hillary Scott, two first names. That's the Lady A singer. Uh, she's 38. Taryn Killam. The star of ABC sitcom Single Parents, former oh, SNL way. cast member. He was mentioned in that uh, that documentary about the uh, Nickelodeon thing. Danny DeVito? No. Oh, Taron oh. Killam. Taron Killam. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> like, what the Not hell? Danny DeVito. No, leave him out of this. <laughs> I know. <laughs> what do you mean? He's gonna be devastated. Uh, in a bad as, way. As somebody who signed, like, uh, hey, the, the, remember the guy that was uh, that that molested the Drake da Bell? Dan uh, Schreiber, whatever his name. No, is. no, the guy that molested Drake Bell. Okay. Oh. Who went, they went to court, and he had all these people from Hollywood write letters to the judge saying he's a good dude. Oh, yeah, yeah, Even though he did all these horrific things. Uh, Taron Killam was one of them. Who was the other one? James Martson? Marsden. 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 Yeah. Uh, there was another big name that came out and said, oh, I shouldn't have wrote that. I didn't know. There was a couple of big names. Uh, so you got to watch that, man. That's, that's, that documentary is wild. Really? Well, he's 42. Sam Huntington, uh, the neurotic <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> werewolf on being human, is 42. There, my bad. It's all good, man. That's my job, usually. Uh, Randy Orton is 44, the youngest WWE champ in history at age of uh, 24. Bijou Phillips, Danny Masterson's ex-wife, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this list is, lists her as his wife, but no, nah, I think they're done. Uh, she is 44. Rachel Maddow is 51. Joe Francis, Girls Gone Wild founder. <laughs> Spent nearly 12 months in jail for being naughty, and he's worth $25 million, apparently. He's 51. Damn, Susan, still? Yep. yep. Susan Boyle is 63. And Annette O'Toole, Superman's mom in Smallville. And she's in uh, Superman 3. And she's in uh, Stephen King's It movie. She is 72 Boy, years old. Boy, don't you wish Joe Francis ran into Susan Boyle on spring break? Am I right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Am I right? Would you do 12 months for 21 mil? 23 mil. 23 mil. But you got to do 12 months in jail. Like, what kind of jail? Like, jail. Well, I mean. County. Yeah, are we talking Jefferson about Shawshank? County are we talking jail. like Camp County Cupcake? jail. You don't have to go to, like, a prison. You don't have to go to, like, a, f a super max. It's just jail. For it's 23 mil? You're just locked up. Because I think if you don't have to, if it's less than a year, you can do it in a jail, in a county jail. If it's more than a year, uh, usually sent, sent to a facility. Yeah, I would do it. You would? I think so. 23 mil. 23 mil? You're out in a year. He goes, yeah. I, I would cry do. every day. <laughs> <laughs> Once you're out. Would you for 23 I, mil? I think so. Would you do 12 months for 23 mil? It'd be hard. <sighs> Guaranteed when you came out. Yeah, I guess so. Let's go. Let's go. Let's I'm go going to, jail. to jail, guys. Let's go to jail. <laughs> Let's go to jail. I'm doing yeah, it. tax free. Yeah, I'm doing it. All what right. if we all went together? That'd be kind of fun. Right, it it yeah, all sells next to each other. It. We all get 23 mil a piece. That'd be tight. That's like still do the show. Just Freeman. for the inmates, every morning we get up at 6 a.m. No one's listening. Just inmates gather around, and we just do the show. <laughs> Friedman, uh, the the crypto guy that got arrested. Oh, Sam Bankman. Is that what it, I thought it was? Anyways, uh, that guy, that kid, he uh, is going to be in for 30 years, but he's worth hundreds and hundreds of millions of now. So it's like, yeah, is that he's worth He's going to jail for 30 years. 30 years is a lot different than 12 months. Yes. Yeah. But he's young. Uh, today's porno birthday, which is brought to you... Uh, which is being brought to you by Patricia's for fun and fantasy meet is Luxury Amour. 
Luxury Amour. That's a nice Ooh. name. And today's birthday goes within 56 fine films, including Big Ass Worship 3, mm. Black Booty Worship 1, Boobaholics Anonymous 5, Chocolate Gazongas 11 and 13, oh. Oh. Sexy Chocolate 1, Worship My Giant Black Ass 3, <laughs> and Who Can Forget a Roll in 2017's... <laughs> I like when they're sentences. That's a huge man. <laughs> well, here's another sentence. <laughs> Who can forget a role in 2017's Tarantino Loves Black Feet? Oh. Hmm. Luxury Amour is 38 years old. That's your porno birthday. Those are your crappy birthdays, and that was your crap on celebrities. Happy birthday, Luxury. And happy birthday, by the way, to The Riz Show. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Because 10 years ago today, The Riz Show signed on. <laughs> it's the show's 10th anniversary. Congrats. And wow. I did prepare a little speech. Oh. I did prepare a little something. Okay. A 10-year anniversary speech. I do want to thank some people. A reflection. Yes. A little music. A reflection. Oh. I don't want this to be a sad thing. It's not a sad thing. It doesn't have to be sad. I just thought maybe... I have no other background music. That's your only... I have no other background music. All right. Well, then I guess this will be a cappella. Well, this will be a weird if I write it to this. Yeah, don't do that. I thought maybe you had a little something that was more like Oscar... Get some gravitas. That's okay. No, I thought. Listen, I just, hey, this, this came from the heart. I actually sat and wrote. All right. Well, I don't. You were crying when it. I got. To I work did today. not use Chat GPT, <laughs> by the way, for this. Okay. Yeah, sure. I I got my wife a birthday card and, and had a Chat GPT message as a loving tribute. But no, this is this is for reals, guys. And uh, it starts with weirdos, Team Riz members. Mm. St. Louis. Today, we celebrate the Riz Show's 10th anniversary. Personally, I'm filled with an overwhelming sense of gratitude and nostalgia. 10 years ago, we set out on a journey together, not knowing where it could lead us, but united by our passion for engaging conversations and fart jokes. Thank you. First and foremost, I want to thank each and every uh, one of you out there, our loyal listeners, uh, your unwavering support, your feedback, and uh, we get your feedback. Uh, we see it all, guys. Wanted and unwanted feedback, but yep, yeah, we thank you. <laughs> True that. And your enthusiasm have really been a force behind our success. So whether you've tuned in every morning from home or listened to us uh, during your daily drive to the job you hate, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um. To my buddy Moon, the guy on my left, that sits to my left, who's this man has seen it all. Through thick and thin, the highest of highs, Moon, and the lowest of lows, 10 years of getting up early has probably taken 15 years off your life. But thank you. We've been through a lot together, buddy. Facts. And uh, thank you for your friendship uh, and your hard work and your enthusiasm. I do appreciate that. Thanks, man. Thank you. That's true. King Scott. Yes, sir. That guy over there. Thank you for your positive attitude, your hard work, day in and day out. Now, Scott does a lot of work behind the scenes that you guys don't know, and I do appreciate all of it, and Thank I look you. forward to every day walking down the hallway. And even if I'm dragging ass, and even if I think, I, F this place. Yeah, <laughs> hell yeah. <laughs> and, there, and there are those days where I'm like, God, damn it. Like, I'll grab my binder, I'll, I'll say goodbye in the, in, the, uh, in the room, I go, ugh. I'll declare I got nothing today and then walk down the hallway. But King Scott, you know, and the smile when I reach the studio. And Good morning, sir. You are a, a spirit lifter. Thank you, man. Uh, Rafe and Learn. Thank you. Yeah. Almost a year with the show. Wednesday will be a year for me. Wednesday a year. 17th. And then the 17th. So, you know, I hope you guys are having as much fun as I am, you know, doing the radio thing. I am. All together. I, I really do hope so. And I really do genuinely I mean it. You know, say that I I do have fun every day with with you guys doing doing the show. Uh, I can't forget to, forget to thank our sponsors and the advertisers who have supported uh, the Riz Show throughout the ten years. Uh, their partnership has enabled us to keep this thing going. And thanks to the listeners for for going and supporting our sponsors. Mm -hmm. It's huge. Yeah, it's it's huge, and and I I can't say how how much I I appreciate that. And coming uh, to events. And just everything, man. This is a, 
This is a listenership. This is a relationship that doesn't happen anywhere else in the in the country. Mm. We've been to every radio station ever and seen them all and how they work, and nothing works like this show does. Yeah. And our success is word of mouth, pretty much. I mean, the way you guys have uh, told other folks and brought them on board with us. Thank you. When did this become King Scott's speech? <laughs> <laughs> Since I was done yet. Oh. Oh. oh, excuse us. Oh, I'm still going. Okay. Uh, to everyone behind the scenes, to uh, Matthew Chambers and our promotions department, to Tommy the Boss, our sales department, uh, the traffic department, uh, the engineering department, John Kowski, everybody over at Hubbard, corporate, um, to the old crew for the Amos days. Can't forget them. You know, this started back in, in 2014 when we were owned by Amos. Mm -hmm. So John Beck and... and the engineering crew and and everybody down there. Thank you so Rick much. Rick Cummings. Oh yeah, Rick Cummings, the VP of programming for Emmis. So, you know, April first, twenty fourteen, Moon, Tony Patrico, and myself, we cracked the mic at six a.m. to open up the Riz show, and it was it was rough at first. <laughs> what do you remember from that day? Anything? I remember like being devastatingly nervous. Um, never, and this is coming off the Woody and Riz show where. You know, what he wound up going to California to start his own, you know, radio empire, which he's very successful. And, uh, you know, thanks to Tommy for for having the trust to let me do this. How Can I ask how long after Woody and Riz to the Riz show, how much time was Two it? weeks. Two weeks. Wow. wow. I think we took a couple of days off to kind of get everything together. Um, you know, Tony was was came over from the old show with me and then you know we had another producer actually mm -hmm. and the Corey remember Corey mm -hmm. and then Corey left to go work for the Heartland Poker Tour <laughs> I think he's still with him good for Corey but about a week before we started he's like ah, I'm gonna take this poker job and I go okay man I and I listen I wasn't pissed so I would never I would never uh crap on somebody's opportunity you know the timing could have been a little better Honestly, but thank God Moon just called me out of the blue and, you know, said, hey, man. I said, yep, come on, come on board. You called oh. me. Did I call you? You called me remember. out of the and blue, you, out you, of the blue. And you begged me. You yeah, said, that's it. Please. please. I said, please. You did ask me, though. Mm -hmm. you, you did call me and said, I need somebody and you fit the bill. I think we'd be good together. And, and we were. We had known each other because we kind of came up yeah. together. You came here and started oh, your radio career when my band was just starting to take off. So you were always assigned to our interview because we were we were the low guy, you were the low guy, and we kind of came up together. Yep. And, uh, yeah, so we got everything together April 1st, 6 a.m. We cracked those microphones, and it was, it was, uh, man, it was, it was okay. It was, it was enough where, you know, uh, you know, we definitely had some stuff to work on and kind of finding our voice. And it took a little while for us to get our legs. Uh, Jeff Burton came to the show about a month later. Um, he Jeff was the missing part of the puzzle, I think. And, and here we are 10 years later. Uh, and it, it's been an honor to, uh, to be one of the first voices you guys hear every morning. Uh, and this really has been a dream come true. I've, I've always wanted to be on the radio uh, you know, I, first as a music DJ and then hearing, you know, people like Howard Stern and, and Opie and Anthony, who I mentioned earlier, uh, has always been like, man, if I could make a living doing this, you know, it would be, it would be amazing. And then here we are, you know, right. 10 years of, of, you know, the Rizzuto show. And I appreciate, again, everybody listening and I appreciate everybody, um, Letting us do this and letting me have fun with my friends every morning. And here's to another 10 years. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was me actually showing some of my heart. I Aww. love it, man. Okay, you dickheads. <laughs> what? The music would have been nice, though. <laughs> yeah, can you do that again with, with some accompaniment, please? Yeah, we could use the memorial music. Weirdos? No! <laughs> Rest in peace to no, Rizzo's that's not, testosterone. That's not, the, that's not the vibe I want, guys. That's not the vibe uh, I want. Yeah, he's got low T now. You got to go. <laughs> Am I going to uh, play a clip of the first show? I had that destroyed. No way. Do you have some notes? I, have I honestly somewhere? don't. I have, I have no idea where that is. I have it. Oh, somebody will find it. 
Do you? you know, I, have I, it? I, I honestly, I don't want to hear it. Got it. All? I would never oh, want to hear it. I want to hear it after the show. Produced the show for years. I, I don't think I would ever want to hear it. I, I would go. love we, to hear it. Can we yeah. throw it in as a bonus on go. the podcast? No. Oh come on, man. We could do that the full <laughs> show. Hey, Amen. We all sound like I would go three person. states away to be away from that thing. <laughs> Let it all out, brother. <laughs> the first day was the first day was fun, and uh, some of it had to do it with because because people were accusing us of being an April Fool's. Oh, it was yeah. I mean, the show April April first, which April was Fool's joke. which was fun. I thought I thought that was funny. I thought that was like oh cool. Well, I mean that's kind of like that's a little bit of like a smokescreen. You know, we can we can kind of even play into it a little bit. April first then was a. Uh, was that a Monday or was it Tuesday? I think it was a Tuesday. I think we started on a Tuesday. We, but we took the day off before. We took the 31st off. Okay. Yeah, because we we had been in for a week or so, maybe maybe two weeks, working on the show. Working, yeah, doing stuff. Getting everything ready. Uh, two weeks is a lot of work. Yeah, it was. <laughs> well, also, you know, Woody had said that he was leaving the show, I think, in January. Yeah. So we had to go through and finish the Woody and Riz show February, all of March. It was like two months of that and then take like a week or two off to, to get the new show ready. Yeah, I don't think it was two weeks. I think it was, I think it was a week. It may have been a week. I think, it was wow. only, I think it was only a few actual work days Shh. in between shows. Impressive, guys. And to let you know how nervous I was, I, I mean, I, God. Yeah, I bet. It was fun, though. I still got imposter syndrome. It was fun. You know why? Because um, it wasn't it wasn't like a something to prove sort of moment. It was like, no, I'm, and I'm not going to say nobody had faith in us, but believe me, we didn't feel like anyone had faith in us. Oh, well, yeah. coming off how big the Woody and Riz show was, I, I mean, that. it was. And the, the, the things that were being said, not that they were like being said intentionally negatively or any of that kind of stuff. It was just like. It was not a very positive. Oh no! And there were some people. And I could name the names. I could name names of some people who were like, "This, you know, this yeah, show is never going to be as big as that. It's going to suck." Yeah, it's never going to be like that. And some people that I was like, "Man, that, that burns. That hurts." But it kind of gave us fuel. I thought. I mean, for me, I, I felt like it was it was fuel. I was like, "You had something to prove." You're like, "All right, let's prove them wrong." At the same time, it was like, "Okay, whatever doesn't work here." is not going to work because of things out of our control. So I was yeah. like we're all talented people here and we're going to we're going to make something new and it's going to be it's going to be great as long as the things that we can't control align with the things that we can. So I was like I don't know, I I felt really you know, I, I had a lot of faith in it anyway. You know the way I'm a freaking psycho as it is. Yeah. And then, you know, to do the show and then to hear like, you know, rumblings of other people that you, you know, you thought you we're buddies with. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember hearing all that. No wonder he would have imposter syndrome, yeah. though. Because people were literally stacking the deck against you going like, oh, man. Yeah. Woody's out. Woody's out. He, he can, is he going to do it? I've I, never done a morning show right. by myself. And we, I love that you we, blew him away, man. We had heard the word trial a lot of, a lot of times. Oh, and yeah. I was like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Cool. You remember, know what, though? You know, em, uh, Emmis and Tommy never used the word trial. Never. No, they right. did They never did. No, they had faith in they you They never, the they never said, you guys, you guys, it's on a trial thing. Never. I remember when you guys were designing the logo for the Rizzuto show, like the one that's behind Riz right now with the red and the black and the, because it was different than any other logo I'd seen come through yeah. MS before. And I remember whenever it was happening, because I was on mornings with you, man, at the time. So I was not a part of what you guys were doing, but it was like your parallel parked right next to the rumblings that were happening. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. I, I didn't, cool I never logo. thought that. I never thought, oh, this guy can't do it. I thought it oh, sucked this that guy you guys were breaking up. I'll tell you that. But I love that you got your opportunity. I finally. mentioned that to Joe, how cool the logo is. Yeah. And like how it can be timeless and this we could use this forever. Yeah, it was sharp. Yeah. Maybe yeah, we names. gone through a bunch yeah. of different we had gone through a bunch of different colors and stuff like that. I wanted it to be different than the old Woody and Riz logo. Mm -hmm. you can't name names, man, because they all came back. Name names. <laughs> <laughs> can't, can't do that because now everybody's Let's friends. Stir up some good April Fool's <laughs> no, morning show you know. drama. We can always say it's April Fool's joke. <laughs> I, I <laughs> name names. <laughs> Just those names out I there. Know. Some real, some fake. Bill DeWitt, okay. Uh, Bill DeWitt. <laughs> uh, Suck it, Bill DeWitt. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still standing. Stan Kroenke. Stan Didn't Kroenke, believe of Yeah. <laughs> well, Stan. <laughs> Former Ram Kurt Warner. I mean, well, God. Yeah. Hey, Kurt on. had faith. Ironically, Brenda Kurt. believed it. <laughs> Brenda Warner believed in the hell out of you. Uh, how much did I consider him? 
Danny on the and see back. How much am I? How much did I consider going with Woody? Zero. Yeah, mm-hmm. that was a never. Why? Zero. I, first of all, I, L.A. is not my thing. Yeah, that's true. That was number one. I, 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 we, my son was four. Uh, I think we just had the girl. Mm-hmm. So she was three. Uh, I didn't want to move my wife. And you were moved. That was a different company, too. I mean, Emma's. We'd move to, it would be iHeart. Yeah. It was an iHeart company. I loved Emma's. Mm-hmm. Um, and. Emma's was awesome. In fact, if we were still with Emma's, I think I'd be getting a watch. Well, they stopped watch. those watches. Oh, did they? Yeah, oh. they stopped the watches. Oh, crud. The, the company ran out of money. They stopped the watches. <laughs> oh, they used to get, just to get the audience in on it, they used to give a 10-year watch to anybody that was employed. For did you get a 10-year watch? No. Oh, hell yeah, I got a 10-year watch. Oh, of course Neato. I didn't. And they stopped that. I think the station, the company ran out of money. Duh. Nice watch, too. I almost too. got it. Super you want to buy mine? Uh, no, I, I, I didn't, I not for a second. I, listen, I knew he wanted to go do his own thing. Mm-hmm. And, and you wish that for him? As, of course. Yeah. We're, I talked to him last night, actually. Um, Tommy, the boss, said, listen, we're going to give you a shot. And I, this was an opportunity I could not pass up. Yeah. And I didn't want to move any farther out west. I mean, uh, my, my family, my wife's family, all from the East Coast. I don't want to move farther west. What an amazing deci- – that decision that you made was the catalyst for morning radio here in St. Louis. Had you have gone – You've been out, man. Oh, who I mean, knows? That that st- that unfortunately that who show knows? does not air here anymore. And and the great thing about it is this this the Riz show um, surpassed the ratings of what we once did have, and it's been it's been crazy. Yeah, I think St. It's Louis been, rallied behind you because you stayed. What a How what cool a ride this has been. Yeah, and to win awards and to be. You know, recognize the industry in the industry as you know a top morning show is is wild. This is wild. I cannot believe it. Good. We have everybody fooled. <laughs> it's true. What's wrong with you people? <laughs> so, thank you. Congrats, Riz. Thank show. you. No, thank you. thank you. And 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 again, I appreciate all you guys here and everybody behind the scenes and all you guys listening. And and God, Team Riz, Jesus, to have such a Team Riz to have such a backing group is unbelievable. It's unbelievable. And I will never, ever take anything for granted. I promise you that. All right, let's take a break. Thank you. All right. What do we do next? Let's uh, let's give away some stuff, okay? Scott, load up the phones. All right, I'll call them. Three and five will be next, okay? This way I can make fun of all you for being... <laughs> Ignorant on a Monday morning. Uh, all right, so uh, Moon's going to give a category. You name three things in the category within five seconds. Two out of three categories, right? You win. Your choice of prizes. 21 Pilots tickets. Rob Zombie Alice Cooper tickets. Um, oh, I forgot Ministry and Filter on that show, too. Yeah, that's a oh, big yeah. one. Uh, we also have tickets for the sold-out Palais Royale show, which is coming up Thursday over at Blueberry Hill. Uh, 314-624-3833, 618 3 and 5 is next. 809. Monday, traffic and weather, moon coming at you. Traffic is brought to you by Worldwide Technology Raceway, the Confluence Music Festival with Ludacris, Riley Green, and more, and the NASCAR Cup Series, June 1st and 2nd. Tickets available now at raceway.com Delays uh, 270 eastbound between 44 and uh, it looks like uh, exits, uh, well, between 44 and 40, really. Average speed down about 30 miles an hour. Your point forecast, a couple gnarly rounds of severe storms are possible. High of 78, 78 but right now it's 67 at the Point Studio. We are backstage at Point Fest, and I got to tell you. Say it again, but slower. Backstage at Point Fest at Point with my dude, Fest. grandson. Yeah. Woo. How long has it been since the last Point Fest? Oh, two years almost, probably. A we year are and a half backstage. Sure. And doing it. At Point Fest. And, and we're doing it. And we're it's doing beautiful. It. Come rain or come shine. All right, here, I got a first question to ask of you. Uh, what's up? Hold on, hold on, wait. All right. Whoa. I'm here for an interview with grandson. I have an interview with grandson today. Oh, I, inter- thought, I thought that I got this one. I thought this was my interview with grandson because I thought that you had gotten to interview him. Let's talk about Sunset Hills, Subaru, the number one volume Subaru dealer in Missouri for five years straight. And that is not a coincidence. I hung out with Ryan and his people. They're such a cool, friendly staff. They make the car buying experience painless, which is 
very rare these this day and age because usually when you go into a dealership, you feel pressured or you feel like you can't get off the sales floor without being hounded. It's not like that there. They're voted the best new car dealer in St. Louis by STL Today. Uh, and that's not a coincidence either. It's just a good experience to go there. They have the largest selection. They get the biggest showroom, and they're pet friendly. You can bring your pet with you. You can make it as painless as possible. And if you don't have your own pet, they got two pets in the store that live there. Two cute little dogs that you'll you can pet, roll roll over. You can rub their belly while you're looking at a new Subaru Forester, or whatever you want to do. The best part is. You won't be charged over MSRP like some shady dealers charging thousands over sticker. They save you money compared to the competition. And I'm not talking about a few bucks, all right? I'm not talking about a hundred bucks. I'm talking about thousands of dollars compared to the competition. That's real savings for you and your family. And you get a great car. And if you don't want to go in, if you're totally averse, that's fine. You can shop online. You'll get the same great service. You don't even have to come into the store. They might even bring your car to you with a dog and let you pet the dog just as a bonus. So go and check out their selection right now or schedule an appointment to go in and talk to somebody at sunsethillsubaru.com. That's sunsethillsubaru.com. All right, King Scott's official bucket list. Now, for those of you that haven't been listening, we have compiled a list. We've talked about it several times. And we have a new competition coming up with punishments. I know everybody's been clamoring for that. That's right. coming. We're going to announce Riz that in a week or so. The Riz Olympics. The Riz Olympics. There's going to be a set of events, and the loser is going to have hell to pay. But on the flip side of that coin, because we do love each other, and we do, believe it or not, behind the scenes, there's a lot of positivity on this show. Uh, we're going to, the flip coin is we got a lot of stuff we can help each other accomplish, too. Yeah, yeah let's lift help each, each other, other up, achieve guys. our dreams. Let's Come lift, on. Let's lift Come each other on, up guys. and then Woo. break each other down. Yes. That is how. <laughs> That's the Riz Show way. That's the dynamic we're looking for. So we went over some of Riz's bucket list items which and some of Moon's bucket list items. And people have emailed in. There's sponsors emailing in. There are fans emailing in. They're going to help us achieve our dreams. So it's become a community effort. So let's see if we can get King Scott uh, some help in some of his. Number one on King Scott's bucket list. I need some explaining here, or maybe not. It says, Mysterious Road Trip, LOL. <laughs> Yeah, this one is, it's a big deal, and it involves numerous countries, and so, I mean, it's a huge, it's the dream of dreams that I've had for ages, and I want to document this whole thing, so I need to team up with someone like Jeremy from Cool Fire or something like that and uh, talk with him, because it, it's a big <laughs> undertaking. Okay. I don't understand what it is. I like well, that you explained it, kept it just as vague <laughs> yes. through the explanation. I, but I'll be I driving where are we through going? numerous countries, that's all I can say, all, right. and, and all over the world. It'll be through, it'll start... We'll say it'll start in North America, and then... Would counties be okay instead of countries? Because we can well, do I the counties Well, I could do a practice run, yes. Like I would we love could to. maybe go from St. Louis County to Franklin County. We could put a bag Sounds over good. your head, so it's kind of a mystery. Like, where are you in Missouri? Yeah. But no, I could start... Yeah, throw me wherever. And, um, and then um, you have to walk. Like, we th here's what we do. We put you in the back of the car with a bag over your head, and then we drop... First, um, it's not too late to start... A New Year's resolution. And all right, what, four months into the year? It's fine. If your resolution is for more self care and building your confidence, well, Parkrest Plastic Surgery can help you out. Now, these aren't your cookie cutter providers where patients all leave the practice with similar results. At Parkrest, they cater their treatments, procedures, and surgeries to each individual to make sure they leave happy with a major confidence boost. It's the best part of what they do there. Dr. Kaplan, Dr. McGuire have treated patients from across the world. Both have helped lead vital clinical research that has led to major changes in the industry. People still come from all over the world here to Creve Corps to, to Parker Plastic Surgery on New Ballast. It's just the way they approach plastic surgery. If you're looking for a mommy makeover, any combo of breast and body surgery to help the body recover from the after effects of pregnancy and breastfeeding, they got you over there. They're not going to put everybody into surgery either. If you could be treated and achieve your desired results with less invasive procedures like injectables or aesthetic services, then that's what the doctors are going to recommend. Laser hair removal, hydrofacials, permanent makeup, radio frequency microneedling. They do that at Parkrest. Book yourself a consultation. Parkrestplasticsurgery.com. Parkrestplasticsurgery.com. Okay, so Rafe has our official bucket list list. Yes. That's right. We've talked about bucket list on here so many times. We thought, and we're we're getting ready to implement a new 
Stay tuned. We have a new contest with punishments coming up, and we thought maybe as a, as a flip side to that, we talk about bucket lists so much that we would, instead of just being in competition with each other, we would also have a series of videos where we actually try to help each other check things off our bucket this list, is all which is a nice thing. Lifting each other up. Mm -hmm. That's right. To help us check things off our bucket list. And to nice. soften the blow of the horrible things we're going to do to each Absolutely. other in the other competition. Yeah, come the fall, which we have a big Riz Olympics announcement uh, mm -hmm. to make come the fall. Uh, yes, let's lift each other up first. Yes. We build up and then we break down. That's right. Okay. So, so yeah, okay. So yeah, I forgot Eat a Golden Corral was on my bucket list. We'll check that off next week. Mm -hmm. That's right. Next Monday. Which by the way, is it Monday or Tuesday? I think we changed it back to Did we change it back to Monday? I'm going to murder uh, all of you. Let me check the calendar. <laughs> Tuesday. Well, no, we were it was a moon schedule that was the wacky one. Yes, it was my schedule that was the wacky one. It was supposed to be on my gotcha day. Well, but I thought we were also kind of celebrating Jeff. Um, let's see. You know what? Just tell me what to do, guys. Well, you're the one that's Tuesday. You're the one that was the it was uh, the weird schedule. Well, yes, but remember, I also said, hey, I think that's open if we want to switch it back. Uh, well, so what day works better for everybody? Next Monday or Tuesday? I'm open either day. Well, let's go over while we're checking schedules. Let's go over your bucket list. Okay. And I, I'm going to give you a little mini interview of what some of these things are and how they might be accomplished. Okay, go ahead. Riz, I had each member of the cast give 12, at least 12 items they want checked off their bucket list. Now, some of these things are a little pie in the sky. They're going to be hard to achieve. Right. Maybe listeners can help. Maybe, I don't know, maybe sponsors can, I don't know. Uh, these, these are all things, the things that we've all dreamed of doing. Yes, and some of them are very achievable, and we're going to make it happen. Okay. On your birthday, we're going to knock a few off of these, I'm telling you. Number one, on Riz's bucket list, you want to dropkick someone. Yes, I was a big fan of the video game Double Dragon. Yeah. Yes. Tight. And you so know you're what talking, talking about, about the full... The full... Side? Side dropkick. Yes. Chest, chest head area. Yes. I, listen, I'm almost 200 pounds... I ain't getting up to head level. Chest to abdomen Never know. level. Maybe, yeah, maybe crotch to... to <laughs> Ab abdomen. Where's your solar plexus? Is well, that, uh, uh, we'll start with that one because I got good news for you on that one. I talked to J.P. Warhorse and Wednesday after our program. Tomorrow? Tomorrow after our program, I'm taking you down. The best of the best when it comes to men's health. Guys, if, you are, uh, if you've decided that it's time to stop making excuses and start making changes, you go to mentality. And don't just take my word and Riz's word for it. Real people, real results. I'm reading off of an actual review from Scott in St. Louis. He said, since I started this, I feel me? like... I'm no, not you, Scott. Oh, another Scott. There are other are Scots there are, out there. Well, I know there's me, there's King Scott. There's three There's three Scots in St. Oh, okay. Louis. Okay, all right. This is Scott number three in St. Scott Louis. Scott R., yes. And he put uh, about mentality health. Since I started this, I feel like I'm a kid again. It's amazing. People ask about it constantly, and I preach to them about mentality. If someone had told me earlier, before I was 50, that anything would make me feel 15 to 20 years younger. Ask me where to sign. Right away. I could tell these guys knew exactly what they were doing. Regular blood tests and consistent monitoring. Not just testosterone levels. They look at everything. I wouldn't even think about going anywhere else no matter the cost. These guys have changed my life entirely. That's just one of the many, many reviews you can read on the website, mentalityhealth.com. Again, see... Uh, see what guys are saying. Uh, guys like you, guys like me, guys like Riz, former pro athletes that are in the area, NBA guys, MLB guys, and uh, NFL guys, all going to Mentality to make sure that they are feeling their absolute best. MentalityHealth.com. This is Rizzuto. Not only is he rich, but he also has a lot of money. And he's looking to invest in the next big idea. Hi, my name is Riz, and I have a lot of money. I mean, almost too much money. So I'm looking to invest, and I've asked the fellas to come on down to my office and pitch me their ideas. Do they have what it takes to be in the biz? Meet King Scott. By day, he's the producer of the number one morning show in St. Louis. But by night, he's not at work anymore. All right, welcome back to the program. I'm going to play three and five here in just a second. So, uh, Lauren took the Facebooks and said, uh, 
Happy 10-year anniversary to The Riz Show. Share some favorite memories. Yeah, people are coming out of the woodwork, man. Uh, like Kevin Jones says, Jeff asks question. Somebody answers question correctly. Jeff would say, no, actually, it's correct answer. Got him every time. Every time with Jeff. Uh, Brad Bound says, moon throwing up while a Greek fire song was playing after losing good or gross. <laughs> oh, yeah, I remember that. Uh, that was funny. <laughs> that was funny. Nick says, the Jeff and hitchhiking CSI the whole montage. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, another guy says, a few years ago, the guys were reviewing a piece of audio that was really quiet. Just when they were playing it for the fourth or fifth time, because nobody would be quiet, Riz tells everybody to be quiet, shushes everybody yeah. four times. Then when the part comes up that they were supposed to be listening for, Jeff pops in with, is now when we're supposed to be quiet? <laughs> and then you, of course, went off on Jeff. Yeah. Um, and then Joe says, on air moment, Jeff's birthday with Mama Ty. Oh, yeah. And so the, people are just coming through with lots of Jeff memories, Lots of too, Jeff memories. Which is great. Uh, Rafe, uh, somebody wrote over a nice compliment about me, correct? <laughs> yeah, on the chat. Yeah, on the chat. That was so nice. Yes. Uh, proof positive that, uh, <laughs> that uh, compliments are dead. <laughs> Tummy Sticks 22 said, I despised Riz's voice for the longest time on the Woody and Riz show. Here we are 10 years later, and I want to hear Riz read War and Peace while I take a nap. You could have just said the second You know, part. I'm going I'm to take that, though. We wow. turned them. It's not bad. <laughs> they turned them. It only took yeah. 10 years. I think they realized it was bad because a second compliment came through. I think they're trying to soften the blow. Same person said, Riz's voice is so calming and soothing. Now, it reminds me of helping my dad work on the car and explain to me every, very loudly that I'm not holding the flashlight in the right spot. <laughs> <laughs> I like that one. That's, that's, that's perfect. Yeah. Such good memories. And I go, yeah, that's, 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 that one's pretty on. That's Gosh, pretty accurate. Nice work. All right. Well, thank you. Keep the uh, keep the memories uh, coming in. All right. We got some work to do, guys. It's time for three and five. It's a game we play on Monday. So Moon's going to read a statement, a category, and you, uh, you give us uh, three things in that category within five seconds. Two out of three categories, right? You win your choice of prizes. We got the 21 Pilot tickets. Uh, tickets for that show go on sale Friday at 10 a.m. We have tickets to go see Rob Zombie, Alice Cooper, Ministry, and Filter September 1st over at the Hollywood Casino Amphitheater. And we got tickets for the very sold out Palais Royale show this coming Thursday over at uh, the Duck Room, at Blueberry Hill. Remember, no ums or ahs to start your answer. Right. Uh, Learn and Rafe are the judges today. Firm. Very firm. But fair. Mm. And Moon and I are going to stay out of the, the judgment, okay? We're, we're right. out of the judgment I'm zone. not a judge here. I'm not a judge Don't either. look at me. You say that now, and at mm -hmm. some point we're no, going to be arguing I'm, about I'm, it. Today, I'm going to say I'm, <laughs> I'm going to go to the judges. <laughs> Whatever, man. We'll I'm see. Here. See how long that lasts. Okay. 314-624-3833 or 618-398-3833. Let's go to Kyle in Wood River. Good morning, Kyle. All right. Hello. Hello, Kyle. Hello, Hello Kyle. How's it going? Oh, great. It's Hello. Ready to, you ready to play? I am. Uh, let's do this. Three and five. Time. Okay. Name three songs by Taylor Swift. Uh, nope. Killing it. <laughs> Not one. You can't name <laughs> Not one. You can't nope. name one Taylor Swift song. Just shake it off. Right? Wheels on the bus. <laughs> yeah. All right. Scott. <laughs> That's your one. Wheels on, Wheels the, bus on the bus for the month. Dude. For April. You'd for vote April. on the first. <laughs> if I hear that joke again, you're out of here. <laughs> he it if I hear a Wheels on the bus joke from you in the month of April, you're out of here. You got <laughs> one a month. Mark it down. <laughs> put it on you're the glass. You only made it you're gonna eight forget. minutes into the 11th year uh, before God, Wheels God, on the you're bus. Gonna, you're going to forget. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 0 for 1, Kyle. Here we go. Name three current Cardinal players. Goldschmidt, Arenado, Contreras. Nice work. Got it. Very yep. good. Got it. He did it. Moon's looking something up. No, man. <laughs> I'm not looking at that. sounds like it could not be a real Contreras player. is the, uh, yeah, he's catcher. He's the catcher. catcher. Oh, he is. He's got you. Recent. He's really good. Yeah. Recent. Okay, Kyle. Here we go. Comes down to this. Name three things in a river. Rock, water, fish. Very good. <laughs> Why does what well just drive to his house and just give him the tickets? Well, mm -hmm. That was uh, it was on the list. <laughs> that was the However, next one in line. I will make an Confucius and we'll make an argument. Is the water in the river, or is it the river? Or is the water the river itself? I don't know. You're. I'm judge. not the judge. Yeah, don't look. We got to not look at him. Look at yourself right now. We're already dinged. 
We dinged him. Yeah, he's dinged him already. So you judge. Premature dinging. I yep. guess he wins. Premature There's bottles dinger. of water in there. Premature that. dinger. Had I not, had I not dung. They make. Had you not dung, I we I would look into this. Yep. Wheels on the philosophical bus. Philosophical argument. Wheels on the bus made it uh, made an argument for bottles of water being in there. Yeah. I guess it. All right. <sighs> Can you not? Do the dinger until we're done. Okay, yeah, yeah. all right. You didn't even let the judges weigh in. You give me this in. as the, like, give me a signal, to, a ding signal. Like, okay. hey, like give me There's the a ding. debate about to happen. <laughs> give me the ding. All right. Okay. X me out, and then give me the ding. Yeah, fine. Look at that. Jonathan in Bunker Hill. Jonathan. Hello. Hey, hey, Jonathan, let's play three and five. Name three dramatic TV shows. For you... Uh, I'll Killing it! What did he say? Puppy? I don't even know. He said Paw Patrol. Oh. Did you say Paw Patrol? Oh, SVU. SVU. Oh. Okay, okay. SVU for one. Doesn't matter. need a new it phone. Doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> Got him. Name three famous names from World War II. Cotton, Hitler, Eisenhower. What the hell? I, I think I heard Hitler Patton, Hitler, Eisenhower. Yes, I heard that too. Is that correct? I actually heard Patton, Hit, or Eisenhower. <laughs> Patton, Hitler, and Eisenhower. I heard okay. that too. All right, ding there we go. Okay. Comes down to this. <laughs> down to this. Stand wherever you're standing right now to answer this. Here we go. Name three types of fruit. Bananas, apples, grapes. Whoa! Oh, oh, whoa! You got it! Yaddy, 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 yaddy. Should I have given Can't believe he got harder? that one. <laughs> so on, on these third ones, you want me to get a, no, I'm a, the, no, more of a curveball? Sure. I, listen, I get to comment. You get to do the game. You're right. <laughs> You're right. We all have our roles. Yeah, we're all doing our thing. Amanda, hello. Hi. 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 All right, Amanda, here we go. Three and five. Name three ways to lose weight. Diet, exercise, and give up soda. Yes. Yes. Go. Hit it. You lose weight when you give up soda. Diet, exercise, and give up soda. Wouldn't that yes. be diet, though? No, that's uh, hmm. that's the religion. What is it? It's the uh, it's Lent. Oh, okay. What Lent? You give up soda for Lent. Yeah, you can lose okay. some weight. Yeah. Okay. 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 All right. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Okay. Name three things you see in a parking lot. Cars, people, and dogs. I'm in on that. <laughs> okay. You Wait see dogs in parking lots? I would have fought on that one. I'm not the judge here or anything. <laughs> what? Dogs? Dogs. Some people uh, let their dogs I, loose in parking lots. When I lots. take uh, my I see dog, a little dog with a window down almost every time. When I take my dog to be groomed, oh, okay. I walk her from the parking, from the car to the, to the grooming place. Right. I, I, I can see it in, in cars. Okay. I, I see that. I see that. Dogs in cars getting coffee. By the way, have you ever looked at the parking lot of like a PetSmart or a Petco when they got the little island where the tree is and it's the only grass? It's the dirtiest. It's turd-filled, oh, yeah. urine-filled it's grass. It's, it's Crab Island. Every animal that's walking <laughs> into PetSmart is pooping in that grass. Yeah, that's that's no. the Crab Island. We don't touch that. You live, Back you to you. That. I don't think I've, I've, I haven't been to PetSmart. Do you bring your dog to PetSmart? Uh, maybe once or twice. I, I've, I've I love done that. that. It's, it's been a... I'm pro bring your animal into PetSmart, no matter what it is. Yeah. Well, my dog is a bird dog, so you get it anywhere near that bird aisle, and you can't get her out of there. She just, I wonder how my she dog just sets. Would react. Pointer. She sets, yeah, and just like stares Aww. at him, like, "Oh my God, you brought them to me." I went to Petco yesterday, and there was the cutest ferret, and it was passed out, and it was on its back, and it was like all curled up, shrimping. It was adorable. I might get a ferret. Man, if ferrets didn't smell, they'd be the coolest thing. Uh, oh, right? Man. You want a rodent? Those are rodents. They're cute. They're adorable, dude. Rodents my friend cool. has three of them. I think you can get them, like. <laughs> Blessings. Not descented, but yeah, I yeah, you can, can do you, something about it. You, but yeah, but even that, they still smell. They do. Not all half animals, as bad as all animals smell. All right. Uh, let's see who is next. What do you mean? Didn't she get? No, she went oh, ways she to two. lose weight. Oh yeah, and you're right. Seen a parking lot. Okay, I'm sorry. You're right. Bang you're bang. Right. Uh, who's next here? A A Ron. Oh. Bank, Where baby. are you? Oh. Where is A A Ron right now? Aaron, hello. Morning. Oh, good morning, morning. morning, Aaron. Here we go. Three and five time. Name three sports that involve water. Water polo. <laughs> All right, Aaron. Dude, I knew it was going to be uh, one of those. Water polo. Freeze. Skiing, right? Skiing. Swimming. Diving. Skiing. Ski, sk water, water skiing and water snow skiing. skiing. Hey. 
That's water. It is frozen water. That's water, dude. Whoa. <laughs> and there's like, yeah, there's man. rowing. You, that's a good point, dude. <laughs> <laughs> there's rowing, there's fishing, there's all sorts of stuff. All right, Aaron. Wait, hang on. Aaron, Aaron messed up. You done messed up, hey, Aaron! Okay. Oh, yeah, he blew it. I forgot. <laughs> Name three movies about animals. Kung Fu Panda 1, Kung Fu Panda 2. Yeah, that's two. He did say something before, which his phone cut out, but that doesn't seem to be our problem. It better have been Babe. <laughs> that's it. That's an Aaron problem. Yeah. Oh, that makes more sense because, like, man, he said two with yeah, he closed with the it. Utmost confidence and excitement. I'm sorry. Aaron. You out. Phone I'm, problem. I'm, you out. I'm willing to bet he said Air Bud, and I thought as people were gonna go with Air Bud. I bet she said Marley and me. Air Bud too. Yeah. Or Benji the Hunter. You know, he I said wanted to hear big in the city. <laughs> Was it, <laughs> what, wasn't one about movies. the orangutan? Dunston, Dunston Dun checks it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Duncan. Uh, was it? Dun Dunstan. 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 Oh, Which is the one the with, uh, with uh, <laughs> Matthew Matt LeBlanc? LeBlanc? I was thinking about it, too. I can see the cover in my head. Me, too. Where the baboon's like a picture That's probably Scott's favorite movie. <laughs> yeah, what, what is it? <laughs> <laughs> What's that's it called? Scott's, that's Scott's <laughs> Citizen Kane. Did I send you guys that thing, uh, uh, the How You Doing with uh, Matt oh, LeBlanc? Oh, yeah. yeah. That was cute. With the dune. How you Matt doing? Matt LeBlanc and a, and a monkey. Yeah, honestly, a very strong <laughs> performance from both. I love Ed. it. It's a great it's classic. Just called Ed. <laughs> Isn't Jason Alexander in Dunson Checks in? He's got a wig on. He's got a oh, toupee. I think you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He plays he's, dad. he's like the dad. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what are you doing? Hey, what, you guys Alexander. seen Project X in, in a while? Ed has 6% on Rotten Tomatoes. Well, that seems so bad. That's the aliens, They must not have seen the same ad I watched. Project X uh, uh, is Matthew Matthew Broderick and uh, or no wait, wait wait shoot what am I thinking I, I confuse this every time Matthew Broderick and, and like a chimpanzee and it's like a space program or something oh dude it, it crushed me <clears throat> crushed me as a child War Games no man I'm telling you I think it's called Project X it was Matthew Broderick and a and a and a, and a, a chimpanzee that they were like testing in space Coco the monkey and he like lets him free it was just one of those like you project know. x oh it was okay it was it was like an early like free wheelie like let him go <laughs> all right chris me as, a, as a kid what's up happy hey. birthday Riz. thanks buddy here we go okay name uh, three famous people that are not american oh gosh Gorbachev was the first one he mentioned. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Gorbachev. He even Gorbachev. He's watching some docs. Oh, God. Man. I feel bad. Chris, yeah. I feel bad. Oh, we man. We age demographic. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Chris, here we go. Okay, well, name three things in a police car. Uh, siren. No, 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 um, no, so what are gotta, we doing? Let's, uh, let's review the, the rules. He didn't say a siren, right? I think he went, uh, uh, siren. Yeah. a this, siren. These are crutch words that this man there is was, using. There was no. a lot of distance between uh and siren. Yeah. If it was a siren. No stalter. A uh, siren. No stalter. Yeah, no arms or arms to start the answers, guys. Come on. Uh, Austin, no arms also on the outside. For what that's worth. Hey, morning, Rochelle. Thank you for the last 10 years of support, Justin, uh, being yeah. here in the morning. Thanks, really appreciate thank it. Thanks for listening. Thank you very much. All, right. All right, Austin, here we go. Name three classic rock songs. Hell's Bells. Oh, uh, shoot. Killing it. Hell's Bells. Right on. I almost would count that as three because that rocks so hard. But. Dude, that was a big <laughs> breath for 10 letters. Hell's Bells. You could have gone into Great Hell's song. Bells. Yeah. Great song. Ah, oh, shoot. Uh, I love when you can hear the intake of the breath and then the whole exit. Ah. Hell's ah. Bells. <laughs> All right. Here we go, Austin. Name three brands of potato chips. Lay's, Doritos, Fritos. Cheetos. Yeah, keep going. Just keep going. Lay's, Doritos, Fritos, Cheetos. Cheetos. Those aren't potato chips. Burritos. What? Oh, uh, yeah, that's a good point. Cheetos aren't potato chips? A free, those, those are Fritos corn chips. Those are corn chips. I'm just, I'm I did just, say I'm, potato I'm, chips. Doritos are corn I'm chips. I'm writing a note to the judges right now. <laughs> I mean, those are not. Alex is looking I, over to the side brands, waiting to hear something. Brands of potato chips. I feel like. I did say well, potato chips. Lay's is. Yes, Lay's. Lay's is not. Doritos. Corn chip. Doritos is not, and it's, Fritos is not. I think I Cheetos is an element on the periodic table. <laughs> I don't even know if it's made of anything. 
I think Cheetos and I think an leaves. asteroid hit Earth and made all the Cheetos, and there's just a limited amount. Did you really mean potato? He though? said or are brands you talking of potato chips. Chip. Doesn't matter what I meant. I, I said do brands feel of like potato, chips. potato chips is an all-encompassing term for all chips. All right, it's a technicality. Whatever, it's an X he for did, me. He did say congratulations for ten years in the first. I'm going to give it to him for that. You could hand him a right, So we go to King Scott on that. <laughs> Thank you, judges. The tiebreaker. <laughs> the judges. He, remember, he kissed our ass at the top. <laughs> and it was Easter yesterday, so man. But he did say potato chip. But you know what? We're celebrating, so I'm going to say okay. You guys are out he of is your risen. Mind. Here's a point. Thank you, Riz. Yeah. <laughs> you guys. Hey, what do you mean out of mind? Didn't you just give him a point for, for the 10 year congratulations? I love the I beginning. Did. I would have asked about You remember at the beginning of this game when they said they wouldn't interfere with right. the judges? I yeah. wrote a note to the judges. And you I did. said I was going to And, and your note was reviewed, and we've decided to show leniency. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, we'll show no leniency on this one. It's Mercy Monday on the Riz None. Show. None. That's right. Merciful Monday. Here we go. Name three places famous for growing coffee. Colombia, Mexico, United States. What? A, oh. Oh, now, Man. see, now, how specific Hawaii? you want to get? Because Hawaii, Hawaii, you got that Kona brand. Woo. Hawaii, Mexico. That's what I'm saying. He said Mexico. Yeah. And he said U.S., Columbia. but, like, I mean, are you going to count? he said Colombia. Well, Hawaii and Puerto Columbia, Rico are part of the United States, and that is where coffee can be grown. You Lucy Goosey cats. I'm hey, this is a fact right here. Kona coffee's pretty I'm not a coffee drinker, so I have no idea. Well, Hawaii. you have an idea. Judges? You got, you got I'm it right. It to him. I'm, I'm gonna go. It. What's, the, what's right. the Mexico verdict? Is that are they famous for coffee? Hang on, uh, let me hear. Where's Juan Valdez from? You Venezuela. Guys, you guys got Google. Oh, Colombia. Yes. Coffee production oh, Colombia. in Mexico, 1970, 1982. Maybe not as much. Juan anymore. Valdez and his trusty steed. And yeah, they got 500. <laughs> it is You know what? Hey. For one, I'm counting it. It's a one day miracle. Okay. It's Mexico's the eighth largest producer of coffee in the world. Okay. Oh. And the, well, the, the people of Hawaii beg to differ about the uh, United States thing. What do you mean? They, they don't want to. No, no they, they, would, they want no part of this? They want part of this. You yes, said, I understand that. I'm just saying, like, specificity. I was, I was looking for Ethiopia, not Africa. You know what I'm saying? Oh. Well, or, you were looking for it. Or Hawaii, not U.S. Okay. But I'm not the judge, so give him the points. Okay. Well, technicality. He's right. You got He's it. right. Uh, Richard, hello. <laughs> You're the one arguing Good morning, with me. guys. <laughs> hey, good morning, Richard. Uh, I get the credit for arguing with you. You argue with me just as much. <laughs> uh, all right, let's play. All right, name, uh, let's see, three things that are good with chocolate chips. Ice cream, cookies, and cake. Got that right, Richard. I accept. Yeah, that's one. Next. Name three things you see at a natural history museum. Bones, swords, old parchment. Old, old parchment. Old parchment. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, that is an answer. I am Hell down. yeah, brother. Yeah. Yeah. Roll yeah. that old parchment. Right. Get Richard. the constitution. <laughs> it. What a great answer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Bones. Nailed. Swords. <laughs> <laughs> Old parchment. <laughs> Have two pairs. Of that tickets. might be the best answer I've ever heard on three and five. That um, really was good. One more contested. Michael on uh, Lake St. Louis. Good morning, Michael. How's it going? So far, so That's good, fine. Michael. Here we go. Final contestant. Name three sports that use nets. Volleyball, soccer, basketball. Yes. Boom. Next. Name three brands of ice skates or rollerblades. Ooh. <laughs> That's no, the yeah. toughest one of the day. Holy it smokes. Is. I can't name Bauer. one. Bauer. Bauer. Warrior. CCM? Yeah, CCM. There you go. You got a son that plays hockey. What's wrong with you? Yeah, but he wears Bauer skates. Yeah, but you see skates. Other people are out there. All right, final one, uh, Michael. That was a tough one. Name three parts on a car. Alternator, starter, and battery. Tapped into this guy. This guy drives. You at the shop this right now? This guy drives. Oh Skate, brother, I drive. <laughs> All right, thank you, Michael. All right, there we go. Rousing game of three and five. Excellent. All right, we'll take a break. We'll come back with your sexy time fun facts. It's 840. It's Monday, April Fool's Day. Traffic and weather, moon coming at you. Traffic is brought to you by Worldwide Technology Raceway, the Confluence Music Festival with Ludacris, Riley Green, and more, and the NASCAR Cup Series are coming up. 
uh, June 1st, June 2nd for NASCAR Cup Series. Tickets available now, www.raceway.com. Traffic looks good. Your point forecast, a couple gnarly rounds of severe storms are possible today. High of 78 right now at 67 at the Point Studio. this place for eh, a little over a year now and every time I come up here I discover something new whether it be a new structure or just something hidden in, in part of the woods here so a couple months ago just spotted something in the woods and I what the hell is that so I went exploring and let me show you what I found check this out That, my friends, is a hidden sawmill. So I drove out here one afternoon. I said, what the hell is this? Well, you get all this cut wood. You got this wooden structure out here. I said, what is that? And then I go in here, it's a big saw. So this is a sawmill that was just hidden in the woods. So I guess what you do is that little pipe at the end there, you'd hook a tractor up to that and turn the PTO on and that spins the blade and you would take your logs and you'd push your logs up onto here and this thing slides and you'd make yourselves some two by fours or whatever. Am I ever gonna use it? Absolutely not. All I could see is an accident happening. I mean, this guy was using this sawmill up until basically the day he died. And this was an 80 something year old guy who was taking logs, putting them up here and making planks or whatever he needed to, to use around the farm. And I don't know what the heck this is. It says observation booth. What are you observing? This would be a good spot for Jeff to come and just do weird things. That's what I was thinking. Again, this is all hidden. I just kind of found it. Uh, you got a lot of cut wood, tires, extra fencing. I, I, don't, know what, I don't know why there are so many tires. I guess he was a tire collector. Is this a uh, Blair Witch Project thing? Maybe. Let's not find out. Let's go. Oh, uh, here we are coming up to one of the pastures that flushed with cows. Look at them all just waiting for me. Hey, it's your buddy Riz. Hi, guys. Oh, I'm sorry. Hi, ladies. Let me uh, introduce you to the ladies. There's uh, 33, and there's 59, and 45, and oh, hi, 97. Yeah, there they are. The girls. They're close because they think I'm going to feed them. But little do they know I'm going to feed off them. And look at the calf. Look, they just crap everywhere. They just stand there and, well, you know what they do all day? They eat and poop. That's it. Just eat and poop. Look at that one drooling. So the cows are on the field and they, and they graze. And they're doing the lawn mowing for me. They eat. They poop. They eat. They poop. Man, I wish you guys were out here when the stud was out here. And this stud was just running around, just trying to mount all the cows. And some cows were just weren't having it. Imagine that job. Just your job is just to be out on the, on the field and just have sex with things. You see what these damn cows, they crap everywhere. I got my tires dirty. So here's the deal with the cows. They aren't actually our cows. They're the neighbor's cows, the neighboring farm. So he pays us to put the cows on our fields so the cows can graze and do their thing. And he moves the cows from field to field. So they're right here now. Uh, in a week or two, they'll be on. A St. Louis, it's time to rally behind the beloved, you guessed it, Battle Hawks as they soar into the 2024 UFL season. And there's no better place to experience the excitement than Hot Shots Sports Bar and Grill, the official partner of the St. Louis Battle Hawks. So join the party at Hot Shots and their exclusive Battle Bar locations where every touchdown, every interception, and every nail-biting moment is celebrated in style. Talking about watch parties packed with uh, giveaways and prizes and surprises that will keep you on the edge of your seat. You can get the full schedule at HotShotsNet.com.
And as the Battle Hawks gear up for their shot at the UFL glory, Hot Shots is right there with them. Fueling the fire in St. Louis's favorite football team. So grab your friends, throw on your jersey, and head down to Hot Shots for a game day experience like no other. Hot Shots Sports Bar and Grill is a proud sponsor of the St. Louis Battle Hawks. And it's been St. Louis home for all the games all the time since 1990. Find a location near you at hotshotsnet.com. <laughs> Backstage uh, at uh, Point Fest, and I'm uh, completely honored to be joined by Ed from Live. This is uh, one of my childhood dreams to always talk to you every time you're in well, town. Thank you very much. Appreciate yeah. that. Uh, been following you. I was telling your tour manager, I've been following you guys since. And I'm sorry if nobody out there cares, but I'm going to walk uh, down memory lane with you. Uh, MTV 120 Minute Tour, Springfield, Missouri. Oh, yeah. Shrine Mosque, I think is what it was. I think and, so. It was uh, our wow. first tour. Ama that was your first tour. Yeah. Because, I mean, you guys were like, talk about just being with the guys you grew up with. You guys were like 12 at the time or something. Yeah, we started the band when we were 13, coming out of eighth grade into high school. And that tour you mentioned, that was 1992. So that was our first road experience with uh, Public Image Limited and... Yep. And big audio dynamite and blind melon. Yeah, that was amazing, and uh, that's one of those. That's like obviously the first time I saw you, but even more creepy. Uh, I have a public affection CD. Oh, I love that. That's awesome. <laughs> there aren't too many of those around. Is there you know no restraining order just yet on that? No, no. We somebody did try to some somebody tried to like they put it up on one of the streaming sites as like public affection. I'm like, hey, that's our band. Wait you a minute, hold no, on a wait second. A minute. Wait a minute, you can't do that. You so. got enough of that stuff going on all, all the cool. time anyway with so many records out and everything and now uh, new music and you guys are here in St. Louis. Talk about uh, uh, touring again and still and still doing it after what, 25 years of yeah. uh, throwing copper, one of my all time faves. It's still fun for you, right? It's so much fun. We're uh, yeah, we're just kicking this year off. We've we've been back now. We took a long break there and break slash break up. Right. And um, <laughs> And uh, it's been, this is the third year we've been out. You know, the first year we did a bunch of festivals. Last year we did a great tour with um, Counting Crows. Yep, been there. Um, I was buddies. there. And then, uh, yeah, we're kicking off this year right now. Yeah, we had, this is really the uh, first couple shows we've done this year. And then we're out with um, Bush and Our Lady Peace starting June 6th. That's going to be an amazing tour as well. And, and I can't wait to see that. I'm going to go where, somewhere and see that. Uh, talk about the difference now as opposed to 20, 25, even 30 years ago uh, uh, touring. Like, what is, what's the same now and what is different now? Well, you know, we're older. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. Are we? Yeah, we are. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, we, I, I think the pace is is less crazy, you know, by design, just because we all have kids. Like there's like 13 kids between the four right, of us, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. So it's a lot like, of love there, though. And, and they're all graduated, a bunch of them graduated. Warmer weather has finally arrived, and today we're going to get some uh, possible some rain, and that means tomorrow and the next day and the day after that, those weeds are about to explode in your yard, and you should get that taken care of now by reaching out to Green Envy Lawns. And I know that they'll make your yard healthy and beautiful, because they use products that are formulated for our soil right here. They don't use some cheap and effective product. They actually use one that is made for our soil, our weather conditions, our turf types. It's absolutely amazing. So they can prevent those spring weeds from popping up or the crabgrass from taking over. Green Envy Lawns can take care of that. And I know they could do it because they have professional, commercially licensed applicators that are certified by the Missouri Department of Agriculture. So they don't have part-timers or high school kids. No, these are real deal pros that will come on your property, make the yard look absolutely beautiful. And they've been in St. Louis doing this for over a decade, so they know what they're doing. That's why you got to reach out to Green Envy Lawns, make your yard very healthy. They're open 12 hours a day, Monday through Friday. And, uh, and you can just call 636-757-1600 or go to Green Envy Lawns. Dot com. We are backstage at Point Fest, and we have the absolute pleasure for the first time of speaking to Ash from New Year's Day. Welcome, and it's great to have you at Point Fest. We're so honored to be at Point Fest today. It was so much fun. You're, you had that crowd going. You know what I mean? How do you handle the challenge? When you are coming into a situation where you know, you know, there's a headline. So Moon didn't fly down to Florida for his uh, Disney vacation. Took the old RV. That's you know, right. Saved a ton of money. We took. Well, I don't have an RV, but we rented from Byerly RV, dude. And I'll tell you what, uh, that is the way to go as far as figuring out what is right for your family. 
like my, you know, I lived in a tour bus, so I know what I can live with and yep. all that. But you know, we got a big family, and my wife said about two days in, she goes, "Man, this is the perfect size. Yeah. I, would, I wouldn't need anything and, bigger, but we couldn't go smaller." And and here's the thing, uh, you know, your fat's great for your family. I don't think my family would do well in an RV. I. Beg to differ, buddy. I think the kids would love it. I think it's just a full-on adventure. I don't know, man. There's something about the excitement of flying. Am I right, guys? No, no, not when you, something not, about the not excitement when you get the bill. Flying. Right. Uh, the old American yes. tradition. Besides, yeah, besides the bill. Uh, I mean, listen, on the off chance of maybe running into a situation where somebody gets arrested for being too drunk. <laughs> right? On the plane? On, well, this happened uh, over the weekend. Uh, an American Airlines passenger was arrested for public intoxication after berating and hitting airplane staff. Oh, that's how to do it. This was before she got on the plane. So she was at the gate. I guess she was, this woman was so hammered. And it's like an eight minute long video. I got the highlights here. But uh, she got like an old Brenda Warner haircut. Like okay. when it, when it, when it was spiked in white. Mm -hmm. like the old white spike. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? You yeah. Shaved on the sides. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so she was hammered. She apparently had a bunch of very full <laughs> vodkas at the bar. And then she was making fun of police officers about their salary, height, junk size. She happened to wet herself during the whole incident. <laughs> it was wow. all, it was a whole wow. thing. Uh, that's our three and five timer. Here it is. That was the airline's timer. Yeah, time's up. No. You're under arrest for PI. Okay. Now you're under arrest. Yeah. Oh, no. What did I do exactly? You're under arrest for public intoxication. What did I do? Stop! All right. Stop! Stop! Stop. I'm, we're charging through this. I have a recording! Pieces of mediocre <laughs> your life. You make yourself so good making 60 grand a year. You have so good <laughs> your wife with your five inch are you done yet? Yeah. Stand up. Okay, stand up. That's not bad. That's average. Yeah, That's lady yeah. what? Pretty That's cool. above average, actually. Sorry, size yeah. queen lady. You're under Jeez. arrest. You white queen, size queen, <laughs> more like it. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse us, Brenda Warner. Yeah, she wet herself. That's not a good look for this woman. Hmm. Making your wife happy cool. with your nine-inch schlong. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, lady. <laughs> that is kind of a good reverse psychology, though. She's really getting in their head. Yeah. Go, what? what? She says two inches or something. You're like, ha ha. But she says something average. Then the guy's like, wait. Wait a minute. Yeah. She really did. She planted the seed. Yeah. She here's what I think. I think with all these people going nuts, I'm, I'm honestly thinking people are popping pills and drinking. That's got to be a big part of it. Is it, is it? Or getting crazy on edibles. Hmm. Taking edibles before they fly, popping pills before they fly, and having a couple drinks at the bar to loosen up. Or they think they could settle in better. Yeah. And just going nuts. I don't know. Could just be good old... Uh, Entitlement? And alcoholism, yeah. <laughs> or, yeah, could be. But there is a huge, I would say a larger number of people now than ever on... By prescription meds, whether it's for like you're not supposed to necessarily drink on like depression meds or things like stuff that's like mood altering. Right, I'm gonna to take on anything. Like I'm gonna take a Xanax. So I'm gonna take a Xanax before. I'm gonna pop a Xanax yeah. before I go exactly. and have a drink. I mean, isn't it just a safe rule out there? If you, if you drink alcohol, to have nothing in your system, medicine wise. I, I, mean, I get just crazy like, about it. Like if I'm on antibiotics, mm, I'm not antibiotics. Drinking. Advil. Same. I don't care what you're on. It's not a good mix. It's not a good mix. No, like, I don't, I don't I think like Andrew probably okay. But Why yeah. risk it? Especially if you're well, going to go up at 30,000. The 30, fun 000. factor. Well, you go up 30,000 feet. We already talked about how that dehydrates you. Um, so you're going to be dehydrated. Now you're putting a, a diuretic in you. You're uh, on edge it, as it is. It, I mean, this is it's a recipe. It's an easy recipe the to disaster. see as a disaster. It is. It's, it's a disaster. All right, let's do this. Uh, sponsored by Patricia's, where fun and fantasy meet. You know, some people have an unspoken rule where they only do an online gift registry for someone once. So, 
Like, I already did your wedding registry. I'm not doing anything else. Like, I'm not doing your baby registry. What? Why? You get one. Oh, wait. This That's is, weird. Those are separate events. Yeah, what's wrong with you? Ah, you get one. You get one? That's the easiest thing me? to do ever is go on to somebody's registry, right, order it this? online, have it Fine. delivered. Okay, okay. Happy birthday. It's, I won't be celebrating because I went to your right. wedding 18 years ago. Yep. All right. <laughs> Fine. Maybe the maybe the the wedding and the baby registry. Oh, bad example. Okay. If you get married twice. Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah yeah. That's second that's wedding. Good. Don't do the whole thing. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Am I right there? What if one of the one of the people though is not has never been married before? Yeah. This is their first wedding. Then what? Yeah, that's not fair. But it's on the, that's hey. that's not my problem. That's right. <laughs> well, then you get gifts from that side. You're not getting a gift when it's your second, third, or eighth wedding, okay? I can yeah. understand putting the registry together, like you said. Like, right. it's somebody's first marriage, it's somebody else's second actually. marriage. But if somebody else, if if I'm a friend of the bride and it's her second wedding and there's a registry out there, eh, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm cool. Ooh, I have a wedding coming up where it's somebody's second and somebody else's first. What are you going to do? Did you buy... Did you, go to, Did you no, go to the first? Did you go to the first wedding? Well, then you then yeah. you owe them yep. something. I owe them Get a something. card, fifty bucks. Hey, don't don't no. forget. Remember, like the registry is never mind the baby showers or any of that kind of stuff. But for a wedding, part of the trade here is you're bringing a gift because they're about to feed your ass and provide. Well, we're a party. going away. It's a destination wedding. Well, oh. even more so, they're about to provide a party. You had to pay, to, to, pay go, to get there, yeah. My presence is your presence. No. Aww. Nobody wants that presence. My presence. <laughs> you're the anti that. Can I return that? Present? Yeah, baby. You can walk out with a cane. My presence is your presence. <laughs> I talk a good game, but I'll probably I would probably just I'll buy a gift. I was gonna say you're this man okay. your love language is gift giving. Mm. Whether you want it to be or not, you are a good gift giver. You and Tina. Well, there may be a new trend of people uh, posting an online registry for their divorce. Divorce <laughs> registries. Okay. So the idea is that people can be financially vulnerable at a time of uh, of uh, of a splitting. And there's a good chance that they'll only have half their stuff, appliances, tools, furnishings, and other everyday supplies, or maybe even less. Some people think it's a great idea and argue it's even more helpful than providing newly married couples with stuff since they may already have two versions of things, like coffee makers and couches mm -hmm. and all that stuff from their previous homes. Mm -hmm. So what do you think about the divorce registry? I, mean, I don't know. It's frivolous, but I kind of like it. Yeah, if it was normalized in some you way. You talking about Facebook Marketplace? <laughs> I can see I can see a big... No, like, hey, we're getting divorced. I can see a utility for it. Yeah. We're getting divorced, and here's uh, our registries, our divorce registries. It's kind of a new age thing. I went to a divorce party. It was just, you know, a friend, and they, they threw this big divorce party. Were both was... people there? Or uh, was no. it like... One side. <laughs> no. Thank God he's gone. It was, yeah, it was one of those, and I Ow. felt I felt conflicted. I this was, is uh, begging. You're begging for stuff. Or you're celebrating the newfound freedom of somebody who maybe wasn't the wrong one in that divorce. But and they're like, I'm going to celebrate my but new But to put out a register, yeah, but you go, you know, yeah. hey, I'm your friend. Uh, if you need a, you know, uh, you need a couch, I got your couch. It's really weird. It's really weird because, you know, divorce is like such a, I mean, it's it's, it's so crazy. hard. It's, it's such a... Um, such a devastating thing. Sure. P personally, financially, everything. It's so devastating. And it's so... When does it become begging? It's so personal. <laughs> it's so personal and it's so unique that typically one would want to be very private about it. So to be have anything like publicly associated with like, I'm announcing this and here's this due to my divorce. That's very strange. Very At what strange. point does Society. it become I'm begging for stuff? Maybe they need help though. And your community around you wants to rally around you in that moment? Hey, I get speaking it. of... Yeah, but then you do that without yeah, you posting an online that. registry. Dude, speaking mm. of begging for stuff and when does it become begging, I listened to a ton of podcasts while I was driving the RV and uh, maybe one of the most informative ones I have ever listened to that I am begging you guys to listen to, <laughs> uh, in, including our, our audience, right. because it's we it's a subject that we've talked about and argued about and had such difficulties with, is it's all about tipping and how tipping started and how un-American tipping is. Hmm. Well, put it out yeah. on the socials. Yeah. Adam Ruins Everything has a great episode about this the history one, of tipping. Yeah, well. this one goes into the whole thing and um, and, and basically it kind of does just a factual breakdown in both sides. It's, it's a podcast called Through Line. And just look up the one that's like yeah. uh, the land of the fee is what they called it. And, land of the oh, fee. my gosh, brilliant, brilliant.
All right, oh. for this, for the divorce registry, here's what I got to say. Yeah. All right, I already supported your marriage, supported the pregnancy, and if that doesn't work out, this is what spousal support is all for. And, uh, hey, you broke it, you buy it. Sorry. <laughs> also, like, you get half the stuff you got for your wedding. Take the blender. Put the blender on your side of the aisle. Or whatever, you know? I'm Sell assuming... the blender. Do whatever. That's why, I, that's why I said Facebook Marketplace. Facebook Marketplace. Marketplace. That Sell is the, the blender. That's the divorce registry. Need a couch? 200 bucks. <laughs> For your new studio apartment. <laughs> yeah, I almost understand, like, yeah, Lardy, like, oh, it's, you know, okay, but it's kind of fun. Putting a fun spin on things. But again, we're, you know. I know people have gotten divorced and it was a celebration for them. And yeah. so I have a little, and I'm sure everybody has that sure. one person in their life. But so if it's that way and, hey, they're they're trying to make a new chapter and, and move on. I mean, if it's your friend or your family member and you want to support them, why not? Yeah, for that, for, I would just do it though. I wouldn't want to go to a registry. Right. Yeah, yeah. For for one of the for one of the divorce parties I went to, <clears> it <throat> made sense because this this gal put this dude through absolute misery, and made the divorce process really difficult and long. So sure. it was like it was like a oh, this has finally passed me. It wasn't like they're celebrating the divorce. It was more like a moving on kind of thing. And that yeah. that was that was a fun party. That made more sense. But sometimes when you see like. The we're going out. The do oh, yeah. it, that almost looks like a uh, like a a, a bridesmaid uh, yeah. uh, sort of party, but they're like they're celebrating a divorce. It yeah. just seems so weird and rotten to me. Oh, I, love I it. just I don't like that. At I all. worked across. Dress. I worked across from the courthouse in Edwardsville at a bar for twelve, thirteen years, and I'd work the day shift sometimes in the back bar, especially towards the end when I was doing comedy at night. And I get so many people that would go finalize their divorce that just like we're getting day drunk. Happy about it. Sometimes, sometimes an alarming even together. Uh, yes, an alarming wow. amount of men and women would come in and be like, "Yeah, this was the right thing for us. We got kids. No hard. You know, not every divorce is nasty. Sometimes it's just time to. There doesn't always have to be a bad guy. Sometimes it's just time to move on. Like you know, like some divorces. Yes, I get it. They end horribly, but sometimes it's just the end of a chapter, and two people like are. And that was kind of fun and cool for me as a bartender to be like, "Wait, you guys are married?" And they're like. Yeah, not anymore. We're way better as just being front. We're, you know, this run its course and make them a couple margaritas. They get day drunk together and they ride off into the sunset separately. That's nice. That's nice, actually. Yeah. And they realize yeah. it's not working. It's nice. Why prolong the misery when we could be, we yeah. can find happiness other places? Clearly, this is not working. And I get people on solo missions, too. I get, a, you know, a woman coming in with a couple of her friends, like, finalized it today. Long time coming. Yeah, when we were at Hot Shots at the beginning of Rafe and I joining the show, there was a woman who was newly divorced who was in line that was right. celebrating. Yeah. And she's like, Garizzo. I just got divorced. And we all had the whole place rolling. You for know us. what's funny? That line, when last year, yeah. there, was a, there was a couple that just got married and there was a woman that just got divorced. Oh, yeah, yeah. Circle of life, dude. Yeah, circle of life. Hey, um, has anybody used the peach emoji to literally mean peach? Like, I'm, I'm buying peaches. <laughs> no. Or. Always tush. Or it's always tush, right? Yeah. It's always tush. Um, the uh, the sexual wellness site Bed Bible just released the uh, the Bed list Bible. of the kinky estates, and they used Google searches for various sex toys and accessories. And congratulations, Georgia, Georgia. Peach State, for the kinky estate in America. Ooh, Who yeah. would have thought, huh? You drove through Georgia, dude. That's did awesome. Did you feel Was extra horny? I did. I felt like I was surrounded by horniness. Peaches everywhere. Peaches everywhere. <laughs> That's why it's Hotlanta. Makes sense. Pe peach references. Song feel different. All over the place. Peaches. What do you mean? Yeah. Oh, I think you meant Georgia. Millions of asses. Asses, asses for, for me. me. So Georgia is, congratulations, the kinkiest Ooh. state in America. I oh. declare. Followed by Nevada. Oh, well, that's not a surprise. Followed by New York and Texas. You get a tie between North Carolina and Colorado, California, Washington, Utah and Illinois. Congratulations, Utah. Wow. I think that was a big surprise. Wait, where's yeah. Iowa? I figured it'd be up there. Utah soaking. and Illinois. So, I was soaking in Utah. Mm. I hate that. Well, you can hate it, but it's happening. I hate it. <laughs> Maryland and Massachusetts. Uh, the state with the least amount of kinky Google, uh, Google searches. Congratulations, South Dakota. Where's, where are we? Where's Where's Mo? Uh, we're somewhere in the middle. I don't have the exact number because they kind of did the twelve, the top twelve in the last. And for the record, Bed Bible did did not do this to shame any states. 
other than maybe South Dakota for not having enough fun. Uh, they say people shouldn't feel embarrassed about searching for sex toys because they could improve mental health, alleviate problems with intimacy, make you happier with your sex life, and and more satisfied in your relationship. And they're fun. Right. And sex toys are such an easy way to, like, add some spice to your relationship. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't have to go top shelf, like, all right, we're going to... We're going to go swing. Yeah. You can go to Patricia's or wherever, get, get something some, kind yeah. of fun. Get something for the novice. <laughs> Swinging is top shelf. <laughs> We're bored in bed. Yeah, let's well, go back to yeah, like, That's like you're going from zero to 100. Yeah, right, 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 right. <laughs> yeah, you could ease into it. Yeah. yeah, we've been married about six years now. I think it's about time we started banging the couple down the street. Like, <laughs> you, can kinda, you can ease into just, like just a gateway swing with yeah. a nice silver bullet. Right. But also, yeah. vibrator is not like a gateway drug to swinging. No, you know what I'm saying. Right. You can cap and, it. And you know what? I'm glad you kind of kind of brought that that part up because for the sex toy of the week, we've had some really outrageous ones. Mm -hmm. Today's sex toy of the week is maybe something for a beginner. That's right. I wanted to dial it back a little for Easter Sunday, but uh, also honor Easter. Yeah, in a way. By a true, tried and true classic sex mm -hmm. toy. You know what? Why don't you hop on this? The classic rabbit. The classic rabbit. It is. The that classic is. rabbit. Yeah. It is the OG, OG, and it's been around a long time, and I'll be damned if there's not a reason for that. Like last week, we had like nipple clamps that you would hook up to like a car battery. Mm -hmm. Right. Like that's crazy. Classic. Like you got to be. What do you mean? Oh. Like that's. <laughs> You I know. thought that was a staple in, in, mm -hmm. in every closet. Uh, Riz is not from Georgia, <laughs> That's That's, you know, you got to be really into the lifestyle to start getting stuff like that. But the classic rabbit is... It's approachable. It is. <laughs> it's your entry into this world. Hey, you know, it is. It's been around a long time. There's a reason for that. It's reliable. It works. And it's a good, it's a good introductory sex toy. $158.99 on Rabbit.com. Don't be fooled by cheap imitations. There are a lot of... They're expensive, by the way. There's a lot of Rabbit imitations out there. This is the classic Rabbit off of the Rabbit's website. Don't fall for the the $8 one on Amazon and then end up shocking yourself. <laughs> you don't want to cheap out. A favorite among women for decades, the classic Rabbit is a Rabbit vibrator that features two powerful motors that stimulate both inside and out for sensual satisfaction that cannot be beaten. Made with versatility in mind, this rabbit vibrator features six functions in the rabbit ears and six stimulating massage patterns in the head and shaft that you can mix and match for endless pleasure. Enjoy easy one-touch control. You only need one hand to control your rabbit. Plus, it's 100% splash-proof. Oh. <laughs> oh. For unlimited pleasure anywhere you go. Ain't that something. Pretty straightforward, folks. Yeah. That's it. Let's get to some reviews. Review number one, best orgasm ever, five out of five stars, verified buyer, literally shed a tear while climaxing. Wow. <laughs> best thing is it doesn't require batteries because it's chargeable, waterproof, and gets the job done. <laughs> if you find yourself needing a man Get out of or, the pool, Moon. <laughs> get out of yep. the pool. Oh, Lord. If you find yourself needing a man or debating on having a one-night stand during quarantine, don't risk getting corona. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is from 2020, clearly. Uh, honestly, the thing you'll need if you want your needs met, buy one today. Don't wait. Get that rabbit. All right. Five out of five. That's five out of five. Another five out of fiver. I am in love. This product is amazing. Had me soaked in less than 10 minutes. <laughs> I've never been overstimulated before, and it was amazing. It snatched my soul, resuscitated me just to bring me back to the brink of unconsciousness. Let's just say I had to change the sheets. Oh. <laughs> no. You weren't going to no. like that. Oh. No. I don't like that at all. It's like best that. I've ever experienced before. It is amazing. Five out of five stars. I get out of the pool. I, and not, now. Not until my fingers are shriveled. <laughs> Whoa! Well, speaking of shriveled fingers, oh, let's get to this. Uh, oh my God! <laughs> nice. I'm pruned out. Speaking of shriveled fingers, let's. I want to. I want to represent all reviews. Everyone. Let's get a one-star review. Big and squeaky. 
from Crimson Crow on November 9th, 2023. One star! Exclamation point. Too big for my 70-year-old vagina. <laughs> <laughs> Info. Oh. <laughs> Info on website, not really clear, and no comparison photos to get a sense of how big it is. And to make it all awful when using the vibrator and the head slash shaft, which is too big, by the way, it squeaks like a hamster wheel. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Either problem a deal breaker and let down for an expensive, non-refundable item. Crimson Crow, one star, oh, 2020. So yeah, non-refundable. You, yeah, you're not returning this. Can't send no. the rabbit back. Oh. Once the rabbit's out of the briar patch, the rabbit stays. It's out a of the classic patch. for a reason, guys. It is. Mm -hmm. I mean, that lady had a bad experience, yeah, but, but it's, a classic. It, it's, it's overwhelmingly for, positive. It's been around for years. There you go. The sex toy of the week for Easter. The classic rabbit. Yep. Oh, bunny foo foo. There you go. You're for us. All right, let's take a break. We'll come back. Uh, Moon's got some sports for us. It is 9 10. It is Monday. Traffic and weather, moon coming at you. Traffic is brought to you by Worldwide Technology Raceway, the Confluence Music Festival with Ludacris, Riley Green, and more, and the NASCAR Cup Series, June 1st and 2nd. Tickets are available for both uh, www.racewaye.com. All things clear. Your point forecast, a couple gnarly rounds of severe storms are possible today. High of 78. Right now it is 68 at the Point Studio. All right, backstage at uh, our big, gigantic ho ho show with Angels and Airwaves. Mr. Tom DeLong, how are you, man? It's great I to see you. I am good, and I just realized you have a kick ass camera right there. This is like IMAX level shit you're doing. We, we try not to mess around, Tom. You don't fuck around. This is like real interview. This but is like. The bad, the bad part is, though, with that fancy camera, it really pinpoints the ugliness. Boogers and like. I mean, anything, man. Like crazy yeah, hairs, anything. anything. It really blows it out you of proportion. You know what's portion. funny about that? I was just walking down the stairs. And Alon, my drummer, goes, wait a second, I had one, I was like, one hair was longer. And he went up to my face and we got it out. One hair, and you just mentioned hairs. Dude, that was kind of funny. You know what the worst part, I don't, and I don't know how old you are, Tom, but I think we're probably 22. pretty close. All right, well. Your vasectomy done at South County Neurological on Friday. You would be back to work today. Everything would be all good. South County Neurological, hundreds of racial listeners have gotten their vasectomies done at South County Neurological. Become part of a, a team. Yeah, the vasectomy team, the vasectomy club. We have a secret handshake and everything. In fact, now I have an announcement to make. South County Urological offers the option of nitrous oxide or laughing gas for vasectomies. That's right. Really, you really take the edge off. For, I'm telling you, it was no big deal when I got my vasectomy done. Uh, I did mine on the air. Uh, it was all good. It was a half-hour procedure. My insurance covered everything. You go in on Friday, you rest over the weekend, you're back to work on Monday. How painful is recovery? Minor swelling, discomfort for about a week. Um, will my sex life be affected? That's a big question guys have. Not at all. All good. South County Urological, 314-843-8000, southcountyurological.com. All right, so where it's, see, I, I actually made up a word this morning and I'm so happy about this. Now, the last year and a half of all of our lives, the word synergy has been like kind of a gigantic joke. Like there's all this stuff happening all over. You're just trying to make it work for the day. Yeah. But it seems like Amy Lee, front woman of Evanescence, that you have a very synergistic year ahead of you. The album is out now, the, the single doing great, the big tour with Hailstorm later this year. This feels like synergy to me. And I bet you for you, it's finally like, oh, great. We're finally here. Yeah, it feels really good. Um, you know, part of last year and this time, um, something that's felt really good is just to keep going, just to go, 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 go harder. Don't let it stop us. Don't let anything hold me down. Like just yeah. this feeling of, I can't waste a minute. I don't want to waste a day. We don't know if we have tomorrow. So it is time to just do what we were born to do. Um, so kind of taking, 
that attitude after the initial sort of like, ah, frustration and heartbreak and just frustration. I, I want to say that word a lot because a lot of it was that, but also just anxiety and fear about everything. You know how this time has been. I don't have to describe it. Yeah. Um, but, uh, it's, it's felt really good to sort of take control of the things that we can control, make great music, um, give something to our fans and have something to look forward to and be excited about. Now, can you All right, tire express R and R Midwest.com. Go check them out. Once you buy tires, once you experience the R and R service, you're never going to buy tires the same way again. And right now it's never been easier to get the wheels and the tires that you need and want now through April 15th, request a quick quote and r, &R is going to pay half of your first month's payment. Half. That is amazing. Not only that, but they have all those flex flexible payment options. Everybody's approved. No credit needed. And you get that peace of mind coverage that includes free tire installation, free rotations, free flat repair and more. Think about that. You know, I was... Uh, when I was young, I made the mistake and I put tires on a credit card. I was stupid enough to uh, do it one at a time, too. I was like, oh, you know, I had no idea that r, &R Tire Express was right there. And, I mean, if you're going to be on payments, do you think your credit card is going to give you any sort of peace of mind coverage or or deal with a tire installation or, or flat repair if something happens? Absolutely not. You go with r, &R Tire Express. They're there for you with all of that kind of stuff and put your mind at ease. That's why they call it the peace of mind coverage. Check it out. Let r, &R Tire Express team pay half of your first month on all in stock tires and wheels when you request a quick quote now. RNRMidwest.com for area locations. Visit them again at RNRMidwest.com. Oh, hey, just sitting here checking out all my awards. You know, there are many ways to reach us in the Point Studio. You could call us, you could social media us, I think you could even fax us. But there's a new way. It's called Mic Drop. Yes, download the Point app, click the Mic Drop feature, talk into your phone, and your message goes right to us. Look, I just got one from Jeff Burton. Hey, Riz, great show today. I'll see you tomorrow. All right, I can read this stupid thing that that had told me to read. That's right, the new Mic Drop feature. Download the Point app. Is this thing recording still? All right, so uh, here we are, way back, Point Fest, the first interview of the day. It's real big fish, everybody. Gentlemen, how are you? It's great to see you. Great, great hey. to see you. Fantastic. Hello. Oh. Hey. Oh. Hey. Thank you. Thank you. No, no, don't stop. No, more, please. Please, more. It's really great to have you guys back. We, we have, over the years, done so many different things, so many shows. Yeah. I did legitimately the worst stage intro I've ever done in my life at a Real Big Fish show at Mississippi Nights <laughs> through no fault of your own. I came up on stage too late. Your cue music that night was Billy Jean from Michael Jackson. I'll never forget. And I'm getting up there and I'm doing my spiel and Aaron, you came up behind me and we're like, are you done yet, Donnie? Are you, are you done? Are you done with the intro? Yes, I am. Thank you. And then you guys went out and, and rocked it. But it's really great to have you here, man. Thank so you guys for coming fault. out. No, it was not your fault. No, no. Somebody probably told me wrong. But but <laughs> do you remember any of those, you know, uh, older shows here? Like, because you, we've had you at the amphitheater. I mean, oh, yeah. Mississippi Nights. Every, I mean, all over the place. I was just telling you guys a story about the first time I tried, like, really hot hot sauce. I wasn't into it back then, in the old days. But uh, the singer of Smash Mouth at one of these festivals gave me Dave's Insanity Sauce or something. And I was like. And that was here. That was here. My first time trying hot sauce. I don't Are even remember. Excited? I don't even remember you guys being. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember you guys story. being here with Smash Mouth. Legendary even. Yeah, <laughs> maybe it was somewhere in Florida. Was, I think it was Blues Traveler. Blues. Yes. All right. Yeah, it could have been. Who knows? Maybe, maybe it was the Spit Doctors that gave me. You know what? I will still. No, it was Geggy Ta. Wow, oh wow. We are going That's deep into the 90s That's reference <laughs> of the 90s. I only know the Whoever You Are song. I have nothing else going on with Giggy Ta, even remotely. Marcy Playground. Would that S have been funnier? Sex and Candy, St. Joe and the yeah. School Bus. There you yeah. go. Yeah, I could do the single game all day. Uh, all day. So, you know, one of the things... Well, that well, song, if, if you see K. And if you see K. What's song is you die. I don't know. Which it's the 90s song. Okay. 90s. <laughs> you said you'd know about the 90s. Well, I, I mean, I think I know a lot it's about the 90s. Um, uh, stormy weather ahead. Uh, you know, spring is here. That means rain, heavy winds. 
you know, we get these storms. If you have an older roof, you may have some damage and not even know it. So it's time to call the Happy Roof Company before that small problem, and I've said this before, becomes a big, costly problem down the road. You know, if your home was hit by recent hailstorms, uh, Happy Roof Company does hail inspections. If you have a leaky roof, an old roof, a damaged roof, or an ugly roof, the Happy Roof Company should be your first call. If you call today, they will have somebody out to look at your issue within 24 hours. They do commercial roofing as well as residential roofing. Over 50 years combined experience, roofing, siding, gutters, financing available, A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau. And this is a big thing. You're calling a local St. Louis company, not storm chasers. 100% of the market is in the St. Louis and surrounding areas headquartered in Sunset Hills. It's the Happy Roof Company, 314-665-3001, online at thehappyroof.com. They put the happy in happy endings. I'm a fan, I'm a freaking nerd, I'm a big fan. St. Louis City has my heart, and Together Credit Union has made it so very easy for me. Not only have they dressed me well with this lovely scarf, but they gave me access to the St. Louis City SC Visa card. The credit and the debit card exclusive. Hey, Riz. Oh, my God, I'm running out of time. All right, here's sports. So much fun today, guys. So Thank you. much fun. Uh, sports sponsored by. Sports is brought to you by DraftKings at Casino Queen. Call to book your bracket bash watch parties at DraftKings Sportbook now. Uh, let's just start off with saying that St. Louis sports didn't have a great weekend. It was a probably one of the worst Saturdays in the history of St. Louis sports. Not good. A wild finish, but the uh, Battle Hawks uh, fail. You know they they fell a little short to the Michigan Panthers in their United Football League debut. Uh, I think they took it down to a big old uh, sixty-four field goal. yard field yeah, goal. Yeah, sixty-four Which, yard. Did they set two records that day? It was eight seconds left. I don't know what With, what, what record was one, you talking one, about. Like a sixty-six yard one as well. That was no, they were saying on that field, the longest NFL field goal was kicked, as well as the longest UFL. Oh, oh I see, I see. I USL. thought they were saying it was the both. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, the Battlehawks took a late lead after converting a touchdown on a fourth down play in the final minute of the fourth quarter, and then Michigan took on uh, possession and gained enough ground to get that 64-yarder, and they won. That That's it. it. Uh, since mid-February, the San Jose Sharks were 1-15-3. and three. That's not good. They've been called the second-worst team this century so far. That didn't stop them from beating the pants off the Blues 4 to nothing. <laughs> the Blues were booed off the ice at the end of the second period after the Sharks scored three times to transform a 0-0 game into a 3 nothing San Jose the lead. The Blues were booed off their home ice. The Sharks, <laughs> yeah, on se Yikes. second period. Then they had the, uh, the Sharks had the first 11 shots on goal. Blues didn't get a shot on goal until 16-16. Uh, I don't think I've seen more written about one game. So yikes for every player well, out there. Well, because they could have gained. They could have. They could. I think the Kings lost on Saturday, and they yeah, could have gained like a their, spot. It was like their chance. And it they, was their chance. And they blew they it. not only blew it. They. I mean, they blew it to like the worst team. Spectacularly. Ever. Uh, Blues host the Oilers tonight at 8 p.m. Skate Boys. A second blown save in as many days gave the Dodgers a three game to one win in the Cardinals season opening visit. In a blink and some home runs, a significant series split vanished for the Cardinals. Cardinals had a four run lead and blew it in the eighth and ninth mm -hmm. to lose 5 4. Cards play the Padres on the coast today at 8 40 p.m. I know it sounds silly, but I was happy with their win Saturday. They did yeah, win Saturday. They did, get a win on Saturday. they did good. In St. Louis City SC news on Saturday night in Utah, City SC's opening uh, season opening five game unbeaten streak turned into a four game winless streak as they got their first loss to the season. City scored first, but then gave up and uh, gave it up and lost 3-1 to one to Real Salt Lake, making it in only the second time in city history that they scored first and lost. Uh, they play Dallas FC Saturday, 7.30, here at City Park. Uh, Saturday's going to be busy because uh, Battlehawks opener is Saturday night, too. Right? Is there a Blues game? That day too, on Saturday? Uh, I don't know about the Blues. Or the uh, Cardinals play at the same time? I don't know because Cardinals opener is in... Well, Cardinals opener is on Thursday, right? Yeah. Uh, I enjoyed Easter with my in-laws getting schooled on some March Madness a bit more. And now uh, four teams are left standing in the NCAA men's basketball tournament. The Elite Eight was narrowed down to the final four in games that took place over the weekend. Saturday, the defending national champions, UConn, used a 30 to nothing second-half run to eliminate Illinois. They're going to win. And be crowned. No, dog, Al Alabama's going to win. Roll Tide. UConn is just Roll so Tide. 
Uh, in the battle of unexpected teams to get this far, Alabama defeated Clemson to reach its first Final Four. The Who Clemson, do you got, Lauren? I got, uh, well, I did have Gonzaga's go in the hallway, obviously. My bracket's busted, so I'm all UConn now. You're ran- I thought you were ranking tech. I thought you were ranking Alabama, tech for baby. life. Well, I was last year, but this year I'm Gonzaga's. You Alabama, tattoo, sir. Then? Obviously, I, I, my, my family's rooting for Alabama, so I got to go there. Uh, Sunday, Purdue took home the uh, Midwest region crown by defeating Tennessee. The Boilermakers are going to go into their first Final Four uh, since 1980. North Carolina State defeated Duke to win the South Huge. Regional Final. Yep. That, that was their America's moment. team. Yep. That was my pick. Uh, national semifinals were held at State Farm Stadium in Glendale, Arizona, Saturday, April 6th. UConn faces Alabama, and Purdue takes on NC State. Games will be broadcasted on TBS. That uh, Alabama-UConn, nobody's expecting Alabama to win except for me, but wouldn't that except be awesome? You. That'd be a heck of a, a big upset. That'd be a heck of an upset. I'm Moon, and that's your sports, because doing the bull dance, feeling the flow, working it, working it. All right, it is uh, 924. It's Monday. One final look at your traffic and weather. Moon coming at Traffic you. brought to you by Worldwide Technology Raceway, the Confluence Music Festival with Ludacris, Riley Green, and more, and the NASCAR Cup Series, June 1st and 2nd. Tickets available now at www.raceway.com. All things clear. Your point forecast, not clear. A couple gnarly rounds of severe storms are possible. High of 78. But right now, it's 68 at the Point Studio. All right, so today's our 10th anniversary. Um, it's the 20th anniversary of something else today. And when this was unveiled, everybody thought it was a joke. But now 1.8 billion people actively have something to do with this Hmm. particular product. I'll let you know what it is next. The great battles of our time. Man versus nature. Intellect versus instinct. Burrito versus butthole. Here in this fortress of solitude, we reflect and ponder tough questions about life and ourselves. And the toughest question of all may be, what do I wish I could accomplish before I die? Mine eyes have seen the glory. The proverbial bucket list. Why is it called that? Do you have one? Should you have one? If so, what should be on it? Let's dive into those questions today. By better help. Now, it can be easy to ignore our our social battery and spread ourselves thin. You know, what's the right amount of socializing for you? How do you how do you recharge? Maybe you need some alone time. Some of us need to set boundaries, which is which is tough. Uh, you hate to disappoint people, but you know, maybe you're too much of a people pleaser. You know, did you know that therapy can give you the self awareness to build a social life that doesn't drain your battery? If you need to talk to somebody about your social life or anything for that matter, better help is there for you. Now, if you're thinking about starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online. It's designed to be convenient and flexible and suited to your schedule. You just fill out this brief questionnaire. You get matched with a licensed therapist. And and if you want, if it's not working out, you need to switch therapists. You could do so at any time, and they're not going to charge you more for it. Find your social sweet spot with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Riz today and get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Riz. All right, King Scott's official bucket list. Now, for those of you that haven't been listening, we have compiled a list. We've talked about it several times. And we have a new competition coming up with punishments. I know everybody's been clamoring for that. That's right. coming. We're going to announce Riz that in a week or so. We'll announce the Riz Olympics. The Riz Olympics. There's going to be a set of events, and the loser is going to have hell to pay. But on the flip side of that coin, because we do love each other, and we do, believe it or not, behind the scenes, there's a lot of positivity on this show. Uh, we're going to, the flip coin is we got a lot of stuff we can help each other accomplish, too. Yeah, yeah. let's lift help each other, each other up, achieve guys. our dreams. Let's Come lift, on. Let's lift Come each other on, up guys. and then Woo. break each other down. Yes. That is how. <laughs> That's the Riz Show way. That's the dynamic we're looking for. So we went over some of Riz's bucket list items which and some of Moon's bucket list items. And people have emailed in. There's sponsors emailing in. There are fans emailing in. They're going to help us achieve our dreams. So it's become a community effort. So let's see if we can get King Scott uh, some help and some of his. Number one on King Scott's bucket list. I need some explaining here, or maybe not. It says, Mysterious Road Trip, LOL. <laughs> Yeah, this one is, it's a big deal, and it involves numerous countries, and so, I mean, it's a huge, it's the dream of dreams that I've had for ages, and I want to document this whole thing, so I need to team up with someone like Jeremy from Cool Fire or something like that and uh, talk with him, because it, it's a big undertaking. 
Okay. I don't understand what it is. I like well, that you explained it, kept it just as vague yes. through the explanation. <laughs> I, well, I'll be I driving know, where are we through going? numerous countries. That's all I can say. All, right. and, and all over the world. It'll be through. It'll start. We'll say it'll start in North America, and then would counties be okay instead of countries? Because we can. Well, do I the could do. A, I thing. could do a practice run. Yes, like, like I would we could maybe to. go from St. Louis County to Franklin County. We could put a bag Sounds over good. your head, so it's kind of a mystery. Like, where are you in Missouri? Yeah, but no, I could start. Yeah, throw me wherever, and um, and then um, you have to walk. Like we th here's what we do: we put you in the back of the car with. So you've been making house payments for years, right? And right now, your home value has never been higher. So that means you're likely sitting on a small fortune, which is awesome. And that, that's cash, that you, cash you could use to uh, help use to secure your retirement, solve all your financial burdens, enable you to travel, everything you want. But the catch is you're not ready to move. And I get it. And you don't have to. With the True Hold Sell and Stay Lease Back program, which is a genius financial strategy, you sell your home to True Hold while the value is high. You bank that equity in cash now, and you stay as long as you like with an easy, affordable lease. And what's really nice, True Hold, they're going to pay your property taxes, your insurance, and maintenance, so you can go and travel and enjoy your retirement. And, uh, and still have that beautiful home that you've loved and you've worked on for years and years. Truehold, they really do unlock your wealth without uprooting your life. So get a Truehold offer right now while your home value is sky high. Call 1-855-300-9993, 1-855-300-9993, or visit Truehold.com, the smarter, faster way to cash out without moving out. That's Truehold.com. All right, Point Fest 2022, it is live, and I am so excited. As you know, this is one of my favorite bands ever. The Struts, gentlemen, thank you so Aww. much. That was thank a you lovely for being here. introduction. So thank excited. You for so, to start, I actually have a prop because I met you guys several years ago. It was backstage at a show, and Luke, you had disappeared for a moment, and I missed an autograph on my favorite piece of merch ever. Oh. Here we go. There's a badge on your bag as well with the struts on. Oh, so, the flag. Ah. The flag. If you would be so kind, of my course. friend. Of course. Do you have a pen? I do. Yeah, <laughs> a pen. Fantastic. Of course I will. That's been waiting there Since 2019. It's been on my wall, and I'm like, oh, damn it, day. I don't have Luke. <laughs> <laughs> Seize the opportunity. Exactly. I have you guys hostage, so I kind of <laughs> had to. Thank you so very much. Uh -huh. Pleasure. I'm sorry I didn't sign it before. You, you had a show to get ready for. That's. Oh, totally I was getting fun. ready. Oh, you that were, makes you sense. Were. You didn't just like bail on me. No. Okay. <laughs> so we got the struts here. You guys have a lot of new things going on this year. You got a new label. You yep. got a new logo. You got a yeah. new single, which I can only assume is there a new album in the works. Yeah, we've... Uh, We've been, well, officially we started working on a new record like in February. Okay. Um, and then we've sort of honed in even harder on uh, the making of it uh, since coming back to L.A. for the last, like, I don't know, I two, three weeks yeah. or so. Oh, wow. The, a the aim <laughs> is to, to get it done by the end of the year. Perfect. Um, all polished and, and ready to go. So tell me a little bit about the contrast in, I guess you're making an album the old-fashioned way versus during 2020 when the pandemic hit and you guys quarantined for 10 days and busted out an album. <laughs> yeah, it, no, it's, it's very different. Um, it's kind of getting back to, I guess not what we're kind of used to, but maybe... Uh, a, a way, well, we're basically doing it the way the the first two records were kind of done. Mm -hmm. A bit more thought out. Sure, less uh, pressure. <laughs> we did actually, we actually tried doing it the same way that we did Strange Days back yeah. in about February. Yeah, we tried it in Nashville to try and repeat that same formula and give ourselves a bit more time than the ten day. What is deck envy? That's uh, that's um, I'm looking at my neighbor and he's got a really nice deck and I don't. That's deck envy. He's got a bigger deck. <laughs> And he's got stuff underneath his deck, and I got none of that. Well, you need to call Chesterfield Fence and Deck. Celebrating 56 years in business, they're a company you could trust with your biggest investment, your home, and, of course, the safety of your family. 
Locally owned and operated, they use their own crews and trucks and tools, operate out of their own warehouse and showroom. Visit the showroom in Chesterfield. See some of those beautiful displays of fences and decks and pergolas, sunrooms, screen rooms, patios, and windows. Free in-home estimates at no obligation. Uh, all the products are guaranteed by a five-year labor warranty. A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau. And if you mention the Riz Show this month, you'll get 48 months interest-free financing on your next outdoor project. It's Chesterfield Fence and Deck. They're online at ChesterfieldFence.com. After all, who doesn't want a bigger deck? So uh, here we are, our very first Ho Ho Show of 2017, our Christmas show. Uh, you will be our first band that we will see, two-thirds of 50 Clyro. Gentlemen, how are you? Oh, it's really well. great to see you. Really well, and after that introduction, we're very excited to, <laughs> to be opening up the ho-ho, the ho-ho party. Ho -ho, the yeah, ho -ho, yeah. The ho -ho. Instant feedback says, on Saturday, there's a Cardinal game, there's a Blues game, there's a City SC game, <laughs> there's a Battlehawks game, and Zach Brown is at the Chaffetz. Dang. I hope he wins it, too. That'd be good. <laughs> hmm. Is that true? That's crazy. That's crazy. That's good. Well, that's what you wanted. Mm -hmm. That's what you wanted, St. Louis. Well, you got it. You got it. Good luck. That's great. That, no, that's great. For those of you who like sitting in traffic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you were considering going to the SC game? Yeah. You better Uber. Yeah. That will not be a... Driving downtown no, uh, situation. That will be, be someone driving downtown situation. Uh, another drawing without a winner uh, has brought the Powerball jackpot to an estimated $975 million. Drawing is tonight. Lump sum cash payout will be $471 million. Uh, four tickets in Illinois, Louisiana, Michigan, and Pennsylvania match the first five Powerball numbers. Uh, those lucky winners will get $1 million, but tonight... $975 million for the Powerball. Uh, happy 10th birthday to the Riz Show. We talked about it earlier. Happy 20th birthday to... Gmail. Gmail. Yeah. Happy birthday, Gmail. I just recently got a Gmail email address. Oh, really? Yeah. I didn't jump on board whenever it came alive 20 years ago. Waiting for them to get the, the bugs out? Yeah, just waiting. <laughs> I think it's good now. Uh, Google announced it on April 1st, 2004, and people initially thought it was an April Fool's joke. Google had already had a history of pranking people on April Fool's Day in uh, 2000. They posted a spinning wheel and said if you, if you stared at it while thinking of a search item, Google could find it. <laughs> uh, instead, error messages popped up with things like, try again after removing hat, glasses, and shoes. So people thought the Gmail announcement was also fake because it had bragged about people getting one full gigabyte of storage. And that didn't seem possible in 2004, especially not for free. And it was enough to save over 13,000 emails when sites like Google only had enough space to keep like 50. Huh. Plus, it made email truly searchable for the first time. In the press release, uh, co-founder of uh, Google, Larry Page, said someone used using Google's old email service complained that they constantly had to delete emails to stay under their four megabyte limit. So that's how Gmail was born. Hmm. Amazing. And they announced it on April Fool's Day on purpose. They knew people would think it was a joke. And it would be good press when everyone found out it wasn't. Living the, to the, uh, the tech revolution through all the aughts and, and the teens, uh, you know, in real time, you forget a lot of the stuff that happened and, and a lot of, obviously, a lot of stuff happened behind the scenes to make all this tech available. And uh, that Business Force podcast that you and I talk about every once in a while, I just listened to the Apple versus BlackBerry one. Holy smokes, I forgot about a lot of the stuff that was going on in those early 2000s that was coming out, coming at us, you know? Oh, yeah. Gmail. BlackBerry, iPhone. I forgot that BlackBerry tried to do something called something called the Storm that was like the iPhone competitor with, with a glass front. Total disaster. They all shattered. Damn. Cost them hundreds of millions. Uh, man, super interesting time to kind of go back since we, since we lived it. And we don't feel like it was that long ago. It was 20 freaking years 20 ago years? when wow. Gmail started. There's a lot of stuff like that from that tech explosion of this, like I think I may have even talked about this before, but like the Zune was a superior product. 
Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Every was, way. Was Microsoft just wasn't yeah, marketed. It was better it? than the iPod, but Apple's campaign was a thousand songs in your pocket. People fell in love with, like, the culture. That was the whole dance. People shadows dancing on the commercials with, like, earbuds in versus, like, Microsoft tried to roll out the specs and be like, it's this many gigabytes. It's the, and people were just like, yeah, it's, it was I want to dance like a shadow person. Yeah. And like they bought, and that's how Apple kind of put themselves on the map. It was, okay. it was the simplicity, though. It was like the integration and where you could get the songs and right. how you could get them easily. Like it was. Oh, and just like the, the, the they were selling you the, ooh, a thousand songs in your pocket. Remember whenever it was Audrey Hepburn dancing to Back in Black from ACDC? Was, mm -hmm. that, was that Apple or Gap? Because it was the same kind of vibe, mm -hmm. right? I don't remember that. I think about. I, I remember the silhouettes dancing with the with the iPods. Right? Maybe I'm thinking of a Gap commercial. <laughs> <laughs> it was cool though. Gap. Ah. Audrey is Gap in black. But it looked ah. very Gap Apple in black. Gap That's in fun. black. <laughs> well, 20 years later, there are roughly 1.8 billion active Gmail accounts. The fact that it jumped from like, uh, you know, what they say. Uh, four megabytes to, to one full gigabyte from 50 emails to 13,000 emails. Just like that. Crazy. That was in 2006, by the way. That Hepburn. I, you know what? Vaguely, vaguely, I do remember that. It was cool. All right, listen. We'll, uh, we'll take one final break. We'll come back. We'll wrap her up. Cause when you gotta go on a table, and then you gotta go on a table, and then you gotta sit on a table, and then you trust in my. Down to the sip and slide. That's just move down. Chop suey. Dude, this sucks. If you're like me, sometimes you sit there and you think about retirement and you think that's something you do when you get much older and you kind of put it off. But here's the thing. It's never too early to start saving for retirement. And over at First Community, they've made it very easy to get this going because they have a new, uh, they have an individual retirement account. There's an IRA and you could, uh, it could potentially be tax deferred savings. So you can save a ton of money and that tax deferred is awesome. So the IRA is going to help you invest and, uh, or help your money grow. And they're going to put your money to work for you over there at first community. And what's wonderful is that they also have a health savings account. So you could build a, a, a nice safety cushion there. In case something happens, you're going to have money there that you don't have to borrow. You could just take it. It's yours, and it's going to grow. And it's uh, the even better part is there's no cost to you for these accounts for the IRA or the S or the HSA. So go over to First Community and ask them about their IRA, their a HSAs today. That's firstcommunity.com, firstcommunity.com. Ever found yourself in the middle of your daily deuce and thought, huh, I wish this was funnier? Today's your lucky day. Welcome to the number two show. I'm your host, Rafe Williams, stand-up comedian, plus-size male model, and co-host of the Rizzuto Show on 105.7 The Point. What is the number two show? Well, it's me on the toilet talking to you on the toilet, just like it sounds. In each episode, we'll plunge into riveting topics that'll have you rolling in the stall with laughter, so much so that it might freak out whoever's sitting next to you, but I say, hey, lean in, make a friend. Sometimes it's just me. Other times, I'll have interviews with special guests. Not now, obviously, dumbass. This is a promo. I'll also have musical performances. Ever heard of tiny desk concerts? How about tiny stall concerts? like to see those nerds over at NPR try that. Is this a genius idea? I don't want to toot my own horn, but you're goddamn right it is. Enjoy the number two show. Don't forget to wipe. Too well, let's get to Moon's uh, list of things. Moon's like to achieve bucket before list. Death. There's some cool ones on here, man. There's a couple cool ones. Let's, so let's start with number one. Moon wants to drive... A monster truck, which oh, is man. rad as hell. Heck and yeah. I also want, I at least want to ride shotgun. Yeah. Heck yeah, man. Growing up in St. Louis, big, big, Bigfoot fan, as everyone should be. Mm -hmm. And, uh, man, we've gone to this Monster Jam. You know, Monster Jam always invites mm -hmm. me out and has had me out for years and years. And, uh, 
Victory Men's Health. Let's talk about this. Some of you may know I went on a cruise last week. What you don't know is the tugboat broke down and I swam to shore and towed an entire cruise line in on one tow line using just my biceps and the strength that Victory Men's Health has given me. Does that sound good to you? Well, it should. Why don't you go to Victory Men's Health too? Now, I'm not promising that you can tow a cruise line. That might be an embellishment story I said, I said to get your attention. But I will tell you, I feel better than I've ever felt. And I owe it all to the last year that I've spent getting my treatments at Victory Men's Health. They got me on vitamins and peptides. They got me feeling like my old self again. Maybe make me able to get up at 4 o'clock in the morning and do this show. And, guys, I know it's the Midwest. We don't like to talk about our health. But, man, it's something you need to take care of. you got to prioritize your health before you can take care of your family and all the people around you. So... Don't wait. Go to Victory Men's Health. It's easy. they got four locations. They've got one in Sunset Hills that's brand new, so schedule an appointment there. They've got one in Echo Fallon, Illinois, and Missouri, and they have the one in Town & Country that the three-headed monster of the Riz Show, myself, Learn, and King Scott all go to. And we hang out in those little egg pods, and we get vitamin IV treatments, and we, and we dish, we gossip, and we have a good time, and you can too. Go to Victory Men's Health. Don't wait. Take your health back in 2024. That's VictoryMensHealth.com, VictoryMensHealth.com. Tim, how are you, man? I'm good. How you doing? I'm doing very well. And, I, and I'm going to tell you that I did something today, and I shouldn't even I shouldn't even bring it up that I'm doing. Okay. I wore a shirt specifically to impress you because I was interviewing you. <laughs> and, right. and normally I don't do that. Right. But I, I, but I did, but also too, and I can't see it, but I've got this awesome masked intruder shirt on. Uh, and I oh, just, I love it. Yeah, and I just figured that that would be one of those bands that you would be, you know, very cool, like, that, that were a band that Rise Against played with somewhere along the way. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think we have a Mask Intruder. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think they're a Fat Records band. Yep. And, um, you know, I still consider us part of the Fat Records family. You know, like, that's where we got our start. That's who first signed our band. Uh, that's how we got our wings. You know what I mean? Because that label was so much more than uh, just a record label. It was a family. We joined yeah. that. We joined that family. And... They took us under their wing and all their bands took us under their wing. Strung Out took us out. Sick of It All took us out. The Mad Caddies took us out. No Effects took us out. Um, that was huge. I mean, I cannot overstate how huge that was. How, how, how is it when you're a new punk rock band winning over those audiences? That cannot be easy, especially like a No <laughs> Effects crowd where they're coming to see Mike and the guys and, and they're probably not going to be particularly nice. Yes, dude, it was, uh, I'm glad you brought that up because that was how I learned how to be a front man was getting heckled, yeah. <laughs> you know, like opening up for no effects in Western Canada in the early 2000s, those people were there to see no effects, you know, and they're to see fat Mike. And we don't do, we don't do what no effects does, you know what I mean? And so right. you had to be able to stand there and sing and entertain for 30 minutes, whether people wanted to see you or not opening up for sick of it all in Germany. You know, like in the height of like their European domination, though, like I got beers thrown at me. I got yelled at, you know, like all that stuff. And that was moments like that. And then you'd shift to like the Mad Caddies tour and they're a ska band. And so now we're opening up for a ska band and those people came to see them. So you had to like figure out like, what are we going to do here? And those were the moments where you realize this is where I put my tail between my legs and I go home and I say this, this is it. I'm not meant for this time of year you know you see those for sale signs out in front of homes oh open house on sunday great we're gonna stop renting we're gonna buy our first home we're gonna be adults and we're gonna build some equity uh so you're thinking i'm gonna go to the open house and then i'm gonna make an offer but you don't know how much house you can afford you haven't gotten the financing done yet what you should do first before you call the realtor is call kevin putney the one to the mortgage team and get the financing all worked out a mortgage is like a fingerprint everyone's different kevin putney's gonna help you secure your dream home with the right loan. And he's got all sorts of programs for first buyers. He's got uh, programs for down payment assistance. Kevin's local, he's a good dude, and he's gonna find the loan that fits your needs. Give Kevin Puntney a call. 314-862-0123, 314-862-0123. 
online at 123mortgage.com. It's Kevin Putney, Equalizing Opportunity, all loans subject to underwriting approval, restrict and supply, call for details, Cross Country Mortgage LLC, NMLS 3029, NMLSConsumerAccess.org, 123mortgage.com, 314-862-0123. We are backstage at Point Fest, and uh, Kevin from Candlebox Joint. Hey, How are you, sir? Hey, Great I'm to good. see you, man. Yeah, Great to you. see you. So there is so much to, to talk about with you, and had the had the great fortune of being a chat with you a few weeks ago. But there's some things that I wanted to talk that we talked about then that I'd like to, to talk about again today. 25th anniversary of the Candlebox debut. Isn't that an, an amazing thing at, at this point? How do you, as the guy that did it and was the key element in this? How do you look back and see the staying power of this thing? Because it's still a very relevant record. I know, it's kind of crazy. Uh, I don't know, man. I, I wake up every day and I pinch myself that I've been fortunate enough to have this career. You know, I mean, um, it's, a wild, it, it's a wild thing to, to turn 49 years old and, and know that I've been doing this for 25 years and, and that people still listen to the record. And, you know, the royalty check comes in every April and every October and you're just like, wow. This is crazy that this record still sells like it does, you know? I mean, it's, it's, I'm lucky we're one of the bands that was able to make money off of albums, you know? So uh, I, I don't know. It's, it's paid my rent for, for a long time. I'm very happy about that. Absolutely so. Now, let's, let's go back a little bit to, to the beginning of this, of this ride for you. Um, I w let's talk about Universal Windows Direct. If you've been cold in your own home all winter, don't suffer through another winter. In a cold and drafty home, call my guys at Universal Windows Direct. They will use super spacer technology developed by NASA. That's where scientists live. They keep the edge of your glass warmer, holds the window seal longer, and makes the windows last up to five times longer than any other window system. And your windows from Universal perform better and last longer. Plus, they back it with a true lifetime warranty for as long as you own your home and 30 years to the next homeowner. That's a deal for you and a stranger. Unless you leave it to your kids, in which case you're hooking them up. So call Universal Windows Direct today at 314-334-2522. For every two windows you buy, you get two free. That's buy two, get two, buy four, get four, buy 20, get 20. I'm not going to continue to do that math for you. But the point is there's no limit. So you can get as many windows as you need for half the cost. Plus, they upgrade your new windows to triple pane glass for free, and you get an energy tax credit. I mean, what else can you ask for at this point? But all right, I'll give you something else. Tell them I told you to call. You get 250 bucks off your next project. So don't wait. That's it. That's, that's not enough. That's on you. For the last windows you'll ever need, go to UniversalWindowsDirect.com. And like me, you will be saying, I love my windows. And it's Riz. We are backstage at Point Fest and say hi to P.O.D. Hello, fellas. Hello, hello. What's up? What's up? I could hear him right now saying hello. Uh, welcome back to St. Louis. Welcome back to Point yeah. Fest. Yeah. St. Louis. St. Louis, indeed. In the house. You like it here? Oh, yeah. We've been yeah. coming here for many, many, many years. Any, uh, I want to say a few decades. Yeah. It's been a while. For any, sure. uh, any memories, special memories of St. Louis? Mm. Um, it is, but it's not a good one. We actually went to a, we were, we were touring in a van back in the day and we went to the movie theater by the train station. Uh huh. And it was like the only movie theater on the planet that's ever ran out of popcorn. Really? I didn't even think they yeah, had popcorn. They didn't have popcorn. Yeah, they didn't have popcorn. Like, we, we had like, a theater with no popcorn. This is how St. Louis does it, no popcorn. What's up with that? Our, uh, our radio station used to be down by that movie yep. theater, by the yeah. train station. Yep. And somebody got axed to death in front of that theater. Axed to death. <laughs> See what I'm saying? Like, there's no good memories right there. You know what I mean? And popcorn, that, axed to death. Popcorn, no popcorn, and axed yeah, to axed. death. I think there actually is is something a, you know, right. a connection That's there. Right. Yeah. But uh, that theater right now is still empty. I think it's been empty for 15 years now. Venue, I think, come on. Wow. I think uh, just talking to my son yesterday about, uh, mm -hmm. about Together Credit Union, he was on the app. We were looking at his accounts. He's got a checking account and, uh, uh, and a savings account. And we were kind of like, you know, going through the difference. And he's saved a lot of money. And I'm telling you, Together Credit Union has helped us as a family really educate our kids on, uh, on just a better financial um, education, better financial uh, health, you know, and, and understanding. And if you're a Together Credit Union member like me, you can stop by and, and check out the new savings account. It's called the Accelerated Savings. And uh, it can pay you, uh, get this, 5.00% annual percentage yield 
on your first $5,000 savings balance. That's amazing. High-yield savings accounts like T TCU and Together Credit Union's accelerated savings are easy to open, provide you access to your money without penalties, and are easy to manage online. That is huge. My kids, like I said, have, have been using the app and everything. Plus, the interest you earn compounds daily. This is a guaranteed low-risk investment because it's your savings account. And if you pair your accelerated savings with your Together Credit Union Achieve It checking, you can save even more. TCU's Achieve It checking empowers you to uh, by rounding up your transactions and deposits the money directly into your savings account. Plus, eligible members can earn a match of up to eight dollars a month. Start your journey with confidence, knowing that your money is working as hard as you are to secure your financial future. Stop by your nearest Together Credit Union branch. There's 15 in the area, or go online to the website togethercu.org. 5.00 annual percentage yield earned on balances of $100 to $5,099. Uh, $5,000.99. Rates accurate of th as of March 19th, 2024. Rates subject to change without notice. Valid with an open checking account. Other rates and terms available. Membership eligibility required. Must be 22 or over one accelerated savings account per member federally insured by the NCUA. We are backstage at Point Fest, and what a day in which that this has been already. Oh, yes. Ladies and gentlemen, joined by Hailstorm. Yes. Thank you so Hi. very much. Hey. It's great to We're see the, you guys. invisible third member. Right yes, hey, yes, yes. Well, how are you we're the, we're the hail half of hail storm. I have to tell you this, <laughs> and I know you don't remember this because it's been years and years and years, and I don't even remember how many years at this point. But the very first time that you came through the point, you were on my morning when I was doing yep. mornings at that yep. time. Yes, it, yes. And it, and it really seems like a decade ago. And oh, it might crazy. Have been it might have ago. been. I don't know. Time is very elastic right now. Yeah, absolutely. It's like, it's like it went by like that fast, but it feels like a different it lifetime. It was probably 2009. It was probably the first album cycle. Like, it yeah. absolutely yeah, something was. like that. Yeah. And we were in the parking lot and uh -huh. <laughs> absolutely so absolutely <laughs> so boy things have changed mightily yes, yes. new Crazy. record new record is out all it right is. we're playing the steeple right now yeah, which thank is thank so you guys fantastic for it, yeah. um but I, one of the things that i absolutely love about when a band has something new i'm always amazed when i go see a band right after they have something new and the guy next to me somehow already knows every oh, yeah. freaking word to every like dude i've listened to this album twice yeah, i don't yeah, know yeah. how you can <laughs> but like how Steel quick, trap, man. Right? <laughs> How quickly, when you've got a new record out, like you do, do you start to see non-radio singles getting yelled oh, back at you? It, it's it's pretty incredible. Not only uh, it was it like... So, you know, they know that everybody's looking for ways to say a little more these days. That's why they're having another special big three-day sale with Red Hot Deals. The Schnooks Deals and Steals three-day sale this week. It's going to be Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. And you are going to see some big-time money off. Deals you're not going to believe and steals that'll make you think, man, I am robbing this place. I'm getting away with something. Which means these are not sales you see every week. These are special sales with major money off the items you love. Like uh, Smithfield Bacon, 12-ounce package, just $2.79. Uh, limit three per customer. Avocados, 59 cents. General Mill cereals, uh, Natural Valley granola bars, oatmeal squares, or fiber one bars, just $1.99, limit six per customer. There are so many ways you could save with Schnucks. You could earn 2% back on uh, everything you buy with Schnucks Rewards. Of course, there's the Schnucks Rewards app, but make sure you take advantage of this week's huge savings and keep your eyes and ears open for the next Deals and Steals sale at Schnucks. It's Deals and Steals Thursday, Friday, Saturday at Schnucks. Ever found yourself in the middle of your daily deuce and thought, huh, I wish this was funnier? Today's your lucky day. Welcome to the number two show. I'm your host, Rafe Williams, stand-up comedian plus size male model and co-host of the Rizzuto Show on 105.7 The Point. What is the number two show? Well, it's me on the toilet talking to you on the toilet, just like it sounds. In each episode, we'll plunge into riveting topics that'll have you rolling in the stall with laughter, so much so that it might freak out whoever's sitting next to you. But I say, hey, lean in, make a friend. Sometimes it's just me. Other times, I'll have interviews with special guests. Not now, obviously, dumbass. This is a promo. I'll also have musical performances. Ever heard of tiny desk concerts? How about tiny stall concerts? like to see those nerds over at NPR try that. Is this a genius idea? I don't want to toot my own horn, but you're goddamn right it is. Enjoy the number two show. Don't forget to wipe.
The full starting to bloom. Nature is awakening. It's time to rejuvenate your outdoor oasis in the vibrant season ahead. River City Tree Service. RiverCityTreeService.com. Uh, they're offering, if you if you tell them Moon sent you, they'll give you 15% discount on all spring tree services. We're talking about tree pruning, tree removal. If this storm coming through does some damage like, it's, uh, like all these uh, meteorologists are saying it's going to, well, you're going to need River City Tree Service. So write down the name. Write down the number. RiverCityTreeService.com. Again, tell them Moon sent you 15% off any and all Tree services, uh, spring cleanup and maintenance. Maybe that's what you're looking for. Uh, tree health checkups. That's important. You want to have a healthy property, and they do residential and commercial. They've been in business here based in Baldwin since 2008, but they serve all the St. Louis community, uh, all the counties, all the surrounding counties. Uh, counties. They prioritize safety above all else for uh, for themselves, obviously, but for your property. They secure all of it uh, for every single service, ensuring the best care for your trees, for your property. They bring years and years of experience. Certified arborist, River City Tree Service are the best. Again, Telemoon sent you. You get 15% off any and all spring tree services at RiverCityTreeService.com. I'm a fan, I'm a freaking nerd, I'm a big fan. St. Louis City has my heart, and Together Credit Union has made it so very easy for me. Not only have they dressed me well with this lovely scarf, but they gave me access to the St. Louis City SC Visa card. The credit and the debit card exclusive to Together Credit Union members, but it's gotten me 10% off food and bev in the stadium at the home opener. It got me 10% off at the team store, which is beautiful, by the way. And you know how Riz and I are super cheap with our time. We don't like to stop or wait in lines because we're prissy, we're crybabies, whatever. I got Express Entry because of this little card right here. So you can get it too at Together Credit Union. I love them. Go city. All for city. Hey, it's Lux and I'm backstage at Point Fest with the Glorious Sons. What's up, guys? How you doing? This is your second Point Fest in a row. Yep. Not only were you invited once, but you've been invited back again. How has this uh, day shaped up compared to last this year? This is a nice day. Nice good day. Crowd, nice day. Great yeah. crowd. Great today. crowd. Yeah. Yeah. Good crowd. Great yeah. crowd. I needed yeah. that show today. <laughs> did you? Yep. Where I were you didn't. guys? <laughs> I could have just stayed home and done this. So where were you guys last night? Uh, <laughs> uh, Oklahoma. Yeah. Good, yes, good, yes. good. Yes. You know, Rocklahoma. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's a big festival. Yeah. Did you get to see any cool bands? No. No. We stayed in our uh, bus and we left before tornado hit. Yeah. So. Oh, really? I don't think a tornado no, actually hit, hit, but there but was like a... Bad weather? Yeah, bad weather warning. get hit by that one. Never even seen a tornado, so I'm quite scared of them, actually. Now, to be honest. We have them quite often here in Missouri, but I have heard today's should be okay, so... But also maybe... After the show, yeah, we'll leave. Leave the Midwest for a little. <laughs> leave the Midwest for a little bit. May is not Hunk, a great month. Hunker for down us. in the casino. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I know we talked about this the last time that we chatted. That you guys are uh, hockey fans. Not really, to be honest. What? Uh, Packer, our drummer, uh -huh. and uh, Jesse, our guitar tech, are major Leafs fans. But uh, I think we've both kind of grown out of it. It gets yeah. kind of spoon fed to you yeah you well know, i was gonna say is it being a canadian that's like is that like just a thing that everybody yeah well it's, it's a huge sport in the country but um i mean i think there's a lot of people also that get sick of hearing about it yeah and, and i'm one of those people oh darn because i was gonna say here in st louis going into the stanley cup finals yeah. next but week, you're playing my my boys the bruins I'm a Bruins what? fan. What? Yeah. Where does that come from? He's not a real hockey yes, fan. Yes, I am. He's a fucking fraud. He's a, he's a, just, he's he a liar. Me? I'm a Patriots fan. I'm a Bruins fan. He, he hasn't been a Celtics fan. What? Even though I don't watch. He didn't watch one single game bullshit. all year. It's bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, I follow you guys on social media. <laughs> and one of you tweeted out uh, a great moment between the Las Vegas Knights and uh, the San Jose Sharks. Just a nice nut shot. And I thought, oh, God, these yeah. guys are hockey guys. That's the extent of my uh, <laughs> fanship is that, <laughs> that uh, highlight right there i love cool. that i watched it a few times over yeah. last night like yeah, a few times brilliant <laughs> it really was well Art. here's this is something i do know about you you're foodies yeah jay hey. is i kind of follow in jay's wake on that one. Oh yeah? yeah he's a big foodie have you tried any of the st louis local foods the times that you've been here you know what uh yes actually last time uh, i don't know i can't tell the story actually that too too bad. Mm. <laughs> we did go last time for, I was in a like, bathtub full of uh, toasted wraps. Things got weird. <laughs> There's, it involved a vape pen huh. and uh, up my nose, and then I oh, blacked man. out while I was. Uh, Jay's uh, not very good at handling his weed. <laughs> 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 Neither I am I. Smoke a vape pen up my nose, and then 
<laughs> so I, last time I was here, I was that's must be, like, be the yeah, Canadian way. I'm not, pause, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I got completely gigantic erased. lightweight, yeah. and you decided to smoke it up his nose for a night. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. So. Uh, but that's a new. I mean, you must have loved everything you ate. It was you the best that, right? meal of my fucking life. Yeah, I know. Uh, or as old, it's outdated as mold and gross mildew or broken tiles. You gotta call the Bath Authority. Now, the Bath Authority provides the highest quality bathroom remodeling products along with a world class customer experience. They're gonna take care of you. Modern, durable tubs, showers designed with an exclusive high tech polymer liner. What does that mean to you? Polymer liner? I don't. Science. It's. It's. It's low maintenance, it's resistant to mold, it's resistant to mildew, it's easy to clean, it's going to last for decades. Plus, it comes with a lifetime warranty. Walk-in tubs, replacement showers, tub-to-shower conversions, and more. Every unit at the Bath Authority, custom-built. You pick the accents, you pick the accessories, you pick the safety features. All their products are backed by a, uh, a well, first, they're 100% made in the USA. Can be installed as, a, as little as one day by certified factory techs. If you call today... 314-347-0410. You get a thousand bucks off in your shower or bath plus 36 months of interest-free financing. Elevate your bathroom to a new level of luxury, style, and safety. Call today, 314-347-0410. Schedule your free in-home estimate today. Get a thousand bucks off in your shower or bath plus 36 months of interest-free financing. Thebathauthority.com, a better bath awaits. What's going on? It's Liv, and I'm in the Four Brothers Mead Tech. That is it for us today. Thank you all for tuning in. Monday in the books. Today's wrap-up sponsored by... Sponsored by Jack in the Box. Jack wraps. A little bit of healthy, a little bit of indulgence, only at Jack. All right. Uh, today's podcast is titled... Um, own Me, Mickey, Own Me. Yeah, Own <laughs> Me, Mickey, Own Me. Mickey, own me. me. Uh, Mickey does own me. I sold my soul. At the uh, at the gates of the very first park. I mean, well, Mickey went down to Florida. He was looking for a soul to steal. <laughs> I handed it over because uh, the trade off was well worth it. Holy smokes! Yeah, definitely listen to uh, the intro of today's podcast because I talked all about the Disney stuff. And if you hate Disney, skip the whole intro. Then listen to the rest no. It's interesting because you know, listen, how many visitors to Disney World a year? Uh, Dozens. Seven billion. Seven billion a year. It's crazy. It was. Mm -hmm. Awesome, and I am so freaking ready now for to uh, go back. For well, yes, to go back, but also for Punk Rock Disney. For can you feel the punk tonight? Coming up May 11th. Uh, get your tickets. Uh, there was a surge of tickets sold last week, so um, you know, get them, get them while you can. But there's two shows. Uh, it's only 30 bucks. Uh, if you if you're on some ticket website and it says 200, that is wrong. That go back, find the find the 30 dollar ones. 3 p.m. show and an 8 p.m. show. It is for everybody, not just for kids, not just for families. Uh, we're going to rock the house, and I have never been more inspired to do a show like this. May 11th. Now. Yep, May 11th. At the pageant. Learn. Yeah, just uh, go to Punk Rock Disney. That's all I got. Okay. Right. Punk Rock Disney. Punk Rock Disney. Can I get a third Punk Rock Disney? Let's get a third one. Punk Rock Disney. <laughs> Follow that. <laughs> Follow that. <laughs> Follow that. Uh, again, thank you for the uh, for the 10-year well wishes. Of okay. Congratulations. Yeah, man. Congratulations to us all. Congratulations, St. Louis, actually. Yeah, congrats, St. Louis. Congrats, St. Louis, because us around for 10 years. Decade. <laughs> wow. You're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, right. Another congrats to, is, uh, goes to Courtney Diamond for uh, for selling out. Oh, yeah, selling out yeah. the Delmar Hall. Delmar Hall. Hall. It was fun. We, we went, uh, took my daughter. My daughter took a friend. My son was there. Uh, my wife and uh, man, people really had fun. It was really cool seeing a lot of like little little kids and and their their parents and all. That. It was it was amazing. Like the show starts and all these kids go up front and all the parents were in the back just yapping. Da, 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 da. <laughs> <laughs> but man, they had a they had a great show. It was really fun and that's the first time I think that they've done a show on this side of the river. Well, yeah, that's her Taylor Swift thing. We had her in the studio what a week and a half ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's Eight Ball, our old intern Eight Ball. Yeah, congratulations, congratulations to her and her sister in the band. All right, we leave you with a selection from our team. Remember the day brought to you by Hot Shot, St. Louis song for blues hockey from Livingston, Illinois. Charlie Lowe is our yes, team. Charlie. 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 Charlie wants you to hear this song. Here it is. And we will see you tomorrow. Uh, have a wonderful Monday. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. It's Indy Car Driver Graham Rahal, and you're listening to The Rizzuto Show. You know what? And if only you could make a deal with God 
I know where he'd place this Been running up that road